Get ready to match the stars. Robert Q. Lewis. Brett Summers. Maury Amsterdam. Joyce Boulevard. Richard Dawson. And Ann Elder. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 73. And now here's the host of Match Game 73, Gene Rayburn. Thank you. Hi, Johnny. How are you? All right. <laughs> here again. Bunch, and I thank you for helping us out here. Uh, Boy, he looks just like he does on television. Don't <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Murray. Nice to see you back here. And here's my old friend Robert Q. Lewis. He's uh, new to this show. We're very happy to have you. And this lady is new to the show, too, so let's welcome them. Yeah, yeah. 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 Are you ready to have a go at this, Joyce? Yes, you look very handsome. I like that. Story. Thank you. Flattery will get you everywhere. I was hoping so. <laughs> Hey, listen, I saw you do an interview show today with a lady who wrote a book called No Man is Perfect. Or some men are more perfect than others. I'm going to go out and buy that that's book. The, that's the name of the book, yeah. Yeah, that was very good. You As did I that said, theory. you are enough about me. Yes. <laughs> it's a good book. It's a good book. It is. Now, let's say hello and welcome our current champion. Here is Ellen Hoey. Hi, Ellen. Hi. Ellen has won two games. She's got $6,200 to her credit. And when we were together last time, she had just finished the first part of the super match and won $500 in the audience match. And now she's going to have a go at $5,000. Are you ready for that, Ellen? Yes, I am. Okay, we'll get to it right after we do this message for you. Okay, here we are with Ellen Hoey. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, now you know you've won the $500 in the audience match. That means you're going to play for 10 times that amount or $5,000. Now, to collect that money, you must match one celebrity on the head-to-head -head basis. It's time to choose that celebrity now. Which one will it be, Ellen? Ann Elder. Ann. Beautiful Ann Elder. Are you ready? You're getting ready to write. All right, Ann. Right. And Ellen, you face me. Here is the $5,000 question. Anne, please write your answer to this, if you would. Milk blank. Milk blank. Okay, the bell indicates that Anne is finished. And now, Ellen, it's time for you to give us your response. How do you fill in the blank? Milk? Shake. Milkshake. All right, and for $5,000, you like that answer? Yeah. Well, won't you be surprised when you find out what Ann has written? We'll all find out together right now, Ann. May we see it? I'd, uh, I like that answer, too. <laughs> so, therefore, I said, shake! Oh! You are up to eleven thousand two hundred dollars. Wow! Yeah. I think, uh, Ellen, the most we've given away is uh, twelve thousand. Is about the most we've given away. I think. How much? Thirteen. Well, you're getting close to the all-time high on the show. How do you feel? Nervous. Are you nervous? <laughs> Money makes you nervous. Uh huh. It calms me down. <laughs> Maybe we can work something out. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> what did she say? She said, money makes me nervous. I said, money calms me down. She says, maybe we can work something out. <laughs> Dickie does the jokes, and you, you win the money. Okay. Oh, you got the money. You <laughs> All right. Ellen, you're still a champion. You're going to play another game, so let's meet your challenger right now. Here comes Ramona Lewis. Die. Hello, Ramona. Hello. Now... Don't fall down. I just step up there. You ladies know each other, do you? Welcome, Ramona. And 
please tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a housewife. I have three sons, and my hobby is bowling. Your hobby is what? Bowling. Bowling. Mm -hmm. Oh, like what's your uh, lifetime average? I, 120. I just started. Oh, 120. <laughs> well, you're young. Oh, well, thank Listen, you. Listen, <laughs> a couple of years, you'll be bowling 100. Who knows? So. Okay, Ramona, shall we have a go at it? I'll push this button and reveal the uh, two things there, and you've got the choice. All right, I'd like B, please. You want B? Yes. Everybody plays. Brand new game. Here we go. Grumpy the Dwarf said, mm, I wish I were a little taller. I'm tired of kissing Snow White on her blank. <laughs> Not the idea. <laughs> Listen, you can laugh out loud if you'd like to. <laughs> You're out of your mind. <laughs> you think about that, Ramona. Grumpy the Dwarf said, I wish I were a little taller. I'm tired of kissing Snow White on her blank. Yeah. All right, the upper tier is ready. And uh, here we go. Now, we call for your response. I'm tired of kissing Snow White on her... Behind. Really? Depends think... which way you look at it. <laughs> I don't. All right, Ramona, that's her answer. Uh, it's show and tell time, Robert. <laughs> may, well, we, may we see your answer? Yeah, all I can think of is Walt Disney, and he would never have permitted that, so it's tummy. Tummy. Yes. Snow okay. so White's fairy godmother said, never turn your back on a dwarf. <laughs> Navel. Navel is her answer. Okay, Maury. Da -da 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 -da. Navel is his answer. Joyce, what did you say? Well, my dwarf is very short, so he was kissing her on her knee. Boy, that is some <laughs> short, dwarf. A short dwarf. Yes, indeed it is. How about you, Richard? <laughs> Who put him up to it, you think? <laughs> uh, yeah, I said knee as well. Knee, that's two yeah. knees in a row. Well, thank you. Thank you. We're well, happy you're with it. For a third knee in a row. A third okay. knee there. All right, the knees have it. Okay, Ramona, you didn't score with that, and we'll see how you do with yours, Ellen, in a moment or so. But first, we've got this message for you. <laughs> All right, here we go, ladies. For the second half of round one, Ramona finished her half, did not score. <laughs> and now we'll see if Ellen scores with this. <laughs> <laughs> Listen carefully now. <laughs> Bruno's breath is terrible because he gargles with blank. Bruno's breath is terrible because he gargles with blank. Did you say Bruno, dear? Bruno, yes. Bruno. Oh, Bruno. No, I know him well. You know Bruno? Oh, yeah. gargles breath. Bruno. <laughs> All right. You ready over there? Oh, yeah. Brett, we're going to wait for you. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't. Come on, Brett. Oh. I knew a guy once had such a bad breath on Halloween, we used to tip him over. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ellen. <laughs> You've had plenty of time to think they're all finished now. How do you fill in that blank? Bruno's breath is terrible because he gargles with... Booze. Booze. <laughs> all right, that seems like a pretty good answer to me. Robert, what'd you say? Listen, I'm delighted to know you, sweetheart. I'd like to see you after the show. Booze. Booze. There it is. Okay, Brett. Okay. All right, that won't make your breath bad. That'll make people love you. Oh. Uh, sheep dip. <laughs> <laughs> You make it with uh, with yeah. cream cheese I don't want it. and cream clam. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think mine is just as good. Sani flush. Sani flush. <laughs> Boy, that'll uh, <laughs> that'll do it. Joyce, aren't you glad you oh, came <laughs> to the party? Uh, Sani flush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we see your answer? Uh, yes, uh, you may see my answer. Uh, I think that Bruno has a sore throat, so he's gargling with salt. Salt. P U. Dumb answer. <laughs> I can smell like a fish. It's very good for you. Clear her out of very the bill. Good answer. Thank good you answer. So much. <laughs> All right, Richard. You won't forget at the Christmas party. <laughs> I have a know that he gargled with garlic. Now garlic. I have, I have to explain. Yeah. You must never eat at his house because he makes his spaghetti sauce with Lavoris. <laughs> 
don't ever eat this. Okay, Anne, uh, booze uh, is the answer we're looking for. Uh, I'm looking for that answer, too, but I have to say... Garlic. garlic. Yeah, well, great mind. That's all right, you can kiss, because you both had garlic. That's enough. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so at the end of round one, the score is one and nothing in favor of our current champion. We go to round two and ask Ramona to make a selection. I'll try B again, please. B again it is. Since you match no one that first round, everyone will participate in the second round. The cannibal said. Gee, that new restaurant is great. I ate the blank. <laughs> I'm repeating that, doctor. The cannibal said, Gee, that new restaurant is great. I ate the blank. <laughs> See, it's only on the hard ones that I don't come right up with the answer. <laughs> All right, everybody's ready. Hold it, Ramona. I didn't hear it. Yes, I'll do it for you. Okay. The cannibal said, Yes. Gee, that new restaurant is great. I ate the blank. Okay. I ate the okay. What the heck then? Yes. I... I ate the... It's a great restaurant? Yeah. I mean, a really great restaurant. So great, he says, I ate the blank. I ate the whole thing. <laughs> she said, I ate... I ate the whole thing. Now, uh, uh, did you... Uh, no, give it to me again. Please. It's the last reading. Okay. No, no. no. Sorry, oh, okay. the judge says your answer is your answer okay. is what it is. The whole thing. All right, Robert, what'd you say? Uh, Ramona, he had more gourmet tastes. He ate the chef. He ate the chef. Yeah. Yeah. Brett, well, that's think? interesting because I said chef too. Chef too. No match there. It's a cheap restaurant. He ate the cook. He ate the cook. Yeah. <laughs> And Joyce. I was in the same gourmet restaurant. He ate the chef. All right. And we're getting down to the wire. You've got to match one celebrity to stay in the running here. Richard? Well, the chef was the person that cooked the food. Right. He ate the waiter. He ate the waiter, right. You must match Anne or the game is over. Go, Anne. Uh, I said the waiter. The waiter. So Ellen Hoy wins another game. Congratulations, Ellen. And come on down, please. All right. Nice to see you again. Another hundred dollars for Ellen and for Ramona. We've got a gift for you, together with our thanks for being with us on Match Game oh, 73. Thank you very much. Ramona Lewis. Goodbye, Ramona. Is this your third time up here? Yes, it is. You've done very well. You could become the new all-time big money winner here on Match Game 73. Let's see if it happens. We polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Belly blank, or belly blank. Now, you know, the answer they gave most often is worth 500 and second 250 and the third $100. Three celebrities are allowed to help, so which one do you want to choose first? Ann Elder. Ann. Belly? Button. Belly button, she says. All right, another one? Robert. I like that one. Uh, belly up. Belly up? Belly up. Belly up. To the ball. Belly up. <laughs> uh, belly up to the ball. Bar room phrase. All right, one more. Richard. Uh, belly dancer. Belly dancer. Okay, so you've got belly button, belly up, and belly dancer. You may choose one of those three, as you know, or give us one of your own. What would you like to do? Belly button. Belly button. Yeah, yeah. You think that's a good idea? Okay, the audience thinks you're right with that. That's the answer that Anne gave you. Let's see if it's up there anywhere. First, may we see the $100 response. Belly laugh is a good answer, but nobody thought of that, is it? Very good. Okay. Still no belly button. Let's see if it's under the $250 response. Belly button is there. Okay. You and Anne are doing very well together, aren't you? Okay, belly up was a third choice there. Let's find out before we go on, Ellen, what is under. What do you think, audience? Dancer. Dancer. Belly dancer? Belly ache. Belly ache? Yeah. All right, belly dancer is under the $500 response. Okay, you won the $250. Now you'll no play for 10 times that amount or 2500 Which celebrity do you want to try to match on a head-to-head -head basis? Oh, boy. Robert. Okay. All right, Robert, you get ready to write? Yep. Ellen will face me. Here's the $2,500 question. It has to be an exact match in this instance. Good blank. Good blank. Okay, he's 
ready now. I think a win here would make you the new all-time money champ. You're up to 11550 is that right? And 2500 added to that? It'd be a lot of money anyway. How do you fill in this blank? Good? Well, I'm having a good time, so that's what I'll say. Good you say time. good time. Mm -hmm. All right, Bob, for $2,500, may we see your answer? Yeah. Good night. Good night. All right, so you didn't collect the 2500 but you did uh, collect an additional 250 and you're still the champ. We'll meet another player right after we pass along this message to you. Okay, we're ready to play another game here on Match Game 73. To do that, we've got to introduce a new player, so let's welcome Mr. Jerry Mayo. Hi, Jerry. Hello, Hello Ellen. Yeah. yeah. She's winning all the money. She's won a lot of money. Yeah, lots of money. Let's find out a little bit about Jerry Mayo. From Alhambra, I'm a used car dealer. Very happy used car dealer. <laughs> You're all happy. <laughs> I never saw none happy. Would you buy a used car from this man? You would. Yes, you would. You would. I've got good cars. You would buy. You married? Oh, I'm yes. married. Oh, he's so, on. You know, I've got. He's on. Did you bring yeah. him with you tonight? An Pardon, I didn't Do you hear. You have an elephant? Yes, I would. Come on over. I got anything you want if you just come over. That's enough of that. <laughs> Better start right. selling Stanley streamers. <laughs> Shall we play this game, Jerry? Yes. You know how it goes. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll push this button and ask you to make a selection. We leave that up to you because some of our contestants find some questions more difficult than others. All right. I'll take B. And some of your panel numbers. B. Are you ready? Yep. Yes. Here we go. Abdullah has a hundred wives. And? And imagine walking in the bathroom and seeing a hundred pairs of pantyhose hanging there. <laughs> That's another program, Marty. Oh. <laughs> Abdullah has a hundred wives and not one of them is blank. <laughs> I think we stopped the used car sales from there. <laughs> He's thinking about it though. Abdullah has a hundred wives and not one of them is blank. Um. All right. Lower tier is ready. All right, now we're all set over there, Jerry. So we call on you for your response. Not one of them is young. Oh, no. <laughs> I am stuck with it. You know. The audience you thinks you cars. blew it, Jerry. <laughs> Gene thinks you blew it too. <laughs> No, I don't know. Listen, you never know. By these people, you really can't tell. Young is his answer. Let's see if it happens. It may. You'll never know. Robert, what do you say? Abdullah, huh? Abdullah had Abdullah. 100 wives, and not one of them is... Jewish? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Brett. Jack Klugman is Jewish, Robert. <laughs> not one of them is pretty. Not one of them is pretty. A hundred wives is not a pretty one. I Maury, said the same say? thing. That's why he sleeps with his grandfather. <laughs> Young is Jerry's answer. Joyce, what's yours? Well, I think he's been looking and looking for a pretty one, and not one of them's pretty. Pretty is the answer so far. It's come up more often than any others. How about you, Richard? Well, Abdul, you know, was not a pleasant fellow. He was a bit of a pill. Oh. <laughs> so not one of them was pregnant. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Anne, what do you say about it? I Abdullah? know Richard and I spend too much time together. I said with child. Oh, with child. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, Jerry, you didn't score with that at all. Now let's see if uh, Ellen scores with this. They took Nutty Nelson away. <laughs> after he was found putting brassiers on blanks. <laughs> You remember Nutty Nelson, Joyce? Yes. Well, they took him away after he was found putting brassiers. No. You didn't hear it. Oh, well, I'll be glad to repeat it for you, Ellen, okay. right here. You ready over there, Maury? I don't sure. see your light on. Sure. Your light is not on, Maury. That's not Maybe my fault. I'm not the electrician here, kid. <laughs> now your light is on, Maury. Okay. They took Nutty Nelson away after he was found putting brassiers on blanks. I think we stopped her, too. You know what brassiers are. They're those, uh, yeah. They're like big earmuffs, you know. They, they, 
statues. On statues. That sounded like a desperation answer, but the audience seems to approve of it. Robert, what do you say? Well, that was my second answer. My first answer, though, he was really nutty. He put him on cows. Put him on cows. I see. <laughs> what did you say his name was? Nutsy. What's that? Nutsy Nelson. Yes, I know him well, and he used to put brassiers on boys. Oh, Boy. Well, that's Nutty Nelson, all right. I know Boy. him, too. He was in the Prado's business. Cantaloupes. Cantaloupes. <laughs> What do you th say about Nutty Nelson, Well, he Joyce? was running around my neighborhood last week putting him on dogs. On dogs? He was nutty, all right. <laughs> How about you, sir? The reason they called him Nutty Nelson was because he put them on coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way you get the milk. I'm just leveling with you. <laughs> you won't get it from cantaloupes, believe me. <laughs> and... and You know, I think Dickie Dawson was born in a plain brown wrapper. Yes. Uh, actually... He put them on animals. Animals. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. Ellen, you didn't score at all with that. And uh, we'll get back to the two of you. But first, we've got this message for you. <laughs> We're out of time. You'll both come back next time. We'll play round two, okay? Good. All right. We thank you for joining us. You were all terrific. I yeah. think so. Joyce, look forward to seeing you on Love Thy Neighbor. And look forward to seeing you next time. Gene Rayburn from Match Game 73. Bye. Today's Constellation Prizes are from Montgomery Ward's Christmas Catalog. A remote control wireless clock radio operates light, TV, or coffee pot automatically from the Montgomery Ward Catalog. And Snowy Bleach, the exclusive blended formula with extra washes per box, safe for whites and colors, Snowy Bleach. And rice a the big flavor side dish that's so quick, so easy, saute and simmer to flavor perfection, rice a the San Francisco treat. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 73, a Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. Yeah, it was uh, all through, Mike. Uh, this is Match Game 74, production number 0185, air date to be announced, VTR 32974, take one. Get ready to match the star. Alan Ludden. Brett Summer. Charles Nelson Riley. Joyce Boulevard. Richard Dawson. And Barry Flag. As we play the star studded Big Money Match Game 74. And now, here's the host of Match Game 74. I do the show without a microphone. How are you, honey? Very I well, missed thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How have you been? Yes, uh, rest of the Betty's right. Dismissed. You really are a dirty old man. That's true. Yeah. D O M for short. Yeah. What it's... happened? You said you'd call. <laughs> <laughs> I waited in all day. That's enough of that. <laughs> well, it's the His truth. His reputation is no, bad enough. <laughs> Fanny, kiss me. <laughs> See? Do you know that when Betty's sitting there? Have you had any of the yes. diseases on this list? <laughs> Let's uh, welcome our two players here, Mary Duncan and Laurie Healy. <laughs> Mary's our current champ with a total of $350, and we started this game last time out, and uh, Laurie had her go at it, and uh, she didn't score any matches at all, and we've got a question for you in round one. And uh, if you're ready, ladies, we'll get to that right after we do a little business with all of you around America. Push a button. And away here we go. We've got this question for you, Mary. See you later. <laughs> we were just horsing around during the uh, break there. You go back to Boston on the weeks. Yes, off. I do. Let me see I what think this you'd better says hurry. <laughs> Brian said. You look a little flustered. Boy, there. I was on a wild 
called New Airline. During the flight, the first class passengers are allowed to blank the coach passengers. <laughs> That's what Brian said. He was on this wild airline. I'm out of breath. <laughs> At your age, you should, should be out of breath. The During the flight, the first class passengers are allowed to blank the coach passengers. All right, bottom tier is ready. Well, except for Fanny. You're thinking too hard, Fanny. Just trust your first judgment, honey. Her first be all right. judgment was to leave. Oh. Fanny, today, dear, today. I know, I know, I know. It isn't a 24-hour show. It's just a half-hour show, darling. Now we're ready to get an answer from Mary Duncan. Brian said, boy, I was on a wild new airline. During the flight, the first-class passengers are allowed to blank the coach passengers. Play around with them? <laughs> Play around with them. I'll let the judge interpret that any way he wants. He's over there. He's already talking to the guy in the control room. To... It's going to be a decision involving three people there. Okay, play around is her answer. Alan, what's yours? It's going to be a decision involving four people. Yeah. <laughs> I said sleep with. Oh. No, Matt? Well, it all depends on how you sleep. The place, right? Okay. Don't turn on this man. He's married to Betty White. <laughs> Well, what did you say about those passengers? Well, I sort of said, uh, play around with. I said, streak. Streak with. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, there you go. Back yep. forth. All right, Charles. Okay. I'm afraid I'm with these other two bananas I live with. I said, stone. Stone? Well, they throw stones at them. Stone. <laughs> the first class passengers are allowed to, and she said, play around. The coach passengers. What do you say, Joyce? Uh, Brett, were you on that same flight I was? Uh-huh. Where we, and, uh, I said that... Streak. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. we streaked with them. We took them all we did it. Yeah, right. right down in the raw and bing, up and down the aisle Could two we times. we gotta move on? I've got a plane to catch. Oh, all right. <laughs> Richard. I happen to know the first class passengers are allowed to mug the <laughs> mug. <laughs> all right. Bing. Okay, Fanny, we're up to you. First of all, people were hollering at me, and I was very pressured, and I get very upset. <laughs> and I was a Girl Scout, and I'm a very sweet person, and I didn't know what to write, so I wrote Pickle. Gene, <laughs> <laughs> I think now yeah. is the time on the air to point out that Fanny has beautiful skin. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> She does have beautiful skin. skin. Freak, yeah. <laughs> beautiful skin. She has many other terrific qualities. All right, that's the end of round one. And now we'll go to round two. And Laurie, would you please make a selection? I'll try B. Again. You want B. All right. Everybody plays because no one matched Laurie in the first time. Oh, really? All the little people in the valley were mad at the jolly green giant. So they put a porcupine in his blank. <laughs> Honey, could you swing that in ragtime? Right. All the little people in the valley were mad at the jolly green giant, so they put a porcupine in his blank. I got you. Okay. Finished here. I'm one of the more Four. terrific players. Lower tier is ready, upper tier. Well, just hold it a minute. They write and I print. Okay. I went to private school. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't show. All right, Laurie Healy. All the little people in the valley were mad at the jolly green giant, so they put a porcupine in his... Bed. In his bed. In his bed. You say bed. If I were playing, I would have said shoe for some reason. What you did you say? Shoe? I would have said shoe because... You're you know, as dumb as Alan Ludden. Shoe Lundin. must be the thing. <laughs> yeah, well, I think of a big giant... Yeah, a big who man. ...who wears shorts. Okay. But I didn't get anything. Porcupine in his shorts, shorts there. Bed is the answer she's looking for, Brett. I'll tell you exactly where they put that porcupine, my darling. They put it in his vegetable patch. In his vegetable patch. <laughs> you bet your old-fashioned tin type, my Thank mom. you, Tulu. Now, Charles. I said Chalo should. Well, no matter. In a peapod. In a peapod. <laughs> well, that didn't hurt. What do you say? For Pete's sakes, if I was one of them little folks, I'd put the porcupine in his bed. Oh. In his bed. Okay. That would hurt. Richard? <laughs> I happen to know 
They put a porcupine in his pants. <laughs> That would hurt, too. Well, Fanny, what do the little people do to the jolly green giant? My grandmother was a member of the Eastern Star for a long time. I put green suit. In his green suit. suit. You know, his, his, now, that's his as bad giant. as President suit. Arthur. You know, you're, you're going downhill slowly, Fanny, but it's OK. We love you anyway, because you got great skin. Thank you. <laughs> now, it's one or nothing in round pickle. two, and we got to pause here for a little passage, and we'll be right back after something goes on here in Hollywood. GSN presents Behind the Blank. Growing up, this radio DJ was a huge fan of the match game. Was it Rick Dees, Ryan Seacrest, Howard Stern, or Carson Daly? Stay tuned for the answer. You know which radio DJ was a big fan of match game? The correct answer is C, Howard Stern. Gene was flattered and in turn looked up to Howard. Not because Gene admired Howard's show, but because Howard was at least six inches taller. Stay tuned for more of that 70s hour on GSN. Here we are. Now, Laurie scored one in her half of our second and final round. And now we point out to Mary Duncan that you must score one to stay in the game. Two, however, will win it for you. Here we go. Snow White said. <laughs> All right. Which one of you seven dwarfs has been wearing my blank? <laughs> She was sweet. She talked in this sweet, gentle voice. Which one of you seven dwarfs has been wearing my blank? That's what she said. She was a sweet girl, wasn't she? She was. I wish you'd sugar. Yeah. Gene, I wish you'd loosen up a little bit, though. <laughs> I'm very tense. She was very sure. weird. <laughs> Living Charles, with seven did you finish? Days. There well, we go. Hasn't caught on to how to play it yet. Yes. Here we go. Mary Duncan. Snow White said, "All right now." Which one of you seven dwarfs has been wearing my... Bra. Bra? She looked too young to me to... But it sweet. may have been a training bra for all I know. I don't know. <laughs> they you call know. it a minus A. A minus A? <laughs> I don't know. That. You know, I'm a big fan of this show. You know that. Because yeah. I'm secretly in love with this lady here from the South. Uh, of south. Maine. She's yeah, south of Maine. Well, yeah. Look at her hair. So I learned, when in doubt, say... Bra. <laughs> There's a man. Score is tied. One more bra wins the game. Oh, golly. I felt like you did that she didn't even, you know, that she was a minus A. Yeah. So I said dress. Dress. Okay. All, All right, Charles. If you don't cut that out, you're going to get it one of these I days. <laughs> What do you, you say? You know what the Seven Dwarfs' real names were? No. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Think it over. Bra. <laughs> Congratulations. Another $100 for you. And our grateful appreciation to Laurie Healy for Thank being you. with us and gracing our stage with her beauty. Thank you. Good luck to you. A gift for you backstage. Many thanks for being here, Laurie. Bye. Here we are again with the Big Money Super Match. Are you ready for it, Mary? Ready. Okay, we pulled a recent studio audience and got their best response to this. Blank aid. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match that. If you match the next one, it's $250 for you. If you match the bottom one, you get $100. Now, which celebrities would you like to get an assist from here? Joyce? Oh, good. <laughs> First aid. First aid is her answer. Another one? Fanny. Uh, Fanny. Band, uh, Band-Aid. Band-Aid. What? Excuse me, one more. Brett. What is that? Sugar that just called on you. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, how do you feel in that plan? Well, I was trying to think. How about foreign aid? <laughs> foreign aid. <laughs> just came into your head. <laughs> Whispered in my ear. She's so pretty, though, like a southern girl. She's a little slow. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so you have, you have Band-Aid, First Aid, and Foreign Aid. You may choose one of those, honey. Or you can go out with me and we'll run away with the money you've got. No. Or you may give us an answer of your own. What would you like to do? I'll say the first thing I thought of, and that's First Aid. First Aid is the answer you're looking for? The one that Joyce gave you? Let's find out if it's up there, and if so, where it is. First, may we see the $100 response? 
hearing aid. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? They the old people from the home okay. were here that day. <laughs> anyway, we are looking for first aid. May we see the $250 response? Band-Aid is up there, the one that Fanny gave you. I hope that's a good sign for you, Mary. Here is your third and last oh, shot at it. Looking for first aid, the $500 response. First aid it is, you got it. Well done, Joyce. Okay. So, you've got the $500. You know that means now you play for 10 times that amount or... $5,000. Now, remember to collect. You've got to match one celebrity head-to-head. -head. Which one will it be? I think I'll pick Alan. <laughs> Good. Good. Last time. <laughs> Alan who? <Alan. laughs> what did you say? What did you, you say? Uh, she matched you last time. <coughs> yeah. And yes, so, I did. So she's choosing you, Alan. You get ready to write. Sweet. That something came to our floor at last. <laughs> <laughs> and you face me, Mary. Here is the $5,000 question. He can't even get it out. He's so nervous about Alan. <laughs> no, I, I've got all the confidence in the world in Alan. All right, just don't worry. <laughs> Buffalo blank. <laughs> we uh, appreciate your enthusiasm, but remember, your answer may be rotten. Okay, how do you fill in this blank to match Alan? Buffalo blank. Bill. Bill, all right. The audience thinks you've chosen a winning answer, and the moment of truth is at hand now, Mary, as we ask Alan for $5,000 to reveal oh. his answer. You may have saved my marriage. Why you is really that? You really may have saved my marriage, because if I'd blown this... You'd never heard the end of it. I'd have never heard the end of it. You I didn't did. blow it. You blow it! She's up to $5,950, and we'll come right back to her after this message. Today's consolation prize is our Clairol's four-way lighted mirror, so you can make up for the lights you'll be seen in. And Clairol's three-way hair setter gives you curl more choices, water mist, conditioning mist, or regular set. And mini refrigerator from Arm & Hammer Baking Soda, the nice little secret in your refrigerator, Arm & Hammer Baking Soda. And Profile, with its own great flavor from the special formula of cracked wheat and wheat germ, just right for toast. Profile, it's a matter of taste. Tell your friends they've just got time to tune in the next part of Match Game 74 in 60 seconds. Ready for a brand new game? Let's meet a new player. Here is Kathy Wardlow. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Kathy will now tell us a little bit about herself. Where are you from and all that, Kathy? I'm from North Hollywood, and I'm a mother and housewife of two adorably but naughty boys. And um, I'm a native of California. Nice to have you with us, and good luck to you. Good luck to you, Mary. How do you feel? I can't believe it. You can't believe it? <laughs> I just can't believe it. Better believe it. It's all there. It's yours. 5950 Okay. Wow. Challenger, please make a selection. I'll take A. A, everybody plays. Arnold was so sleepy when he came to breakfast, he ate his tie and put a blank around his neck. <laughs> Can you believe that? Arnold was so sleepy when he came down to breakfast, he ate his tie and put a blank around his neck. Okay, honey, anything you say. <laughs> okay. All right. Come along, sweetheart. Charles? Go. Now, Kathy. Arnold was so sleepy when he came down to breakfast, he ate his tie and put a blank around his neck. A towel. That's oh. you kids. Boom! <laughs> I guess you really didn't get the idea of that, uh, Kathy. I, I guess but I did. Towel is the answer we have to accept because that's what we heard and you said it, and there it is. Alan, she says towel. I don't have towels for breakfast too often. No, you don't. Oh, but I do have pancakes. Pancakes. And that's what I say. All right. 
Brent, what do you say? I hate his answer. <laughs> <laughs> I said donut. And so put a donut. <laughs> hate his time. Put a donut around his neck. Bacon strip. Bacon strip is a very good answer. The audience thinks that's the answer. That isn't any good. Yeah, because it's something you can put around your neck. It's elongated. What do you say? Oh, I think that's dumb. A piece of bacon. Piece of bacon. <laughs> I know, so sleepy he came down to breakfast, ate his time, put a blank around his neck. What did he put around his neck there, I son? I just happened to know he's a vegetarian. Oh. So he put a banana yes. around his neck. <laughs> How'd he look? Very, very dashing. Okay. Do you like yes. that, sir? wrong with you. Fanny, <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Kathy, that was a hard one, wasn't it? It really was. was. I put newspaper. Oh. Newspaper. I hated okay. every single answer and the well, question. Why are you saying that? All right, let's see what we've got mm -hmm. for Mary. May, you may like this one. Okay. The 102-year-old man. <laughs> oh, I love it when you act. Jumped off lover's leap, <laughs> holding on to his blank. <laughs> I guess I can't do that until I hear the answers. I'll demonstrate one of those answers if they are in reason or not. Hold everything now until we get some light showing here. Joyce is lit and so is Fanny. We're going to get Richard the light on. Now. Okay. Charles, are you lit? Yeah. Mary Duncan. A 102-year-old man jumped off lover's leap holding on to his... Teeth. Teeth. I don't know. She says teeth. What do you say? I know, and we were so together a while ago. Yes, you were. We? It was such a nice moment. You're drifting you... apart now. We're quite a far apart because I, I said it was your acting that did it. Mm. I said holding on to his old lady. <laughs> on to his old lady. Oh, that was sweet. That's what you Lover do, isn't it? Yes, what I did. <laughs> what do you say, Brett? This old man was aflame with jealousy. Yeah. And he didn't want to leave anyone behind. He jumped off with his wife. That's right. What I said. They went well, together. I thought you meant his mother. No. Oh. <laughs> you don't give this guy enough credit. It's not an old lady and it's not a wife. It's a 14-year-old <gasps> girl from Kentucky, a bride. A bride? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's why he jumped. <laughs> yeah, what Only do you say? Oh, teeth. <laughs> right. Go. You, you sure you want me to that pull out? I was sure I'm sure. sure. Let's, Let's go. Out. Show and tell time. Let it all hang Excuse out. Go. <laughs> Come on. Now, let me look at it. It's not so bad. It's just socks. <laughs> she says socks. What do you say, Richard? I say he left off holding on to his wheelchair. <laughs> ah. Wheelchair. Two wheelchairs. Okay, so no score here at the end of round one. And we've got a little something for you, and then come back to us. Will you do that? Time is up. <coughs> and we thank you, ladies. And we will start with round two next time we get together. Great. All right. Listen, you are, I want to thank you from the bottom of my black hole heart. You're oh. just a dandy bunch. I had a lot of fun with all of you, and I hope to see we all of you. We got the audience survey. Yes. 82% want Brett's hair back the way it used to be, and 14 have no suggestions. <laughs> I like it the way it is. I like it, those She's Irish washerwoman's gonna, curls. I know I'm going to get the lead and go with the wind. Right. Next time we get you together, we will have these loony people with us. Orson Bean. <laughs> Brett Summers. Charles Nelson Raleigh. Kelsey Brown. Richard Dawson. And Joanne Warren. Gene Rayburn. That's <laughs> Ken 74. Ready next time. <laughs> This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 74. A Mark Goodson, Bill Tubman production. Stay tuned for Tattletales next over most of these CBS stations.
This is Match Game 74, production number 0237, and it's take one. Get ready to match the star. Jimmy Walker. Brett Summers. Charles Nelson Roddick. Joyce Beulafon. Richard Dawson. And Loretta Switz as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 74. And now, here's the host of Match Game 74, Gene Raver. I want my microphone. Well, you can't have it. <laughs> I want my microphone. <laughs> That's a very dangerous seat choice. Yes. Yes, I noticed. I beg your pardon. How are you? What are you growing on your chest? Palm trees. Palm trees. <laughs> we planted carrots, but uh, <laughs> we planted carrots. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess you're all set here, aren't you? Yeah. Hi, dear. Well, hello there. She's still the same old wig, huh? <laughs> okay. Tomorrow there'll be something funny. Terrific. Let's welcome our two players here, shall we? Ken Scop and Susie Hoppenthal. If you were with us recently, you realize that Ken has won one game. He's got $5,600 to his credit, and he's being challenged by Susie. He's ahead at the moment, four to one. He has one question to go. We're in the middle of our second and final round. He needs three to tie, four to win. We'll find out if that happens one way or another in a moment or so. Hello, friends. I'll push this button right here, you see, and that reveals our second round question. Are you ready, Ken? Yes, I am. Okay, remember, three to tie, four to win. Last time you matched Charles, <coughs> and that's it. So, Charles, you do not participate. When Paul joined the police department, his first assignment was to blank all the streakers. <laughs> first job they gave him. Did you hear that? When Paul joined the police department, his first assignment was to blank all the streakers. Jerry's the first one ready. Fred is second. <gasps> Joyce Boulevard is third. Go on, Ed. Loretta was fourth. And I'm a very close fifth. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Kim. When Paul joined the police department, his first assignment was to blank all the streakers. To clothe all the streakers. To clothe all the streakers. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> restless John. Throw them something, popcorn, peanuts, anything. Keep them quiet there. What do you say, Jimmy? He said, uh, clothe all the streakers. I want Ken off the show. He has no You don't want <laughs> Leave the show. You don't no. think that's a good answer? Arrest all the streakers. Arrest all the streakers. I guess they like your answer. Let's Pause. see if they like your answer, Brett. Why are they applauding the former mayor of New York? <laughs> Why? He's been dead for 15 years. I, what did you say, honey? I he said, said clothe clothes. all the streakers. Well, I said clothe. I said dress. Dress all the streakers. There is a match. Now come down to Joyce. When Paul joined the police department, his first assignment was to blank all the streakers. He said clothe, and what do you say? Well, I think he was an undercover man, so he had to <laughs> join all the streakers. Join all the streakers. That's a good disguise, isn't it? <laughs> Naked. Not necessarily. <laughs> what did you say, Richard? You've got to match the last two to stay in the game. I said it even chicer than join. Infiltrate. <laughs> Infiltrate. What did you say, Loretta, for the record there? The the Congratulations. Right. Well, right. 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 Stand by for a moment. You've got to say goodbye to Ken. I hope you enjoyed it, Ken. Yes, I did very much. Good. And you got some plans for the loot, have you? Yes, with the way prices are, next week's groceries. Oh. <laughs> okay, Ken, it's my pleasure having you here on Match Game 74. There you go with $5,600. You happy? Yes. All right, now don't run too far away from me here because I uh, want you to participate in this big money super match where you can win over $5,000. You know, we polled a recent studio audience, Susie, and we got their best response to this. Port blank. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match the next one, it's 250 
and that bottom one gets you a hundred dollars. Now you can get a little help from celebrities. Which ones do you choose? Richard. Richard. Port of call. Port of call. Oh. All right, there's one. Loretta. Loretta. Port. Gee. Ah, that was mine, and I'm really stuck. All I can think of is it's not English. It's French. I, I don't know. I've got to pass. Really? Yeah. Can't think of anything. Okay, yeah. her time is up. One more. Charles. Charles. Port wine. Yeah. Port wine. Okay, so you've got port wine and port of call. You may choose one of those or give us one of your own. What would you like to do? Port of call. You want to choose port of call? All right, port of call is one we're looking for. The answer that Richard gave you, he's got his fingers crossed, as we all have our fingers crossed for you. Let's find out if it's up there, and if so, where. First, may we see the $100 response? Porthole. Of course. Navy talk. What, did yes, you think I'm, of that, Jimmy? I'm hip to that. Yeah, are you an ex-Navy man? Ex-ghetto man. Oh, I see. <laughs> all right. Is that a part of the Navy? No. Oh, what zoo are you from? <laughs> We're looking for Port of Call. May we see the $250 response? Port of Call! Congratulations! What do you think is under the $500 response? Vino! Port side and Port Wine. Now, the audience is Port Wine. Here is the $500 response. You are right, audience. That was Charles' answer. Okay, now. Susie, you've got the 250. You now play for 10 times that amount, or $2,500. This will have to be an exact match with one celebrity. Which one do you choose? Richard. Okay, Richard, get ready to write. Susie faces me. Here is the $2,500 question. Blank Hill, H-I-L-L. -L. Blank Hill. Or Blank Hill. Okay, he is finished. What answer do you come up with in order to match Richard? Blank Hill. Bunker Hill? Bunker Hill? You would expect an Englishman who's only shortly arrived in this country five or six years ago to say Bunker Hill, a, a battle in American history? Yes. Well, good luck. <laughs> Richard, he said the Tower of Boston one day. Five hundred dollars. May we see your answer? Well, English people know a great deal about American history. They do. Sure, Benedict Arnold was a hero in England. <laughs> and I intend to be a hero with Susie with Bunker. <laughs> $2,850, and you're going to play another game right after we play this game with our audience. Okay, uh, Susie, are you all ready? Yeah. You pull yourself together now? You ready to play another game? Yes. Well, to do that, we've got to meet another player, and with a great deal of pleasure, we welcome Judy Petty. All right, Judy. Good. Judy will now tell us a little bit about the story of her life. Well, I'm a happy housewife. Good. And I have three, one husband and three children. <laughs> scared the heck out of me there for a second there. Three and husbands and one child. Yes. I'm originally from West Virginia. You are. Just and you live, how long have you lived out here? Long time? Yeah. You like it out here? Oh, I love it. Good. All right, good luck, Judy. I'll push a button, reveal our first round questions, and ask you to make a selection. B. She wants B. New game, everybody plays. Rudy said, last night, my wife's hair caught fire. I put out the flames by blanking on her head. <laughs> Rudy. Said that, Judy. <laughs> Rudy said. <laughs> oh, dear, it's so hot in here. <laughs> Mercy me! <laughs> Is that Rudy Ballet? Uh, no, just plain old Rudy. Hi, oh. right, Joyce. Come on. Come on. Will not let me say what I want to no, say. Just, just get that uh, right answer in there. Okay. Yes. Judy. Rudy. Judy Rudy said, last night my wife's hair caught fire. I put out the flames by blanking on her head. Tinkling. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay. She said, Rudy tinkled on his wife's head. Did he have a little bell? <laughs> Jimmy? Ding dong. No. <laughs> stomping. Being from the ghetto. Stomping. Stomping. Dancing, moving, grooving, yeah. stomping. That get would it? put out the fire, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Soul train. Right. Stomping. Yeah. <laughs> Brent, what did you say? That's what I have. One husband and three children, and I wish I had three husbands and one child. <laughs> Spitting. Spitting. <laughs> Another way of doing it? Yeah. She was bald by the time he got the fire out. Yes, Charles. Can you see their neighbors across the street? Harry, come to the window. <laughs> 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 Take the <it. laughs> I put stomp. Stomping. I'm sorry. All right. All right, Joyce, what do you say? Well, I think he, the first thing he did was smother it by sitting on our head. Sitting on the head. There. <laughs> All right. Richard, what do you say? That's not, what I said That's not a hot foot, is it? No. No. It possibly be. Yeah. Uh, I said watering. Watering her yeah. head. Because I couldn't think of another way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> if I thought of Tinkle, I would have written that down. But I said watering. No, all right, so you got the buzz there. Loretta? I couldn't think of anything except pouring water. Pouring water. Yeah. Okay, so Judy, you didn't score in your first uh, question there, and we'll see what happens a little bit later on with Susie and her question. But right now, friends, we've got to do a little business with you, and this is it. Okay, middle of round one. Got a question for you, Susie. Uh, Judy did not score in for her half of the round. Let's see how you do. Hey, I have an important announcement here, folks. Oh. Today is the first birthday of Match Game. Uh, oh, is it? Happy yes, birthday. Happy birthday to no, you. Can't sing that. Oh, don't happy sing that. Birthday. Don't sing that. We have to oh. pay a big royalty. Oh, we're dancing yeah. on with Christian soldiers. That's right. So, uh, today's the first Christian. birthday of Match Game. We couldn't afford a cake, so after the show, we're serving a big plate of blank with one candle stuck in it. You're thrilled with this question, I can see that. A big plate of blank? We are serving a big plate of blank with one candle stuck in it. Did you uh, hear that, Susie? First birthday of match game, we couldn't afford a cake, so after the show we're serving a big plate of blank with one candle stuck in it. Everybody ready? <laughs> Except Charles, who's never been to a birthday party before. Neither have I. You haven't? Nobody has birthdays where I live. Why not? People just get happy just to go for another day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here to depress us, you know. <laughs> oh, this is not the depression game? No. Oh. It's the match game. <laughs> all right, they're all set over there, so we'll call on Susie. After the show, we're serving a big plate of blank with one candle stuck in it. Spaghetti? Spaghetti? Spaghetti. Well, we couldn't afford a cake, Jimmy. She said spaghetti. What do you say? Spaghetti. Oh, my. Anyway, ice cream. Ice cream. How could we buy ice cream if we couldn't afford a cake, Jimmy? I'll send you that question, special delivery there. <laughs> Jimmy, try and get your act together. <laughs> yeah. What do you say, Brad? Let's send him back. <laughs> Joe. Uh, I said a big plate of Goodson and Todman. <laughs> Let me <laughs> All right, Charles. When I was a boy in Hartford. I went to the Pantano family, the Del Mastro family, the Iaconello family, the Matera family. <laughs> right. I lived in New York as a starving young actor before I was beautiful with the Josephine Beretti who fed me for 10 years. And she fed me what I would like to have at every celebration, spaghetti! That's the hair the Charles spaghetti. Oh, bio, okay. just to say spaghetti. And I'm well, on the new special on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? I Joyce. think they wanted to start the new year off with a bang, so they served a candle in the middle of a big plate of matches. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting, though. Get out. You have a strange mind and an interesting body. <laughs> Richard, what did you say? Beginning now. Well, I was interested to hear Charles' uh, dissertation on Columbus Day. That was, <laughs> that was very nice. No me pas con buddy. The reason you're absolutely Wait. correct is because Iris Cachola is a producer. Iris Cachola. Give us spaghetti. 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 Cachola. Cachola. 
Iris Cacciola, the producer. Bene, bene. Good son Todola. And without any of Charles's background, I also want. Huh? Faccia la spaghetti. <laughs> Le piace spaghetti, ragazza bella. <laughs> Okay, we'll push you the button and we say to Judy, what do you have to say, Judy? I'll take B. You take a B? This is a girl she wanna be. Over here! I wanna be too, but I know can I. You know you're gonna get a letter from the defamation league. You no. realize that, don't you? Only Frank Sinatra With that will accent, write. you've got Listen. to. Listen, <laughs> the Martian said on Mars, our women have light bulbs instead of blanks. <laughs> said on Mars, our women have light bulbs instead of blanks, Judy. That's it. You've got it, you've got it. Okay, that's it over there. This way I've eaten part of it. Yeah, look at that. All right, Charles. Frickin' frack. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Brett. I've been perking right along here, and now until this just, moment. I take a minute. All right, once. Judy, the dingbats are finished. Yeah. The Martian said on Mars, our women have light bulbs instead of blanks. Breasts. Okay. All right. That's two for you, uh, Judy. They're... I think that's the uh, customary number, Gene. Yes, <laughs> Jimmy, what do you say? Based on my research. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have the right answer. You do? Said, Good. Breast spelled wrong, but it counts. That's all right. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. Spelling doesn't count here, Jimmy. No, I hope not. It anyway. doesn't. All right, Brett. Uh, did you know that there's a rumor that Fanny Flagg is from Mars? Really? <laughs> yes. I say no more. But we all know what she looks like. I said bazoom. Bazoom. There's two for you, Judy. <laughs> Charles? Now, that would be funny because instead of one girl saying I wear a B cup, she said, well, I'm a 40 watt. <laughs> oh, dear me. <laughs> Hello, Joyce. Oh, hi there. How hi. are you? Well, my peculiar mind is at work again. Yeah. What would I, you like I to said, talk about? I don't know, bosoms. You want to talk about bosoms? <laughs> okay. What would you like to say about bosoms? Uh, that's enough. Mine don't light up. <laughs> Yours don't light up. <laughs> okay. You can swing that you hear in the right time, said, honey. I'm not going to pass it on. What did you say, Richard? Worse, you could have a hundred and a sixty. <laughs> uh, yes, I said boobs. Boobs, there it is. <laughs> Miss Swift. Light up the sky. With breasts, okay. You went all the way with that. Well, that was quite a recovery there, uh, Judy. Uh, six. Okay, let's see. Susie, you've got to make uh, three to stay in the game. Uh, all you can work for is a tie, so let's see if it happens. The blacksmith said... What? Wait a minute. Hold it. <laughs> uh, that's what I was running with that. Uh, you don't have to put up with that, huh? Quiet! <laughs> the whitesmith said... <laughs> Of horses, so to keep in practice, I put horseshoes on my blank. <laughs> Did you hear that? Susie? Let's go right along here. I ran out of horses, so to keep in practice, I put horseshoes on my blank. <laughs> All right, how you doing down there? <laughs> Ready? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, Susie, what do you say? I ran out of horses, so to keep in practice, I put horseshoes on my kids. On my kids. And my kids, the audience is groaning. I don't know what that's going to do for you. you got to match everybody to stay in the game, Jimmy. Kids is their answer. Dog! Dog, I'm sorry. You lose, Susie. Junior's the winner. Come on down, Jimmy. What did y'all have over there? Wife? Congratulations. Now, Susie, we've got some money for you. $2,850 to be specific. Together with our thanks. I hope you enjoyed it. Ladies and gentlemen. So now we've got to do a little business and then we've got to go to the big money super match and see how this gal does. Come right back. 
Okay. Listen, Jimmy, I wanted to ask you, how many years did it take you to become an overnight success and a big hit and a star and all that? It only took me six and a half years. Yeah. And well, then immediately to the top. Very important, please. All right, oh. people, uh, all right, but you're terrific and good times. That's oh. on at 8.30 what night? 8.30 on Friday nights. On Friday nights. Well, I'm never home then. He is good, isn't he? Is. Uh, Dawson just handed me. By the time you read this card on the air, it will be time to say goodbye. <laughs> say goodbye. Say, all right, say goodbye, Gene. Gene will join you again next time, and I hope you will join Gene. Gene who? Joe <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> over most of these CBS stations. Get ready to match the stars. Jimmy Walker, Brett Summers, Gary Berghoff, Lee Merriweather, Richard Dawson, and Joyce Julefont as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. Thank you, Johnny Olsen and friends. I've always wanted to do that. Do that again. Get me a taxi, would you? <laughs> you can do that, too. Don't, it hurts a microphone. Do I have a boy for you. What an attractive outfit that is, Bruce. Uh, are you poking fun at me? No, no, I love Best dressed that person on this stage, you're making a snide remark about oh, my no, wardrobe. I love it. I'm you just going to stand there and about kid about it? Listen, Listen, that, that is very sweet. You've never I like seen that. anything as beautiful as this That's in your whole life. That's Right. I I up out of? Save my money, I'm going to get the jacket to go with can me. I, get that out of? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I like that. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, here's our current champion, Don Silifan, who has $5,800 to his credit. Yeah. Now, as we finished last time, you won your third game, and that added $100 to it, and now you're going to try for over $5,000 for the third time. Uh, you've hit once, and you've missed once, and we'll see how this one ends up. You ready for it? I'm ready. Okay, we'll spin that. The big thing goes round and round a moment or so, but right now, this. All right, here we are with Don Silifant, his third shot at the Big Apple. Shall we have a go at it? Let's get it. Okay, let's try for it. We polled a recent studio audience, Don. We got their best response to this. The naked blank. Remember, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 to you if they matched you, or if you matched them. The next one, $250, and the third, $100. Three of the celebrities are permitted to help. Whom do you choose? I'm going to try Gary this time. Gary. <clears throat> Best seller, the naked ape. The naked ape, he says. All right. <laughs> Brett. Brett, what do you oh, say? I have two, and I can't say. Uh... Um, I think I'm going to go with the naked, uh, uh, the naked and the dead. The naked and the dead. Another big book and a big motion picture too. Richard. Um, the naked runner. It's a street crew passed me on Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> The movie, the naked I runner. told you to stay off of Hollywood Boulevard, didn't I? I was looking for you, Gene. Oh, I see. <laughs> All right. So you got the naked and the dead, the naked ape, and the naked runner. You can choose one of those or give us one of your own, Don. No, I think I'll stick with Gary, the naked ape. The naked ape is the one he's going to choose. All right, Gary's got his fingers crossed. We'll find out if it's up there, and if it's there, where is it? But we'll begin down at the bottom by revealing the $100 response. The Naked Truth. Oh, we're was that? off on one of those again. We Is haven't that? heard that for so long, we forgot. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's right. They forget quickly, don't they? Okay, the looking policy. for the Naked Ape, here's the $250 response. The Naked City. Oh, that was my second yes. choice. <laughs> Gosh, this is strange. The last two times we've been up here. Yesterday they didn't remember Frederick March. But yeah, no. <laughs> they right. remember a television series from 20 years ago. <laughs> There's the last chance for the Naked Ape. Here's the $500 response. The Naked Ape. The 
you've done, that puts you over $6,000. Now you've got $6,300. You're going to try for an even $5,000 now. Remember to collect. You have to match one of them head-to-head. -head. It has to be an exact match. It's time to choose one now. I'm going to stick with Naked Gary. You're going to stick with Naked Gary. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you face me. And if you're ready, Naked Gary, here is the $5,000 question. Lightning blank. Lightning blank. Lightning blank. All right, Gary's finished. Now, Don, your response, please, that you think will match Gary. How do you fill in that blank? Lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. Most of them think you're right. We'll find out right now if you match Gary by asking him to reveal his answer. For $5,000, may we see it? I was doing so well, too. I won last week $5,000 for a girl. I'm so... Oh, my goodness, I did say that. <laughs> $11,300. He says he loves it. Now, what are you, what are you going to do with all that money again? <laughs> I'm just going to have to think about it for a while. You are. All right. He's going to go to a motel. He's so exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> His wife is sitting out there, and she's very happy about it. There she is. And we congratulate you. And now let's bring on another player, shall we, Don? And welcome Dee McCartan. Did you know Don D? How's Dee McCartan? Fine, thank you. Good. Would you please tell us who she is? Well, she's married, and she lives in Huntington Beach. We have two children, a daughter, Laura, and a son, Gary. And I love playing tennis. You do? Mm -hmm. It's a good game. Yes. All right. You ready to play this game? Oh, I sure am. You ever play this game at home? All the time. You do? Mm -hmm. Good. Well, let's see how good you are. Ask I you to make show. a selection, D. B, please. B, everybody plays? Why don't we go to our home and play? Yes, we could play right in our house, couldn't we? Sure. Bring the cameras in, there wouldn't take up much room. <clears throat> now, you've all seen Ewell Gibbons' latest commercial. You know the one I mean, where he travels America visiting family reunions? Have you seen yeah. that one? Okay. Yes. Well, Ewell Gibbons said, he said, last week, I went to the Godfather's family reunion. I served him a huge bowl of grape nuts and got the surprise of my life. The Godfather put blank in it. Oh, I've got it! He served the Godfather a huge bowl of grape nuts, got the surprise of his life because the Godfather put blank in it. All right, did you hear all that, Dee? All yeah. right. And you know, you've seen Yule Gibbons. And... Yes. Okay. Everybody ready? Now we go over here to Dee McCart. You know the commercial I'm talking about where Yule Gibbons travels all over America. And he said, last week I went to the Godfather's family reunion. I served him a huge bowl of grape nuts and got the surprise of my life. The Godfather put blank in it. Wine. Wine. Good answer, I think. I think that's good. The Godfather might put wine in grapefruit. I wouldn't. You wouldn't. In grape nuts, rather. Would you put wine in grape nuts? Would you? No, not the Godfather. No? Since there is a sugar shortage, gunpowder. Gunpowder. Okay. Mistaken for brown sugar. No wine yet, <laughs> but let's see if it comes up here with Brett's answer. Oh, honey, I was sure I had a winner this time. Really? I said spaghetti sauce. Spaghetti sauce, another good answer. Yep, very good. Spaghetti sauce would have been a good choice, Gary. Jimmy and I were on the same wavelength. I was going for sugar, and, and there were some Italians in my family, you know. We put Parmesan cheese. Parmigiano. All right. So you got, got cheese and gunpowder, and we got all kinds of goofy stuff here. What are you going to put in the grape nuts? Well, the most horrendous part of the movie, the first part one, was that scene with the ho and I said mm. horse meat. Uh, horse meat. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I was cut out of the TV version. I, 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 I thought that 
<laughs> Keep her mouth. <laughs> Remember the uh, invitation I had for the, you know, to attend the children's concert? I'm withdrawing it. <laughs> I said spaghetti sauce. Spaghetti oh, sauce is good. Yeah. All right. I know a joke. <laughs> no. Vino. No, I said he put bullets in it. He put bullets in the grape nuts. Okay. So, there's no match for you there, D. If you had said spaghetti sauce, you would have done very well with your first round question. But you didn't. And uh, we'll get to your first round question in a moment or so. But right now, we've got to get to this. Here it is. All right, here we are. Going to finish round one. Don, ready for this? Listen carefully. It's all yours. I have an important announcement. The Match Game 75 Award for Outstanding Achievement goes to Brett Summers. The face that blanked a thousand TV sets. <laughs> Face the blank, the thousand TV sets. I would care to hear that question one more time, my God. <laughs> the Match Game 75 Award for Outstanding Achievement goes to Brett Summers, the face that blanked the thousand TV sets. You got it. <laughs> All right. Jimmy and Gary, Gary's finished. We're waiting for Jimmy. All right, Jimmy. Remember, remember what good friends we are. Remember how kind I've been to you in the lean days. In the lean days. All right. Now but he's fat now. <laughs> we'll come over here to Don Silifant. The important announcement, Match Game 75 Award for Outstanding Achievement goes to Brett Summers, the face that blanked a thousand TV sets. <laughs> Watch it. Yeah. All I can think of is uh, stopped or turned off. Turned off. Turned off with a thousand TV sets. They're mumbling. You don't like it, though. All together. Well, I don't know if that's going to happen over here, whether you're going to score with that or not. That's what, it. Is that it? That's it. That's no good. Well, we'll leave. <laughs> no. <laughs> what did you say, Jim? It was a tough question. It's a tough answer. It's a tough world. <laughs> <laughs> Broke. <laughs> Broke. All right, what did you say, my dear? You don't think I'd sell my soul for a cheap joke, do you? No. <laughs> Heck no. I said lit up. To lit up a thousand, a girl. Be proud. To break right. a thousand TV yeah. shows. Gary? Do you think that she would sell her soul for a cheap joke? No. <laughs> no. But you would. <laughs> She'd give it away. <laughs> Broke. Broke, all right. Uh, said broke twice and lit up once. Flea? As in the old mirror, cracked. Cracked a thousand TV sets. Well, from an old Miss America, what do you expect? <laughs> no, Getting listen, she's not here. that old. She was Miss America 1912 or something like that. Uh, yes, Richard? Um, I'm surprised the panel and Don would turn on this darling lady. Yes. <laughs> She's a very popular lady throughout the country. And she's very big on this show. And she's responsible for the selling of a lot of TV sets. <laughs> I sold mine, and then... <laughs> <laughs> of course, you know, she Face that sold a thousand TV sets. Okay. I think it's terrible the way it's going. Everybody talking like that, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> and broke a thousand just broke would have worked. Well, we got another one of them pitchers duels going here. Zip to zip is the score. I don't want to say we got two dummies up here because I can't say that because he's already won eleven thousand three hundred dollars. Let's see how we go with round two. D. B, please. B, it is. Everybody plays again. Oh. The lady said to the bald man, I don't care if you are Alan Funt. Get your candid camera out of my blank. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> I don't care if you are Alan Funt. Get I don't care if you are Alan Funt. Get your candid camera out of my blank. Immediately. You can't say Dennis. Love you when you're angry. <laughs> Have you finished? Are you just fooling Completely around here? This finished. is a very serious show. I know. Get your camera out of my... I don't care if you are, Alan Fun. Get your candid camera out of my blank. <laughs> Jean? Yes? <laughs> she may be lousy on the screen, but she's great on the telephone. <laughs> what does that mean? She means you're a good She always her. calls at 3 o'clock in the morning in a soft voice, so... Dee McCartan now, at bat. The lady said to the bald man, 
I don't care if you are Alan Funt. Get your candid camera out of my blank. The only thing I can think of is bedroom. Bedroom. Get your candid camera out of my bedroom. She said, get your camera out of my bedroom, Jimmy. No, no, no. no. What? Lavatory. Right. Bathroom. Okay, of course. All right. That narrows it down, Brett. <laughs> I was in the tub at the time. You were. <laughs> And I said, get your candid camera out of my bathroom. That's two of those, D. Let's see what Gary comes up with. Were your goldfish blindfolded? <laughs> Several weeks ago, I figured they might have... I said bathtub. Bathtub. Three so far in that room. Now, Lee. Gary, what were you doing in there? Yeah. Four. Wow. <laughs> Richard, do you make it five? <laughs> it would have been a good thing for you to say. Yeah, I said shower. Shower, bathtub, bathroom. Well, I guess all of those were about the same. Joyce, uh, do you make it unanimous? Uh, yeah, I think I do. I, I said he was in my pie looking for my secret recipe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are you Better than something else I could Are have said. Are you cracking up in your old age? I don't care if you are, Alan Fun. Get your candid camera out of my pie. What, what do kind you of, call it? What a, <laughs> what a, <laughs> while we're straightening off the weirdo here, <laughs> we'll have a little message for you. I gotta talk to you. All right, here we go with the second half of round two. You're in a good spot again, Don. All you need is one to win your fourth game. The psychiatrist said. I have a patient who keeps running off to Australia. His family retrieves him, and he goes right back. He thinks he's a blank. I have a patient who keeps running off to Australia. His family retrieves him, and he goes right back. He thinks he's a blank. He's not really. He just thinks he's one. You got it. Right what off the bat. What is he really? He's a psychotic is what he is. All right. I saw Paul Lynn last night. <laughs> <laughs> Joyce, put it in the slot. Okay, here we go. Now done. Psychiatrist said, I have a patient who keeps running off to Australia. His family retrieves him, and he goes right back. He thinks he's a... It's got to be a boomerang. A boomerang. <laughs> One boomerang. with all of us today? Native to Australia wins a game. Jimmy? Well, Australia is not a strong area for my people. <laughs> <laughs> So I didn't know too much about it. So I said, kangaroo. A kangaroo. Of course. All right. He thinks he's a kangaroo. He keeps wanting to go back to his native land. Brett? Do you have the feeling we're all meeting like this? Yes. <laughs> I said kangaroo. Yeah, well, a kangaroo would have been a good answer. That's if he had said it. But it's, uh, it's a, a boomerang is a better one. Gary? I hate cars. <laughs> <laughs> Don, I'm sorry, I said kangaroo, too. Three kangaroos. All you need is one boomerang and you've won another game, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen, Lee. I almost said koala bear, but I said boomerang. Boomerang wins the game. Company with you. It was a pleasure to meet you. It was fun. Thank you very much, Dee McCartney. A gift for you backstage. Dee McCartney, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. This fellow now is up to $11,400, right? Still climbing. Still climbing. Let's see how much fire, higher you are going to climb as we point out to you that we polled a recent studio audience and got their best response to this. Blank. England. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth five hundred dollars and two fifty and a hundred. You know how that goes. Three of these people, remember, are permitted to help. I'll take uh, Sir Richard. Sir Richard, what do well, you say? We always call it merry old England. Merry old England. Yeah. All right, there's one for you. I'll take Gary. Well, we always called it New England. Yeah. New England. <laughs> All right, Joyce. What do you say? London, England. London, England. That's a good All right, so it's London, England, merry old England, and New England. What say you to that? New England. New England. You're so letting that audience sway you, aren't you? No, no. No? I already had my mind, my mind made up, but I just want to see what they had to offer. Even before they started applauding for New England, you, you said you, were gonna, you thought you were going to say that. Huh? Well, I knew uh, I knew I was going to select that before I asked them. I was just curious to see if they could well, you get it too. Saved us a lot of time. <laughs> 
fun for us, you know. Yes, Don. right. This is hard work, John. Since you've had right. money, you become unbearable. <laughs> Just wait till your house is on fire. Four. He used to be grateful to Unassuming us. fireman doing his duty. Now he's rich and... Uh, stand over there, uh, Don, while I... <laughs> All right, now let's begin and look as we look for New England by revealing the $100 response. Many old England. That's about what it's worth at the moment. That's $100. right. <laughs> Just get okay. London out of the way. Here we go with the $250 response. Oh. New England, you've got it. Congratulations. That's the one Gary Berghoff gave you. Okay. What do you think is under the $500? London. 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 That's who gave you that? Joyce gave England. you that one. All right. You think they'll always be in England? Well, I'm sure of that. I don't think so, but I'd like to In spite of the say. inflation. But let's see if London, England is under the $500 response. Yes, it is indeed. Yeah, you're right, audience. Well, you know, you fooled me, audience. You all say London, but when he said New England, you all applauded as if you thought that would be the best one up there. You're That's a sneaky heading. bunch. Hedging yeah. your bet. Hedging <laughs> your bet is right. Okay, you got two fifty. You play for twenty five hundred dollars now, and uh, remember, you've got to match one of them head to head. It has to be an exact match. Which one will it be, Gary? Okay, Gary, you get ready to write. Here's the two thousand five hundred dollar question. Big blank. B I G blank. Big blank. He's finished. Okay. Now, we ask you to give us an answer which you think will match his. Big... Well, as long as we're in England, I'm going to say Big Ben. Big Ben. All right, Gary, he says Big Ben will match you. Does he collect the 2,500 show-and-tell time? I Go. Want, what I want to know is, do I get 10%? Oh. Big Ben. Gene Raven, Match Game 75. Join us next time. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 75. A Mark Goodson, Bill Tubman production. Get ready to match the star. Ron Mesa. Brett Summers. Gary Bergoff. Patty Duke Aston, Richard Dawson, and Joyce Beulafon as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Ryder. You got me, Gene. Uh, hey, Gene. What? There's some guys over there robbing the bank. They don't believe in God. <laughs> oh, you got me. I think the dingalings are ready, uh, don't you? <laughs> All dingalings ready. Hello. Uh, Dingling. Let's say hello to Robin Denson and Donna Kersey. Hello there, ladies. Here's our champ with eleven thousand five hundred and fifty dollars. You're a very chic lady. Thank you. You buy your own clothes? No, I make all my clothes. You make oh, all your own clothes? Oh, she does. You made this? Yes. That's very attractive. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Now, we welcome Donna Kersey. Uh, we're delighted to meet you, and we ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, I'm married. Uh, my husband is a swimming pool builder, and we live out in Yorba Linda, and we have a fantastic little 14-month-old girl named Shelley. Well, we uh, hope you win some money here. Like that. Thank so you. you can build a swimming pool for yourself. Oh, we already have one. Oh, you have one? <laughs> of course. Darn it. Well, then you can build one for your kid. And a side by side. Uh, uh, never mind. Uh, well, it's uh, one minute and two seconds away from beginning this game between Donna and Robin. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready, ladies? Here we go. Now, Donna. A, please. A. All right, new game from the top. Okay. Dr. I Frankenstein said, 
My monster just got married. He thinks his bride is a beautiful girl, but she really looks just like blank. <laughs> My monster just got married. He thinks his bride is a beautiful girl, but she really looks just like Blaine. I know exactly who she looks like, but I'd never write it down. <laughs> I'm on, did you hear all of that? My monster just got married. He thinks his bride is a beautiful girl, but she really looks just like... Okay, just like... Did you think of an answer? Mm. You know about Frankenstein and the monster and all that. Mm -hmm. And he said the monster just got married. He thinks his bride is a beautiful girl, but she really looks just like... <laughs> Brett. I love this audience. I love them. <laughs> they goaded her into saying that. She really didn't want to say and it. And you know what I'm going to do? Yeah. I'm going to take those silly little writers and I'm going to chain them to the driving lot and then I'm going to run over them. Okay. I'll drive and the car. I've had it with those jokes. <laughs> I'm saying that on the air, fellas. Okay. <laughs> now, Rock. You know, as a constant viewer, I'm always amazed at how they pick on Brett constantly. <laughs> I said Brett. You said Brett. The only person I could think of was... But I didn't say it. I said Bella Lugosi. Bella Lugosi. Splendid. The only person that I could think of was... <laughs> I said Brett. <laughs> So that's two, Donna. He thinks his bride is a beautiful girl, but she really looks just like blank. No, I really don't feel this way. And I only said it because I watched the show and I wondered all the about you. She just added an I don't like those answer. jokes either. Well, we do kid that I like a lot. the ones about dressing Oscar. <laughs> now, Richard. I'm not joking. <laughs> I really feel this way. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm not joking either, and I really feel this way. <laughs> She's a Richard Dawson. What's going on there? Behind my back. Okay. Now, Robin, this is yours. I have a little poem for you now. A oh. poem. Okay. Said Dr. Creel to Mr. Neal, your stomach, I feel, will never heal. The lining has begun to peel. Oh, gee. What did you have for your last meal? <laughs> A simple snack, said Mr. Neal. A giant chocolate-covered blank. Now, who could follow that? Well, all you have to remember the rhyming word. Would you repeat the question, yes. please? Said Dr. Creel to Mr. No. Neal, your stomach, I feel, will never heal. The lining has begun to peel. What did you have for your last meal? A simple snack, said Mr. Neal, a giant chocolate-covered blank. Oh, all right, if you insist. Easy. Easy. See how easy it is? All right. That doesn't rhyme. No, that was my second Oh, choice. that was the second choice. I can, talk, I can write to myself if I oh, want Oh, you're to. writing to yourself. Yeah, and then I'm going to mail them. Yeah. We're waiting for you, Gary. I know. I, 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 I'm so stunned, really. At meal, the, the meal, tremendous, tremendous feel, pros. heal, peel. Those are the words. Oh, you finished. All That's right. That's what right. I call <laughs> ball in the jet. Said Dr. Creel and Mr. Neal, your stomach, I feel, will never heal. The lining has begun to peel. What did you have for your last meal? A simple snack, said Mr. Neal. A giant chocolate-covered... Seal. Seal. Okay. That's one. Big chocolate-covered seal. That'll give you indigestion. Go ahead, Ron. I went with a delicacy. What? Seal was very expensive. I went with the eel. Eel. Okay. Correct. A giant chocolate-covered... Orville, I thought you just made fur coats out of seals. I said eel. Eel. Eel is good. Seal is good. I think I would have said eel. What did you say, Gare? I say, may I be excused for just a few minutes? Well, you got a rotten answer again? Uh, I'd rather not answer that question, to tell you the truth. I said, I forgot what I said. I said, oh, yes, I said banana peel. <laughs> uh, banana peel. I think I just slipped over my entire career. I said eel, too. So there's another eel. Got a, a lot of eels and one banana peel. And... 
L. <laughs> it's a very poor eel. <laughs> yes. Oh, dear God. Now, Magic she's looking for a chocolate-covered seal. What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> she had L also and just added the E at this I moment. Never did. That's where my other E went. That's where your other E went. Which you'd never yeah. copy. Yeah. Okay, so uh, it's four to nothing at this moment, at the end of round one. And now before we go to round two, we want to talk with you. The score at this moment is four to nothing in favor of our challenger. And we go to round two and ask the challenger to make a selection. A again. A again. Only two people play this time. Brett and... Dumbo. <laughs> and Joyce. Brett and Joyce, right. Now, you ladies remember Rapunzel? Remember the hair of the girl yes, in the tower with the, with the really hair. long yeah. hair? Yeah. Right. I remember. How well, long was it? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh. Rapunzel said, blank. every Saturday night, Sir Prancelot asks me to let down my hair. What a drag. <laughs> That weirdo doesn't climb it. All he does is blanket. That's what she said about Sir Prancelot. I'm certainly glad I'm not answering yes, this question. You lay out there. Okay, Brett's finished. All right. Now, Robin. I mean, uh, Donna. You, you know about Rapunzel. No, I don't. You didn't. <laughs> the story well, is No, you may not sweet. tell the story because it's my show. <laughs> Rapunzel is a fairy story about a girl who sat in a castle. She had very long hair and uh, when her... Well, a guy who turned out to be her lover later on, but they don't tell that to the kids, you see. I knew later on, I know what happened between the two of them, but they never said that to me when I was a kid, found out many years later. He would climb up to her balcony by grabbing a hold of her hair. And that... Uh, <laughs> Are you sure you don't want me to tell it? No. Anyway, there's a girl with a with name Rapunzel with long hair. And every Saturday night, Sir Prancelot asked me to let down my hair, and what a drag. That weirdo doesn't climb it, as he did in the fairy story. See, all he does is blanket. Comb it. That's all I can think of. All I can think of is comb it. Well, that's not bad. What do you say? What do you mean that's not bad? Well... I think that's a perfectly wonderful answer. Why would you say a thing like that? Because that's what I said. Naturally. <laughs> now you, you're up next. I always say the weirdest things. Well, this guy was a weirdo, Sir Prancelot. <laughs> this time I didn't, I said Combs. Oh! Oh, right, get everybody. Now Pressure on you, Robin. Yeah. You know what you have to do. Got to match all six to stay in the game. So everybody listen carefully. Thelma said to the fortune teller, some fortune teller you are, you told me I'd meet a tall, dark man who'd make me rich. Well, all I met was a short, fat man who made me blank. <laughs> what do you think about that? Thelma said to the fortune teller, some fortune teller you are. You told me I'd meet a tall, dark man who'd make me rich. All I met was a short, fat man who made me blank. <laughs> and would you read the question again and give me the answer? <laughs> All I met was a short, fat man who made me blank. All right. Wait a minute. <laughs> Okay, Ron and everybody ready in the lower tier. All right. Now, Robin. Thelma said to the fortune teller, some fortune teller you are, you told me I'd meet a tall, dark man who'd make me rich. Well, all I met was a short, fat man who made me... Sick. Sick? Yeah, sick. Really? Rich. Rich. Make me sick. Too late now. Yeah. Too late now, that's your answer. You have second thoughts. Okay. No, no. no. Okay, Ron. Go. <laughs> I've heard you many times turn around to Brett and say, this is my show. Yeah. Therefore, I wanted it to remain your show, so I just kept my answer simple and said poor. Poor it is. So that means Donna wins the game. What do you have, Brett? Yeah, that's what you're going to say.
Now you got a hundred dollars to stand by for a moment. Robin's going to leave us, but she's leaving a wealthy lady with eleven thousand five hundred and fifty dollars. Good luck to you in your career. You better make it. Goodbye, Robin Benson. Hello there. Hi. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. All right, let's get right to it. We polled a recent studio audience, Donna. We got their best response to this. Blank Liberty. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth 500, and then 250, then 100. Whom do you call on here? Joyce. Oh, you do first? Oh, uh, Statue of Liberty. Okay. Statue of Liberty is one. Richard. Richard. Miss Liberty. Miss Liberty. Big show. And Gary. Give me liberty or give me Brett. <laughs> give me liberty is all. Give me liberty. All right, you got give me liberty, Miss Liberty, and Statue of Liberty. Do you want one of those or have you got a better one? I'll take Statue of Liberty. Statue okay. of Liberty seems like a good response to one Joyce gave you. Let's find out if it's up there. And if it's there, where is it? That is the question. Is it under the $100 response? Give me liberty is up there. That's the one that Gary gave you. You can throw oh. me a kiss. What's that? She could throw me a kiss for that. Yes, yeah, sure. All right, we are looking for the Statue of Liberty. Are you under the $250 response? Cinderella Liberty. Aha! Uh -huh. uh -huh. Last chance for the Statue of Liberty. Here's the $500 response. Now, Donnie, you got the 500, you're to play for the 5,000. Whom do you call on? I'll take Joyce. Oh. Okay, Joyce, you get ready to write. Or you'll face me. Here we go with the $5,000 question. Slice of blank. Okay, she's finished. Now we call on you, Donna, to give us your answer. What do you think will match hers? What do you say to that? F slice of... Cake? No? No? Oh, we'll find out. Oh, wait a minute. Joyce, may we see your answer for $5,000? She says, slice of cake. I wasn't hungry, so I wasn't thinking about food. Slice of life. Slice of life. Life or... Or bread, I, I suppose. Think about yes. bologna for a minute. Bologna? No bologna on this show, Johnny. You wouldn't say bologna, would you? No. Yeah. 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 Well, anyway, listen now, Johnny, you got the 600. You're going to play another game with another challenger. But before we do that, let's uh, meet this commercial. Here we are again. You ready, Donna? I'm ready. Okay, we're very pleased to introduce another player. Let's welcome Susie Tassoni. I see you have a lucky rabbit's foot there. I have my rabbit's foot, a peso, and a St. Christopher. <laughs> You've got it all, I'll say that. Tim, <laughs> that big chested girls are stupid, that's because my brains fell. <laughs> Is that what your mother always said? Right. Well, I don't think you're stupid. <laughs> We're in a lot of any man in this bar who says you're stupid. Yeah. We're in a lot of trouble. Yes, the only right. thing I can think of is you see what happens when you eat your vegetable. Yes, right. Where are you from, Susie? I'm from Carson. I'm married. My husband, he's okay. <laughs> and I have two wonderful it's dogs. Nice to hear that. You're married to a good guy. You know, everybody he's comes up wonderful. here and says, I am married wonderful. to the most terrific guy in the world. She says, My husband's okay. Right. No, he, he's terrific. I never he's said okay. that. No, I know that. Well, your husband wasn't okay. That's right. Now we got a round one here, Susie. Okay. Please make a selection. I'll take A. 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 You sure? Possibly. Okay. <laughs> now. <laughs> 
she's aces high in your book, honey. Dumb Dora picked up the phone and said, Hello. <laughs> Hello, this is the lost and found. This is Dumb Dora. I want to report that I just lost my blank on the roller coaster. Ah, <laughs> Dumb Dora said. Hello, is this a lost and found? I want to report that I just lost my blank on the roller coaster. I love that laugh. Who was that? I happen to know, Jeez. Yes. That big chested, you know, are not dumb. No. Victor Mature was a very smart person. <laughs> Okay, the Lord here is ready. You ready, Ron? Here we go. Susie. <clears throat> Dumb Dora picked up the phone and said, Hello, lost and found. This is Dumb Dora. I want to report that I just lost my blank on the roller coaster. My wig? My wig. <laughs> it may be true what they say, but I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. I'm still working on St. Christopher and Peso. <laughs> <laughs> St. Christopher and yeah. That's right. I said Dumb Dora lost her lunch. Her lunch. Okay. Oh, now, that's not bad. No, yeah. wait a minute. That's a pretty good yes. Yeah. Now, see, sweetheart, if you lose something, if you lose your wig, you can call the lost and found, and they'll give it back to you. <laughs> so she had to lose something you could never get back. And oh, it was dear. her innocence. Her innocence. On a roller coaster. It's so wonderful. A great experience. Yes, Gary. Love is a How roller coaster. Know? Yes. <laughs> Life is not a fountain. <laughs> Life We're is all a fountain. Coming back today, Gene. Yes. All of those jokes. <clears throat> I said virginity. Virginity. I didn't know you could say that. You can't. You, yes. I would have said that. Is that what you were thinking? That's why I said teeth. Teeth. <laughs> She was thinking virginity and said teeth there. I lost my teeth in San Francisco. That's right. Okay. It's old dumb door. Well, now for a real answer. Then stick around. El Virtue. El Virtue. Okay, Joyce. She was really dumb. She let go of the best thing she ever had. Dumb Dora? Yeah. What was that? Her boyfriend. Her boyfriend? <laughs> well, that's not bad. Lo Hello, lost and found. I lost my boyfriend on the roller coaster. Okay, now, that's uh, the first question in our round one, and we've got more to go, but before we do anything, we've got to do a little business here, and this is it. The two of you ladies will certainly come back next time, won't you? Yes. Okay. And we'll look forward to seeing you. And we'll look forward to seeing you. Oh, you I are like all you just too. peachy keen. Thank you, Jean. I mean, peachy keen. <laughs> oh, Is there something I can do for anyone before we go? Oh, would you scratch my back? It's been killing me the whole <laughs> show. I can't do that. You must I'd go like and see Patty and her husband in her play. Oh, in Seattle. 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 Yeah. Right. I'll punch you at the place called. At the Moore Theater uh, in the Marriage Gamble. The Marriage Gamble. All right, thank you for that. Thank now, you. Now, next time we get together, these are the bodies who will appear on this here now stage. Avery Schreiber, Brett Summers, Gary Lugoff, Arlene Francis, Richard Dawson, and Barry White. Gene Rabin for Match Game 75. Join us next time. Goodbye. Bye. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 75. A Mark Goodson Bill Tubman production. Stay tuned for Title Tales next over most of these CBS stations. Get ready to match the star. Orson Bean, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Pat Finley, Richard Dawson, and Joyce Villafont as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Rayburn. Thank you. Wonderful. Oh,
every time you come out, it rains. Blue <laughs> car. No, no, do you know why pathetic. Orson does that? Why does Orson do that? I told him you had to clean up. And ever oh. since I told him that, he just keeps <laughs> throwing those Getting things. rather messy here. As try the end of the week, to remember <laughs> the time the number. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? Of course I'm You ready. ready. For what? Ready? Never. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, we're going to start without you. Let's say hello to our two players, Barbara Beebe and Tommy Sanger. <laughs> Ladies. Barbara's our current champion. She has won $2,850, and I know that brings a little joy to her. What are you going to do with that money? Um, did you ever wish you had enough money to do some real special things for special people? Yes. And that's what I'm going to do. Am I special to you, Barbara? Well, <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Mm -hmm. Not yet, oh. but keep trying. Okay. <laughs> All right. And she's being challenged now by Tommy Singer, and we found out a little bit about her. She's from North Dakota. And she's a student who is studying marketing. What year are you in school, Tommy? I'm a junior, senior. Junior. Uh, what kind of course. courses do you get in a marketing thing? Economics and... Economics. Um, you take corporate finance, accounting... Corporate finance. I knew him well. <laughs> <laughs> marketing okay. consists of how not to squeeze the Charmin. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, I will start this game right after we start this message for you. Ready, here we go. Round one coming up. Tommy, it's your choice, A or B, if you please. B, please. B it is. Everybody plays new game. Mm. Yes. Oh. On the Titanic, oh. Agnes said, I'm never taking this steamship again. Here we are sinking, and the captain is up on deck, blanking. <laughs> It's a first round, wide open question. Whatever we comes to your little mind. We're all stumped. I had several. I was just trying to make up my mind. Could you read it again? Maybe it'll That's give good. Idea. That's a very good answer. On the Titanic, Agnes said, I'm never taking this steamship again. Here we are sinking, and the captain is up on deck blanking. Da -da 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 -da. Can I say this? <laughs> okay. Can I say that? Sure, if you want to say that. It's up to you. All right. Threes. Uh, just put it in a slot, Joyce. Don't be tentative or hesitant about that. Tommy Singer. On the Titanic, Agnes said, I'm never taking this steamship again. Here we are sinking, and the captain is up on deck blanking. Drinking? Drinking. Not a bad eh? He's up there uh, taking a belt or two. What'd you say, Ors? I had him up there singing, Nearer my God to thee. Singing, that's indeed. That's very good. That's what they did on that, uh, yes. What happens when you have one too many? Well, you fall on your face, oh, uh, yes, as you well saying. know. Should all, all acquaintance be forgotten? There yes, okay, two singers. Well, what did they hit? They hit an iceberg. I said he was up there making ice cubes. <laughs> <laughs> making ice cubes. What did you say, Pat? Well... I don't even, I don't even really want to explain it. I don't want to show it. Uh, Come on, show it. Hope not. Barfing. Barfing. <laughs> well, he got seasick. You know how it is. It was a traumatic experience for him, and he just says, oh, I'm going to go away. Well, all right, Richard, here we are. Are you on a network show? <laughs> yes, I was. It's the Bob Newhart show. Well, I'll drink to that. I'll drink to that. Okay. Now, Tommy Singer. Here we are sinking, and the captain is up on deck drinking, according to Tommy. What do you say? Well, it's because of Orson I said this. I said he was getting tattooed. <laughs> <laughs> getting tattooed? I understand your you answer, Joyce. Right? I what think that's a wonderful answer. answer. What he was I really doing one was... Of the was, best uh, answers. He was, what was he doing, Orson? He, he was kissing the first mate. I didn't want to go... <laughs> no, he wasn't. Okay, your first round question, Barbara, reads as follows. Frugal Phyllis finds a use for everything. Last year, she took her old steel wool and knitted a blank. <laughs> oh, dear. Took her old steel wool and knitted a blank. <coughs> took her old steel wool, you see. Yes. And got her knitting needles out and knitted a blank. Okay, put that in the slot. Everybody's ready, so we'll call on Barbara. 
frugal Phyllis finds a use for everything. Last year, she took her old steel wool and knitted a blank. A sweater. Really? <laughs> some do and some don't. I don't know what you'd make out of old steel wool, Orson. What do you make out of old steel wool? Well, frugal Phyllis had been frugal for many years and had saved up a lot of steel wool. What did she make? Who, who did she have steel wool? She <laughs> knitted a stove. A stove? <laughs> There's a good answer. If you've got a lot of steel wool, you knit yourself a stove. Good. All right, Brett. Oh, no, she knit herself a girdle and just scratched herself to death. <laughs> Well, that'd hold it in, wouldn't it? <laughs> Make me so nervous. Charles? She was going with a rugged guy. Yeah. What was his name? Chuck. Chuck. And she knitted him a suit of armor. Oh. A suit of armor. You could do that with steel. What do you say, Pat? Well, after Orson's last answer, I don't feel bad about anything. What do you say? She knitted a cap. That's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so disappointed in your past. Rich wants to see a question again. Uh, Frugal Phyllis finds use for everything. Last year, she took her all her old steel wool and knitted a blank. And, well, she uh, was actually uh, frugal in more ways than one. <coughs> yes, she was. And she knitted herself a chastity belt. Oh! <laughs> a wonderful woman. Yes. Yeah. One could do that if one had enough metal, of course. She had a little yes. left over and she knitted herself a number of keys and passed them around. <laughs> Joyce, what do you say? She was dating the Godfather and she knitted herself a bulletproof vest. That's what you say. <laughs> oh, nice. So at the end of round one, it's one and nothing in favor of our challenger, Tommy. Round two coming up in a moment or so, but first this. Ready, round two coming up, as I promised. Here it is, Tommy. B, please. B. Now, let's see, you matched one person, Richard, last round, and uh, you lay out, Richard. Okay? <laughs> the rest of you pay attention to this. Right. Inflation has finally hit. <laughs> May your house be free from tigers. <laughs> Inflation has finally hit fairyland. Oh. <laughs> Don't play. No. <laughs> Times are so bad that the little old lady who lived in a shoe just had to move into a blank. That's how bad it, bad it is in fairyland. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. You got the idea. The little lady who lived in a shoe just had to move into a blank. Did you hear all of that, Tommy? Yes, I did. You think about it while they're finishing up. They're ready. Charles, we can't wait forever. Joyce, you're not finished either. I know it. I know it. Little old lady who lived in a shoe had to move into a blank because inflation hit fairyland. <laughs> all right. Don't ask her. Trust okay. Me, just don't ask her. Now, Tommy, yes. inflation has finally hit fairyland. Times are so bad that the little old lady who lived in a shoe, just had to move into a... Sandal? A sandal. That's good. That's very good because presumably a sandal is smaller than a shoe. That's yes. very good thinking on Tommy's part. A sandal is the little old lady from the shoe's summer home. Oh, the summer home. Yes, oh. however, in the winter, she poor thing has to live in a sneaker. In a sneaker. That's good. This is a sandal and there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> People before you do that? <laughs> 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 Smelling salts. <laughs> Medic first aid. Don't <laughs> <laughs> do that. We're only, we're only fun in you. <laughs> you know, the last least... time she did that on a nighttime show, we lost two panelists. <laughs> 
man who has sat beside me for two years without shoes and clothes, I mean, without socks and closed shoes. Do you know what happens? Yes, I know what happens. I don't I want to hear about it. I my life in tears up yeah. here. Sneakers. Sneakers. So we have two pairs of sneakers so far. What do you offer, Charles? She's looking for the answer, sandal. All right. I understand we're pushed for time. Now, when you live in a... What is the cheapest place you can move into as a house? As a house. A tent. A tent. A tent is made of? Canvas. canvas. And a sneaker is also made of canvas. Okay, so there's logic to that. Three pairs of sneakers so far, and uh, no sandals. You give this little lady a sandal, would you? No, I'm terribly sorry, but I'll give her a shoebox. A shoebox. So far, no sandals. Joyce. Well, it is fairyland, right? It is fairyland, indeed. I said a mushroom cap. Oh, isn't that... I told you not to ask her. Fairyland. <laughs> call on you anymore <laughs> and neither is anybody else now you're ready. you need one to tie two to win the nurse said to the surgeon i like to hear music during an operation so the surgeon played a tune on the patient's blank <laughs> the nurse said to the surgeon I like to hear music during an operation, so the surgeon played a tune on the patient's blank. <laughs> Will you stop giggling and write an answer now? Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. So the surgeon played a tune on the patient's blank. It wasn't a Did I execute it all right? <laughs> Okay. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> Just leave him alone now. <laughs> Come on now. All right, Barbara. The nurse said to the surgeon, I like to hear music during an operation. So the surgeon played a tune on the patient's blank. Barbara. <laughs> you can't think of anything? Intestines. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to go through with this. <laughs> what do you say, Orson? He blew up his kidney and played I'm Forever Blowing Bubbles. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, actually, he gave a quick rendition of the Bells of St. Mary on his backbone. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right, like a xylophone or yes. marimba. No yes, indeed, that. yes. What did you say, Brett? Well, I don't know whether we are... I thought of it as before the opening. Yes. You know. Whoa. And I said abdomen and or stomach. Now, is that a match? Because once you cut through, you might possibly no, get into the... No, can't tell we can't match that. Right. Into the intestine. Let's not be too graphic what with this. We, uh, Charles, I'm uh, very on. glad, Gene, you brought up the marimba and the xylophone mo motif, which was a lovely thing to do, so I chose ribs. I ribs, think. that would be it. Yeah. That would make me... Well, the audience likes that. That's a good one. I've got a good one, which I'll tell you about when you've all revealed yours. You May we that see yours? Before. Yes. My doctor was from the islands, and he played the tom-tom on her tummy. That's, that'd be interesting. That'd be very and good. now I want to leave. Now, Richard, you're up. We all like to sing, actually, of a musical instrument, something that might be inside of the human body. Mm -hmm. So the surgeon played a tune on her intestinal organ. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What is that? Okay. Intestines? Yes, we've got oh, a bell for that. I should oh, have you got so. one. What? Well, yes or no? Yes. No. Oh, all right. Well, what are they called? I don't know. Didn't now, Joyce, intestines? it's up to you. Well, I just... She's looking for the word, uh, the match intestines. Okay, mushroom. And <laughs> if uh, she doesn't match you, why, oh. the game will be over and Tommy will be the winner. What do you say to that? I was seriously trying to think where you do play tunes on your body. Yeah. And... Um, I thought that, that you have. <laughs> Wait a minute. The bells Didn't of St. Mary's. The, ba the bell, pi the bagpipes here. <laughs> Only when I was trying to cut my but throat. I, did, I said I couldn't think of this. It's part called of the, the body. Adam's intestine. <laughs> the, the vocal cords. I said the chin, and I'm in here. Oh, you meant there. I know what you mean, so Tommy said I win the game. Now you're going back to Van Buren, Arkansas, huh? Yeah. 
Well, all right, give them our regards, will you? Sure How will. How much are you taking with you? $2,850. Congratulations to Barbara Denny. Goodbye. Now while we spin her off, we'll spin this message just for you. We are ready. If you are ready, we are ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. This young lady's won her first game. She's got her first hundred dollars. She will try now for over five thousand dollars here. And let's begin. We polled a recent studio audience, Tommy. We got their best response to this. Sugar blank. Now the answer they gave most often is worth five hundred dollars if you match it. If you match the next one, you get two fifty. And the bottom one, a hundred dollars. Whom do you call on? Joyce, please. Joyce. I got a good one, I think. What? Sugar Daddy. Sugar Daddy. Well done, Fray. Brett. Brett? Uh, how about, there are a couple, of, how about Sugar and Spice? Sugar and Spice. Charles. What do you say, Charles? Let's get into the heavyweights. Yeah. Sugar cane. Sugar. <laughs> sugar plum fairy. I mean, I do not, did you say cane or king? Cane. Cane. I did not say sugar plum fairy. No. I said sugar cane. The sugar plum fairy. <laughs> he is the sugar plum fairy. Sugar cane. So we got sugar cane, sugar and spice, and sugar daddy. Do you want one of those, or do you want to give us one of your own? How about sugar daddy? Yeah. Sugar daddy, Joyce's answer. We'll find out if it's up there, and if so, where. Let's begin down at the bottom and reveal the one hundred dollar response. Sugar daddy, right off the bat, you got it. Congratulations to you. All right. I'm curious to see what's under the $250 response. Slide it, Earl. Sugar and spice. Usually, uh, Brett gave you that one. What do you think is under there? The big one. Cane. Okay, go. Cane is right. Okay, now you won the 100. You're up to 200. You're going to play for 10 times that amount now or $1,000. Whom do you call on to match exactly? Charles. Charles, are you ready? Uh, yo. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Huh. I love it when you're butch. <laughs> here it is. Tra I can't hear that from here unless you use a more strong masculine okay, voice. Right, here you go. Trap blank. That's T R A P blank. Chuck. Trap blank. Trap blank. Ding. He's finished. Now, Tommy, we need your answer. One you think will match his. Trap blank. Trap door? Trap door. Good answer. We'll find out if it matches him or not. Trap blank for $1,000, Charles. She says trap door will match you. You know, I... <laughs> I actually, for one fleeting moment, thought of the trap family singer. Yeah. <laughs> Because her dress is very trap family singer-ish. That's right. Right, but when she leaves, she's gonna go through the door. Okay. $1,200, Tommy Singer. That's a lot of money for you, and we wish you well. And you're going to play another game now. You ready? Oh, I'm ready. All right, let's meet your new opponent. Here comes Jeanette Crosby. Okay. All right. Back Hello, Jeanette. Hi. You know this lucky lady, Tommy Singer? I sure do. She's, She's got $1,200, and we wish you well as we ask you to tell us about you. Well, first of all, I guess I'll start with my family. I have a very busy life. I don't, I'm not quite sure whether I live in Oakland or in L.A. I do believe I live on an airplane. To sum that up, I'm a stewardess. I have been married for one year. I have six lovely children. Six? <laughs> six? Did she say six children? Six children and you've been married a year? I demand an explanation. I demand a recount. It's spelled S-E-X, I mean I-X. Six. What? I don't know what that means, but Six whatever it children. says. All right. We wish you well, and we'll start this game. <laughs> Thank you all. You were splendid. Next time we get together, these are the people you will see on this stage. Bill Macy. Brett Summers. Charles Nelson Raleigh. Elaine Joyce. 
Richard Dawson, and Betty White. Team Raven Match Game 75, join us next time. Goodbye. Get ready to match the star, Avery Schreiber, Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Riley, Lana Wood, Richard Dawson, and Joyce Bulefox as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene You broke my microphone. Oh, I didn't, but I didn't put it. <laughs> okay. I just, Did yes. that hurt? Uh, thank you, Johnny Olson, and dear friends and gentle hearts. May are you all I ready? say how much I enjoyed Helen and yourself on Tattletales yesterday? Weren't we I'm a Helen Rayburn. Excellent. I'm married. Did you all see it? Yes. Wasn't it? Weren't we too? It's wonderful. <laughs> we're, we're on right after this show, aren't we? You're on again today. Oh, we're on again today. You have to keep going back till you get it right. Okay. <laughs> <we'll do that. laughs> Now, what do you say we get this right? Let's say hello to our two players over here, Ginny McClinton and Dion Zabra. <laughs> Ginny's the current champ. You've won how much? $1,200. Well, what are you going to do with all that loot? I hesitate to say. <laughs> well, no, you may tell us. I, I won't say a word to anybody. Tell me what you're going to do with that money. Well, when I first found out I was going to be on, yes. that I said I would be happy if I just want enough money to pay for the gas to go back to Alabama. Oh, listen. But I hated you... to say that again. Well, that's all right. But that's the gas. You're up to your blank in gas now. Yeah, it seems so. <laughs> and, Dianza, how have you done? Uh, you've had your first round question, and you didn't match any of our celebrities, and we're going to see if she's going to do any now. And her first round question, right after we hear about this message. Doesn't they look natural? Thank you. Some sweet young people in the audience gave me this flower. Read the note. Oh, yeah. What's that? Read, Read the, the note. note. Read the note. I just do punchlines. I haven't got time to read the Carnations note. Carnations are shining in no, Pittsburgh. No, stop that now. <laughs> Let's push this button here and reveal the other first round. This is yours, Ginny. I'll put the, say, listen, wouldn't this be a good thing, fellas? You could, you could conceal the microphone, That's you see? Terrific. I mean it. Everybody think I'd be walking around holding a flower in my hand, and it's really a microphone there. Say, good it seem the <laughs> You are getting very minty. <laughs> what do you got there? I think the enemy are out there. <laughs> now listen to this. Okay. Yes, yes. This is for Ginny. Long John Silver said, Ah, oh, never again will I go to a party with Chief White Cloud. Why? Long John Silver. That Indian Silver. got so drunk, he carved me wooden leg into a blank. <laughs> Chief White Cloud. What, honey? Once more. <laughs> Once more. Long John no. Silver said, Never again will I go to a party with Chief White Cloud. That Indian got so drunk, he carved me wooden leg into a blank. Got it. Okay. Imagine Charles after two years. Look at him. You're ready. Smug and 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 sm smart blanked. <laughs> Leave that girl alone. She has a slow mind naturally, and you're slowing her up. Any of that. Trying to get it moving. All right. Uh, now we're ready. Over here to Ginny. 
Long, would you like to smell my microphone? Isn't that a sweet-smelling microphone? <laughs> Long John Silver says, I never again will I go to a party with Chief White Cloud. That Indian got so drunk he carved me wooden leg into a blank. Arrow. Into an arrow. Uh, okay. She say, into an arrow. Wrong. Wrong? Yeah. Wait till it's it your turn. You're only wrong when it comes to your turn. Avery, you know what's on. funny? I, I put on my tie hoping I'd get a match. Yeah. I said it to a totem. Into a totem pole. Yeah. You yeah, look pretty right. snappy. Yeah, well, thank you. Yes. Is that what you Now, mean? now tell us, show us your wrong answer. I want you to know that that Avery Schreiber, I take back every mean thing I ever said about him, he is smart as a whip. Yes. Aren't you? He can't play this game, but he's smart. <laughs> totem pole. Totem pole. <laughs> you look like a funeral director. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder, could you direct me to a funeral? Are you knocking funeral directors? Don't send us any mail, she's only funny. Wait a minute. Stand up for a second. <laughs> now, he looks natural. <laughs> yes. Yeah, He's the star Is the prom the... over so soon? Yeah. <laughs> he carved me wooden leg into an arrow. I heard the acting. <laughs> Totem pole is too big, arrow is too small. The nearest thing to a wooden leg would be, and let's hear it, audience, and no standing ovations, a peace pipe. Oh. That's not as good as totem pole. That's a sitting ovation, and they didn't have. Now, he carved me wooden leg into an arrow, according to Ginny. What do you say? Long John Silver was such a great, huge fellow, and he carved it into a huge totem pole. <laughs> Your pole is upside down. <laughs> a lot of people have said that, but never now, on television. Richard, the girl is looking for an arrow. Well, she's come to the wrong place. <laughs> well, it has to be a what? totem. A totem who? Yeah, or totem uh, check. Well, that's right. Today. Now, we would naturally expect <laughs> Joyce, yeah, who is the right perfect spend, person, though. to say totem pole because that's the best answer. Right, Joyce? Right. <laughs> <laughs> On second thought. <laughs> That's the right answer. Well, let's go on. No, come on. Now, show the I said papoose. I don't know why. Papoose. <laughs> 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 no. Would you boo a woman with papoose? <laughs> yeah. Shame on you. <laughs> now the score at the end of round one is zip to zip here. A real oh. tight game, as you can see. And we're going to continue the tension and excitement here right after this message. Okay, we're ready to carry on. Talking to my carnation. Thank you. Now, we'll push a button here, go to round two, and ask Dionza to make her selection. A. A? All right. You know, if a wino has just woken up and tuned in now, he will never drink again. Winos of the world. <laughs> I hope you're going to learn a lesson from this. <laughs> now, <clears throat> tickles. Melvin said... Said the bishop to the actress. No, Melvin said... Boy, was that a weird wedding. The bride didn't throw the bouquet, she blanked it. Was that a weird wedding? Weird. The bride didn't throw the bouquet, she blanked it. The groom spoke through it. Yes. <laughs> Was that a weird wedding? The bride didn't throw the bouquet. <laughs> she blanked. Charles has a telegram. Yes? Shall you do your telegram once you do your answer, Charles. I just received a telegram. You have a telegram, Charles. Confucius say man, MC, who talk into flower, his career has gone to sea. <laughs> Yes. Wait a minute, Western Union just rang up again, yes? yes? Confucius also say, MC who talk into grass has gone to pot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the telegram. <laughs> All right, now we're ready for Dionza's response. <laughs> Melvin said, boy, was that a weird wedding. The bride didn't throw the bouquet, she blanked it. She ate it? She ate it. Good answer. 
Open your mouth, Avery, and Why make a sound. Why it? You, oh, Avery! You've been eating the cards and the flowers and everything, and you didn't think of that? Oh, I don't eat flowers. You don't? Oh. She married it. She married it. All right, Brett. I'm sulking. You're sulking? Why? Did, is it something... Because Avery is just gone too far. Really? Why would that girl say eight? I don't know. Why? Well, she could have had a wonderful answer like Mary. <laughs> but I said eight. You said eight. You in the flower. I said planted it. The bride didn't throw the bouquet, she, she planted, planted it. it. <laughs> okay, Deonza, that's one for you so far. Now we come to Lana Wood. My bride wore her bouquet. She wore her bouquet. That was not a weird oh, bride. Lana, that's weird. I think that's weird. Oh, really? Okay. Richard, give us a weird answer. Well, Deonza, eight. Yeah, that's weird. That's true for you, Deonza. Joyce? I just hate this. Speaking <laughs> <laughs> of weirdos, here's Joyce. I, I said she sat on it. Yeah. Could be worse. Yeah. She could be related to you, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you say that, Joyce? I, don't, I sat on all mine. Oh, all right. <laughs> Oh, okay. there have been many, yeah, let me tell you. Now we come to Ginny Clinton, the Clinton, who has to match two to stay in the game. Three will win your third game, Ginny. Dr. Hackam, the surgeon, <laughs> lost his mask. So, he put his nurse's blank over his face. <laughs> Finished, you're the best. Put his nurse's blank over his face. Once Finished. more. Dr. Hackam, the surgeon, lost his mask, so he put his nurse's blank over his face. All I'll right. I'll tell you one thing, fast is not necessarily terrific. Right, here we go. Now, Ginny, Dr. Hackam, the surgeon, lost his mask, so he put his nurse's blank over his face. Cap. Yeah. Nurse's so he put his nurse's blank over his face. Avery is going to give you a terrific answer for a change. <laughs> and you will see what a terrific... Heck, Cap is not bad, Ginny. I don't want to make a few bad. But listen, listen to this terrific answer. Have you seen it? Please. Biologically, please. the Cap may be a better answer. Her bra. Bra! If you think about it for a, a moment, Jim, <laughs> you see, it looks like two attached uh, face masks. Sure. Uh, <laughs> we just made eye holes. All tied together. That's right. Make a couple of eyes. Yes. What do you say? You know, I knew she wasn't going to say bra because she's a nurse, right? Yes. So I thought, I'm going to match because that's my job. Right. Right? So I thought, I know what she's going for. Being a nurse, she would whip off her entire uniform. <laughs> She said, Cap, you betrayed me, Jenny. I'm finished. <laughs> you expected that sweet, innocent-looking little girl to say she's going to rip off all her uniforms? She's a dedicated medical person. Oh, I see. She would just open up that thing and fling it over. Oh, pardon me. Charles. <laughs> For a minute, I thought you had flowers on your mic. Yes. <laughs> uh, no. It's true. Bra is the answer, but why? Why? Because... <laughs> Dr. Hackam chose a bra. Why? Why did why? he? Why does everyone say what Dr. Hackam is in the hospital? He's two faced. Oh. <laughs> it's Dr. Now, Miss Lana, honey, yes. could you show us your yes. answer, honey child? I thought of the exact same thing Charles did, believe it or not. The yes. two faced man wearing a, a bra, bra over his face. Okay. Now, uh, Jimmy, you've got to match the two remaining celebrities to stay in the game. Richard, we're up to you. You know, it's She's kind of weird, Jenny, because producing a bra usually will strengthen a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunately, this is going to end yours. I have a bra for All you. right. What do you have, Joyce? A poof. Oh, 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 oh,
of Miss Weirdo finally hat. came up with a great answer. Hat. Look at that, Jimmy. You want to sign it? I'll get it to her as an autograph. Uh, will you sign it? We'll give it to Ginny. Okay. Uh, listen, Ginny, you're going to leave here with $1,200 in cash. We thank you very much for being with us on Match Game 75. Ginny McQuinton, while uh, she's spinning off, this will this message for you. Give her a hat. This little lady's happy. She's just won uh, $100, but uh, more important than that, she's going to have a chance now. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I guess I think I'm allergic to fern fronds. Uh, she's going to have a chance to win over $5,000 now. Are you ready for that, Dionza? I'm ready. What kind of name is Dionza? It's a pretty name, but... It's uh, what's, Spanish. It's I... Spanish. Dionza. What does it mean? The question. I got it from... <laughs> the question? No, 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 That's no, what no, it means. Dionza. Literal translation. Oh, what is the? It was a tale. I thought it was just Dionysia. And I was named three years before I was born. Now wait a minute. Back it up. Three years before you were born, your mother and father were in a motel in Albuquerque, and that was the name of it, Dionysia. Hey, you're lucky. You could have been called Ramada Inn. That's right. The Ace Motel. Right. Now, Dionysia. Here we go. We pulled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Edgar Blank. Ah. Well, the answer they gave most often is worth $500. Then if you match the middle one, the middle one you get $250. The bottom one gets you $100. Whom do you call on for some help? Richard. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put the fern fronds in your head. Richard. Why, the creator of the horror stories, Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe is one. Brett. Edgar Bergen. Edgar Bergen. You got two now. Charles. Charles, she calls on you. I would like to say, <laughs> and we're very happy he's out of the hospital and well, the wonderful actor, Edgar Buchanan. Edgar Buchanan. So now you have Edgar Buchanan, Edgar Allan Poe, and I pronounce us man and wife. <laughs> and you may throw the bouquet. You got Edgar Allan Poe, Edgar no, Buchanan, wear the Edgar, <laughs> Edgar Bergen. You want one of those, or have you got a better idea? No, I'll go with Richard, Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe. Okay, that's the one we're looking for. Let's find out if it's up there, Dionza. Let's examine, shall we all together now, the $100 response. Yeah. Edgar Winter. Who is Edgar Winter? <laughs> Who's Edgar Winter? Come over here. <laughs> Edgar Winter is He's a, rock, a rock, singer. rock singer. He sings rocks. Name a song that he sang. <laughs> rock. rock. Get off the stage! The rock song. <laughs> What's that, Pat? Rock and roll hoochie coo. Excuse me. We don't want any questions that have anything to do with winter or fall. We want summer and spring because we are from the flowers. <laughs> Who was that? A masked man. Okay. <laughs> We are looking for the response, Edgar Allan Poe, and you gave us Edgar Winter. Now, <laughs> Edgar Winter. let's find Edgar out what's Winter. under the $250 response. Edgar Summer. Edgar Bergen. All right, that's uh -oh. the one that Brett gave you. You're getting close to Edgar Allan Poe, Dionza. Let's find out what's under the $500 response. Edgar Allan Poe. so happy for you. Even my carnation is quivering. <laughs> Dionza, you won the $500, really. you're up to $600, you're going to play for 10 no. times 500 now, or 5,000. But to collect, you have to match one of them exactly head to head. Which one will it be? Richard. Talking to the carnation now. <laughs> okay, uh, Richard, you get ready to write, and Dionza will face me, and here it is. It's worth $5,000. Liberty blank. Liberty blank. That was quick, Richard. Now we'll see what Dionza comes up with in an attempt to match you. What do you say, Dionza? Liberty blank. Bell. Bell. <laughs> Liberty Bell. Is that the first thing that came to your mind? Yes. Okay. She says Liberty Bell was the first thing that came to her mind, Richard. What do you say? Give me liberty. Yes. Or give me a bell. <laughs> Did it work? Yes. Yeah.
said, are you making a public? And I said, what are you going to do with all that money? She says, I'm going to quit work. Is this a public announcement you're yes. making? It is. All right. Who, what's your boss's name? Tom Hebert. Tom Hebert, you're fired. We quit. We're rich. We don't need you, Tom Hebert, no more. All right. Would you like to do a little commercial here? Anything you say. We're rich. We're quitting. We're getting out of here. You do this commercial. I don't need you. Now, I thank you, one and all, for being oh, no, here. Thank you were just you. Jim Dandy. Go. And you don't want to go? Well, you got to go now. But we you may come you back to, again though, sometime. Now. Now listen, be sure to watch the Helen Rayburn show, <laughs> which follows this one immediately. It, uh, there are other people in it, Bert Convy and several others. And uh, the next time we get together, some of these people will be here and some won't be. Specifically, these are the ones who will return. Bobby Van, Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Riley, Sarah Kennedy, Richard Dawson, and Betty White. What's so wrong with the man in the red coat? Oh, nothing. What's we wrong? love you dearly. <laughs> but stay away from the bull ring. <laughs> <laughs> You're very, very, that's very patriotic. Red Thank jacket, you. white pants, and you blew the opening. That's right. <laughs> $600. Does that make you feel good? Oh, yes. Good. And Linda, you've had your first round question, and you had two, and you've had yours. It's, it's, it's two to one at this moment. And we'll finish with round two coming up in one minute and five and four fifth seconds. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> We've missed you. <laughs> We've been listening to the Budapest String Quartet <laughs> do their version of Eine Kleine Nachtmusik. Now, are you ready? Bing! Round two coming up, Linda. Your choice, A or B? B, please. B it is. Now, let's see. Two people do not play. Joy does not play, and Charles does not play. The rest of you, if you would respond to this, please. <laughs> I saw you. I saw you do that. The bionic woman said, the scientist in charge of my ears made a big mistake. Uh -huh. So, if you want me to hear you, you have to talk into my blank. <laughs> Scientist. I heard you. Oh, you did. <laughs> she says, I heard you. <laughs> you certainly do have theatrical projection. Okay. This lady has theatrical projection because she spent a great many years in the theater. She did the original Broadway company of a marvelous show by George Kaufman called The Man Who Came to Dinner. I know. She did the What's that? Naval, I guess. And what? 
Yeah, Moss, I'm going to get you for that. Oh, yes. And he's yeah. dead as a smell. He'll come That's back to haunt you. <laughs> Are you ready? All right, here we go. Linda, the bionic woman said the scientist in charge of my ears made a big mistake. So, if you want me to hear you, you have to talk into my... Navel. Navel, she said. Okay? Now, Brett, you're up first. This may... I love your coat. Thank you. you I, are you sure you're not on the side of the British? No, 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 no. All There's right. only two kind of guys who wear... Two kind of guys who wear coats like that, and you're no bullfighter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get you in the parking lot for that, Jordy. <laughs> Neighbor! Neighbor! That's one for Linda. Linda's looking for a navel. Now, you know I've led a cloistered life. Yes, you have. I've played nuns in two films with Rosalind Russell. So I said navel. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. You know, I've also played monks. I, oh, beat yeah. them. I beat them two games out of three, and I also said, said navel. Linda now has five navels, and she's looking for a sixth. Wants to put it on her knee. I was never in a monastery. You never fooled around with a monk? <laughs> no. Uh, <clears throat> well, I thought it was something to do with, since she was so attractive, and you'd have to turn the volume up. Yeah. The knobs or something. Oh. <laughs> oh, well. That bosom. That bosom. What was that? <laughs> what was that? I can't hear you. Try the other one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh. Gotcha. Rides again. Now, Linda, you've got five. That means you've got a match four to tie, five to win. You can win if you want to, Gloria. It's all up to you. It's all in your mind. Uh, Charles, you do not play. I know, that's why I'm sitting back. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's hurt, too. Play out, Charles. Clyde the Lion Tamer <laughs> treats his wife like one of the lions. Every night he makes her blank. <laughs> Clyde the Lion Tamer treats his wife like one of the lions. Every night he makes Every her blank. Every night he makes her... Right. While they're what doing do that... Lie? I'd like to show you something. We've got time here. Oh, it's going to take them a long time for this one. A little artifact I found back there in the, in the box of cufflinks I have. I made these cufflinks about 25 years ago. I went to the hardware store and bought some nuts and bolts and took them to a, jewel pl uh, a jeweler and I said, gold plate these, and he did. Can you see that? Yeah. Boy, oh. is that a cheap Isn't, way. That is a very cheap way. El Cheapo makes his own cufflinks. That's good. Right, anything else I can do? Uh, Joey, we're waiting for you. Oh, he's been ready for us. I'm going to run out of cufflinks, Joey. How is the rest of you put together? Miss Wicks, would you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm working on my novel. There it is. All right, Gloria Henry. Henley. <laughs> Clyde the Lion Tamer treats his wife like one of the lions. Every night he makes her blank. Roar. Roar. Isn't that a, a kind of a neat, interesting as he's a... Cute. Let's roar, That's, honey. It's kind of Come sweet. on, honey, let's get it out oh, and roar, a... baby. What? <laughs> Either that or jump through the hoop. You jump know. through the hoop? Oh, yeah. Now, that's right? the thing they make lions do all the time. Yeah. But uh, guys who have their wives without them being lion trainers, jump through the hoop. Honey. Yeah. I happen to have, because I like glory, I happen to have roar. Roar! Yeah. Very good. Okay. Well, let me know. Jump through the hoop. That's interesting. What do you say? I'm very depressed. Why? Not only have I begun to match the contestants, I've begun to match Joey. Roar. Roar. <laughs> Score is now five to three. You need two more to tie, three to win. And here we go with Mary Wicks. Clyde the Lion Tamer treats his wife like one of the lions. Every night he makes her... Put his head in her mouth. Put his head in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, man. <laughs> okay. That's a great That's a marvelous answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, dear me. Richard? The only way to top that is be right. I said roar. Roar! Well, the score is now five to four. In favor of Linda, we need one more roaring lion to achieve a tie. What do you say, Joyce Baby? I say... It was quite an answer. I say roar. Roar! We'll tell you what happens with a tie right after we tell you about this message. Now, here we are. The score is five to five. That means it's a tie. <laughs> and we have to turn off all those light bulbs and push this button and reveal one tie-breaking question for each of you. The one who matches the most celebrities will be the winner. Linda, it's your choice, A or B. I'll take B again, please. B again. This is a tie-breaker. Yeah. Long John Silver says, Hi, oh, that new pirate has a mighty weird dog. That dog tried to blank my wooden leg. <laughs> that new pirate has a mighty weird dog. That dog tried to blank my wooden leg. Now, this is a nice answer. All right. Wait, yeah, I, 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 could, we just have that. Long John Silver. Set. No. <laughs> no. Right, that new pirate is a mighty weird dog. That dog tried to blank my wooden leg. Try. Oh, I got oh, it. I got it. Okay. Dog. I've got the cutest. I got a cute Very one because I can't use the other two. All right. Let me see what you have. No book. Everybody's ready. All the lights are on. So we'll come over here to Linda Nellens. Long John Silver says, "Aye, that new pirate has a mighty weird dog." A dog tried to blank my wooden leg. Bury. Trying to bury my wooden leg is a good response. What a wonderful answer. Yeah. See, it looked like a bone. Joey, what do you say? Uh, for some reason or other, the picture conjured up... Uh, <laughs> Never mind, we'll skip you, Joey. <laughs> I should try to piddle on my wooden leg. Okay. You see, it was an elaborately carved prosthesis, and it looked like a fire plug. What do you say? I was so far away from piddle on, I can't begin to tell you. But I said chew anyway. Chew is all right. What do you say, Charles? I got something with these chicks. You know, first that other chick I matched her with feather when they thought it would be no feathers. Well, check the other chick, because here's Barry. Oh, What do you say, Mary? Listen, I can't tell a lie. I did not hear the word dog. I thought the other pirate was a dog. I did. I mean, I didn't hear the. I didn't hear it. So I said saw because I didn't hear. I hadn't didn't. Uh, I didn't understand it. Yes. Know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> well, I didn't. I know a dog can't saw. You know no, that. No, sure, of course not. Yeah. I thought it was another pirate who was yeah. a dog. Yeah. Did you understand it, Richard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said tinkle on. Tinkle on. All right. That is scoop. Linda's looking for the answer. Bury my wooden leg. Well, I thought since it was wood, it looked like a tree, and that's what a dog would try to go potty on it. Go potty on the tree. Okay. That's one for her. Now, Gloria, one to tie, two to win. Here's Gloria's tiebreaker. It says, Harvey said, I just saw a flying saucer, and it was really strange. On top of the flying saucer was a flying blank. <laughs> that means you got it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you thought you'd never get it, Joyce. Okay, Charles, put it in the slot. No. Ready? Okay. Gloria. Harvey said, I just saw a flying saucer. And it was really strange. On top of the flying saucer was a flying blank. Cup. Cup. She got it, Joey. I wasn't thinking in terms of saucers and cups. No, so I wrote cup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you say? That's the tie score right now. One more to win the game. What? One more to win the game? One more to win the game. Da 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 cup. There it is. So she wins the game. What is it? Let's see now. Hold it up there. Cup, cup, cup. <laughs> Okay. Linda, it was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. I enjoyed this it.
Good. This fair-skinned lady will depart. We will shower gifts on her at some later date. Six Thank or seven you. months Bye. from now, we will receive a veritable... Oh, okay. Got a little message for you. Pay attention to this. Come back. This lady has won her second game. She's got a total of $700 right now. You're going to try for over $5,000. You ready? Yeah. You all put together? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we polled a recent studio audience, Gloria, and we got their best response to this. The three blank. The three blank. Okay, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it, $250 for matching the middle one there, and $100 for the bottom one. Now, let's see who's going to give you an answer here. Joey? I have the three bears. The three bears, okay. Charles. Charles, have you got one? The three Smoky Joes. He's got two. No. <laughs> the three little piggles. Little piggy. The three pigs. Okay. Brett. What do you say, Brett? Wait a minute. There's one. There's only one left, but I'm trying to think of a better one. Give me one. Uno momento. <laughs> Thank you. I guess I'll have to go for the three sisters. Mr. Chekhov. Yes, all right. Now, those are the three. Now, think three carefully, fuses, Gloria. The three there may be a better three one musketeers. here. Three musketeers. Oh, sorry. Three bears, three sisters, three little pigs. Now, do you want one of those, or is there a better one in your head? <laughs> three musketeers. Oh, the three musketeers. You just thought of that. Wow. Hey. Oh, that's a good one. The Three Stooges. Isn't that a good three one? Three R's. The Three R's. Reading, writing, and rhythm. Three R's is another good one. Well, we hope that hers is up there. The Three Musketeers. Let's begin down at the bottom and reveal the $100 response. Three Stooges, one that Richard just gave us. There it is. She's looking for the Three Musketeers. She's on her own with this. Let's see if it's under the $250 number. Three Bears was Joey's answer. Last chance for those daring swashbucklers. Here's the $500 number. She doesn't need them. She picked out her own well, answer. She's yes. smarter than all of us. Yeah, but, no. but you see, now to play the rest of the game, she's got to have one celebrity because she's won the 500 now plays for 5000 Well, 5, we're 000. not going to play with her, so call Earl out. <laughs> you Earl, haven't been invited come out here, yet. Earl. Get out of here, Earl. You want to play, Earl? Sure. You know how to play? Definitely. Oh, I'm sorry, we can't because somebody's got to be in the box to do the no thing. Oh, uh, here's a, yeah. a letter came for Earl. Oh, really? Yeah. A letter came for Earl? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I read it. It says get back in the box. Okay. <laughs> Earl the Pearl, thank you very much, Earl. How the mushrooms coming along? <laughs> Earl, wait a minute. How are the mushrooms coming along? <laughs> Five minutes. Five minutes, they'll be ready. Okay, thank you. All right. <laughs> are you ready? Yes. Oh, we've been ready for... Now, listen, uh, to collect the 5,000, you remember, you got to pick one. Have you thought about it? Yes. Whom do you want? Richard. You want Richard. Okay. Stay around here, and we'll see how this game goes now. Well, let's wait. This is worth $5,000 to this lady. Okay. Mm. Ready, Richard? Yes. Sweat blank. Okay, he's finished. Now, Gloria, what answer would you want to give us to match his? Sweat. Shirt. Shirt. Okay. The audience apparently thinks there is another answer. What is your answer? Sweat hog? Sweat hogs are the ones that welcome back Mr. Cotter, huh? Yeah. Uh-oh, I didn't even think of that. Did you sweat think of that? Shop. No, I saw the match game sweatshirts in the back. 
Well, you saw match game sweatshirts in the back, so she said sweatshirt. She says that will match you for $5,000. We'll find out if her ESP was connected to yours. Welcome back, Mr. Henley. Which one is he with the blue shirt on? That's your That's six thousand two hundred dollars. She says you're about to pass out. Is that right? He's very proud of you. Okay, congratulations to one and all. And Gloria, while you're getting it together here, we'll introduce your new opponent. Let's welcome Wes Jackson. Okay, Wes, you know Gloria. Okay. Hello, Wes. Welcome. Hi. I'm single. You're single. I didn't yeah. even ask you, Wes. Available. No, wait a minute, Wes. Yeah. Hello, Wes. How are you? Welcome. Good missing. luck to you. Thank you. You married or single? I'm single. Oh, you're single. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what else you want to tell us about Wes okay. Jackson? Okay, I'm originally from Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. I've lived in that state all my life. You yeah. have? Yeah, and I uh, just graduated from the University of North Carolina. Yeah. A week ago, and I flew out here to be on the show having a great time. Well, you're going to have a good time. Right. Are you having a good time? Fantastic. See, you're going to have a good time. I don't care what. No, I can't say that. <laughs> well, good luck to you, Wes. We Thank can't you. start at this instant. we got to do a little business with America, then come back. Okay, now, uh, I thought we were going to be able to start this game and at least do one question, but time has just run out. But we'll look forward to seeing both of you next time, okay? Right. Listen, you were just splendid. Oh, We've you? had a marvelous time, and so Mary, nice. dear girl, we want to see you back here. Thank you. As quickly as we can this get This is you as much back. fun to do as it is to watch. I just love it. Good, and we'll watch you on CBS Saturday nights at 8.30 on Doc, okay? No, I, I think it's a good idea. What? what? Well, why don't we have Mary come every week and get rid of... <laughs> uh, get rid of... Oh, yes. Listen, next That's time, me. Mary may or may not be here. <laughs> right. These people will definitely be here. <laughs> Bill Daly. Brett Summers. Charles Nelson Riley, Benny Getty, Richard Dawson, and Danny Tyler. Team Revenue, join us next time for Match Game 76. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 76. A Mark Goodson, Bill Trotman production. This program was evident for broadcast. Stay tuned for Title Tales next over most of these CBS stations. Get ready to match the stars. Ron Pillow, Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Rapp, Joyce Budapont, Richard Dawson, and Barry Wicks as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game. 76. And now, here's the star of Max Game 76, Gene Rammer. Hey, Johnny Olsen. Nice part. Thank you very much. Okay, we thank you for joining us here, and we thank you for joining. Nice to see you again, Ron Pillolo. Welcome back, Cotter. Good to be here. All right, and I remember you. You're what's her name? <laughs> you. You're and the man who made my dreams come true. That's enough of that. <laughs> Are you all right? Is the circulation stopped yes, in your skull? Only, good. Yes, I'm fine. That's good. There. Yeah. This uh, oh. sweet lady you see, Mary Wicks, on Doc, and she's just marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> 
to show him Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> well, she promised we, you. Well, we became betrothed the last time yes. she was on. Oh, home. I see. And now right she's, away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I'm a better kisser. <sighs> How are you? You got a new show. Because you're a better kisser, I move closer. Oh, I see. <laughs> Wait, what's your new, what's your I new show? I do. You want to hear about it? Yeah. It's called Big John, Little John, and Herb Edelman is playing my husband, Big John, and Robbie Rist, who's 12, is playing my husband, too. Oh. oh. Well, I guess we're going to have to weird. watch that. Yeah, see what, that. See what that's story like. Yeah. Of, uh, story of two toities. <laughs> 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 yeah. Here's Trevor Dornbush, our current champ. Would you welcome him? How are you, Trevor? I was very happy to be here. Trevor uh, just won a game the last time we were together, and time ran out. We didn't have time to get to the big money super match, but we're going to do that today. So he's, he's got $100 right now, and he could win over 5000 additional dollars uh, if his ESP is good, and uh, he's a good game player. So far, he's been fine. We'll see how this game ends in a moment or so. Right now, this. Here we go. Ready, Trevor? You betcha. All right, Trevor, we polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Blanket off. Ooh. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match the middle one, you get $250, and then the bottom one gets you $100. Our celebrities are permitted to help here. You may call on three of them one at a time. All right, I'll try. Brent, thank you. Take it off. Take oh, it no, off. No, 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 no. <laughs> That'll be enough of that. And Charles? Knock it off. <laughs> Knock it off. You got two. And Richard. Richard? Put it back on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's not nice. Now, B. Get it off. All Get really? it off. <laughs> <laughs> Thrilling answer, isn't that, yeah. Mary? Get it off, she, he says. Yeah. So, so that it's get, get it off, knock it off, and take it off. You want one? Of, stand on the adhesive oh, tape. I keep telling you. You want one of those? Yes, I'm going to stick with take it off. Oh, take it off. Yes. Go on, Brett. That will be good. Well. Now we'll see. Right now, if you go all the way with this. <laughs> <you> <laughs> We'll find out if Take It Off is up there and where it is, if indeed it is up there. May we see the $100 number? Rip it off. Oh. Rip it off. That uh, didn't even occur to me. That's a, a good one, though. All right, we're, look, we're looking for Take It Off. May we see the $250 number? Knock it off, is Charles' answer. All right, here's the last chance to disrobe. May we see the $500 response? Take it off. Trevor? Yeah. Okay. Now you're up to 600. That's right. He's got $600. You're going to play for 10 times the amount he just won or $5,000. Now, to collect that amount, you have to match one of them exactly. I'll try Richard, thank you. All right, sir. Well, of course, I gave him get it off. Right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we've you got get to concentrate, your... Trevor. Yes, yes, right. You're from New Zealand, aren't you? That's right. Okay. We've... We're a part of the Commonwealth. <laughs> Get your that's right. Get your thought waves going over. You know, thought yeah. waves are electrical impulses. You got them going over there? Get your I hope so. Going. All right. I hope so. Swing around here and face me, and we'll see what happens. No, I mean just stand on. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Stand on the tape. That's it. On the adhesive tape there. I can nail one of my that's shoes right. to it. <laughs> here it is. It goes like this. Blank feed. F E E D. Blank feed. <laughs> Now he's finished, Trevor. You give us an answer which you think will match his and you'll be $5,000 richer. Blank feed. I hope Richard's got a chicken feed. Chicken feed. Chicken feed. Do you think he's right, eh, audience? Is that right? Well, we're going to find out if he's right or wrong right now and if you're right or wrong, too. Richard, he says chicken feed will match you for $5,000. Oh, oh, oh! Now you got five thousand six hundred dollars. Oh, fantastic! Well, oh. 
He's very, very happy about that. He's got $5,600, and you can take another trip around the world, right? Well, it'll help to pay for the doctor's bills. We had a bad accident last night. You like really? that old cliche out, a funny thing happened on the way to the studio. We were, after the show, uh, my wife Anne and a friend of ours, George Wilhelm, who's here, we went out to have a bite to eat, left George's car in the parking lot, came back and we were stopped on Fairfax waiting to make a left in here, and a guy in a little Corvette came barreling down Fairfax and totaled his car, and Anne was taken to the hospital, and she's got stitches in her head, and George is... She little... okay now? Yeah, she's out there. That's not a, not a well, scarf around her. Show her bandages. Well, she's got the bandage around her head. Yeah. Where is she? Oh, there she is. She's going to be okay. I have a question, Jean. Yeah. It's, uh, congratulations to you. For coming out of that okay. Jean? What's your question, Richard? Charles, I thought you said no one got hurt. <laughs> There's the good luck symbol, the thing that won you the 5,000. Now let's uh, carry on. We're happy you're all okay, Trevor. Let's meet Joel Williams. Joel, you know Trevor? Joel. It's not Joel. It's Joel, as in Noel. Right. Well, right. we welcome you, Joel Williams. Where are you from? Well, I was born in Italy. I lived overseas my whole life, and I moved here to the States to go to school. I live in Maryland, and I'm out here trying to get a California suntan. Are you, are you finished school? No, I just finished one year. I'm going back just for the summer. Uh-huh. Lei parla italiana. I used to, not anymore. You're in luck, Jane. You're safe. Una bella ragazza. Okay, well, good luck to you, Joel. You. We'll begin this game in a moment or so, but right now we want you to hear this. Now we go on here, I'll push this button, and ask Joel whether she wants A or B. B, please. All right. B, the marriage counselor said, hello there. He said, yesterday in my office, Mr. and Mrs. Jones ironed out their differences. It was horrible. They used blank irons. There are so many wonderful choices. What's the first one that came to your head? That's the one to use. Oh, well, two came to my head at the same time. You know, I think so quickly. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> Did you hear all of that, Joelle? No, but put one down. Okay. It's good. It was horrible. All right. I'll go ahead, Kate. Just put it right in the slot there, Ron. <laughs> and away we go. Charles, pick one out. Out of your so-called head now. There it is. Now, Joel, the marriage counselor said yesterday in my office, Mr. and Mrs. Jones ironed out their differences, and it was horrible. They used blank irons. Branding irons. Branding irons is a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. That was one of the good choices, I think. What'd you say, Ron? Nine irons. Nine irons is another good one. Bang! Yes, you? Well, I always draw on my own personal experiences, as you know. Yeah. And I remember that Jack and I definitely used and irons. And iron. Oh, that was a sanguinary scene, no doubt. You can swing that in ragtime ducks. <laughs> and Charles? Steam iron. Steam iron. That would hurt, yeah. I think that's a lot. Those are all very good. Yours was good, too, Joel. Let's see if it happens here. Joyce? It's kind of funny, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Jones ironed out their differences. It was horrible. They used... Well, see, one had straight hair and one had curly hair. That was the difference, so they used curling iron. Curly iron. Was that horrible? Well, I made them the same instead of different. Oh, all right. You can't get out of this one, no matter how. Richard? I guess you had to be there, didn't yes, you? Because yeah. <laughs> they used the steam iron. Steam iron. Hissed each other out of the office. Hissed each devil. other out of the office? Shot of steam. Oh, yes, of course, yes. Are, are you not quite together, Mary? Well, it's just that other people wear these, and they look like they're from the Old West. I look like I have a sore throat or something. <laughs> and it feels fun. Maybe is that any better? Yeah, that's okay. Now you, now you look like you have a whiplash. Oh. <laughs> well, anyway, I know these people, and oh, what they do. use, branding iron. Branding iron. <laughs> okay, Joel, well, you got one. Now, Trevor, here is your first rounder. It reads as follows. Tonto, say... Uh, Lone Ranger heap full of surprises. Last night, me find blank in my sleeping bag. <laughs> Lone Ranger heap full of surprises. Last night, me find blank in my sleeping bag. 
Isn't that Mercy. sweet? You don't believe me, do you? No, I certainly don't, because I thought Todd had gotten over that. Well, well, oh, it's a Lone Ranger. Yes, sir. Lone Ranger, he's oh. full of surprises. Tonto is I'm speaking. Hungry. All right. Okay. Oh, I need All right, surprise. I won't be. I'm not sure what the focus Okay. Is. Trevor, Tonto say Lone, you know who Lone Ranger is. He Surely. Was. You have that comic strip down there, don't you? Yes. Uh, Lone Ranger heap full of surprises. Last night, me find blank in my sleeping bag. I'll take silver. Yeah. Silver. Yeah. That's some big sleeping bag. <laughs> That's some big... Uh, Holy mackerel. Silver bullet? A silver bullet. Hey, 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 yeah. <laughs> Close. Nice try, Ron. Close, but what do you say? Did he say he'd take silver? Yes. I'd like a large diamond, <laughs> no, no, possibly no, no. with a necklace to match. Silver, you see, is the horse. Oh, I get it. Silver. Silver, you got it. Okay, that's one for him. Scores tied one to one, Charles. Hey, on! That's so illogical, but it's working. It's, he's got two for him. What about you? Well, I think that's ridiculous, putting a horse in a sleeping bag. That's Good right. Job. I said a black mask. A black mask. <laughs> that would fit in there. She's not any smarter in number four than she was in number six, is she? <laughs> what did you say, Richard? She's got you there. <laughs> Silver. Silver. That's good for you. Last night, me find blank in my sleeping bag, and he said silver. Yeah, well, you see, I think it's silly to put a horse in a sleeping bag. I'm along with Joyce there, so I said he put cacti. Cacti. Well, that would be uncomfortable, you know. That's you right. Ever tried it? A Jiminy. little touch of revenge or something like that there. Okay, let's go to round two and see what happens here. Joel, you may have A or B. B again. All right. Now, let's see. You matched one person last time. That was Mary. So, Mary, you would not participate. The rest of you, please. A respond to this. You know some babies are born with a silver spoon in their mouths. You know That's that? That's me. Well, when unlucky Louie was born, he had a silver spoon in his blank. How unlucky was he? How unlucky was he? That's up to you. Certainly glad I don't have to write that one. <laughs> okay. Can I say sleeping bag again? No. No, no, you can't. <laughs> When unlucky Louis was born, he had a silver spoon in his blank. I think sleeping bag would be nice. There's something to do with this chair. You don't think as well. Really? No, you're okay, Mary. <laughs> right. There's the chair. Come on. What? Do not dally. I'm not dallying. I'm just trying to make the right decision. All right. Down through the byways and pathways of life, it's important to make the right decision. <laughs> She doesn't want to wear this jewelry till the security men are at the door. Aren't they lovely? Look how real the rubies look. This way I never have to worry about getting oh. off. <laughs> at least for my jewelry. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh. That one there was on a Lord and Taylor Christmas box at nine yards. <laughs> Okay, oh, it's ready. so terrible, but true. Now, Joelle, you know how some babies are born with a silver spoon in their mouth? Well, when unlucky Louie was born, he had a silver spoon in his blank. Ear. Ear is good. Oh, what's wrong with that? That's a good answer. What is wrong with that? Ear is That okay. is a terrific answer. See? <laughs> terrific answer. Terrific answer. What do you say? I say that little Ron Palil is cute as a bug's ear, ain't he? Yep. Sure I is. didn't say either. though. Oh, you didn't? I said it was embedded in his navel. Oh. Thank you. Well, all right. We're looking for an ear here, Charles. Well, if you said ear, you wouldn't be such a misfoot. A fit on this left. Thank you so much for that. You don't talk so plain. No, no. So she's got uh, three now. Yeah. And the score at this moment is tied. Joyce? Could I go sit in Mary's seat? <laughs> Come on, now, show Well, it was a breech birth. So he wasn't born with it in his fanny. In his fanny. That's the popular answer according to these dingalings here. Richard, where was that silver spoon? Pronounce B-E-A-R for me. B-E-A-R? Yeah. Bear. It was in his air then. <laughs> it was in his air. So that's four for her and three for him. And when we come back from this commercial, Trevor, you'll have to match one to tie and two to win. Right now, we've got this for you. 
All right, here we go. Second half of round two. Trevor, it's up to you. You need one to tie and two to win. Uh, Ron, you play, and you play, Joyce, and Mary, you play, the others. Right. Uh, if you would, listen to this. Right. George got thrown off the bus because he was blanking women's clothing. What? George got thrown off the bus because he was blanking women's right. clothing. I didn't know that. Do you know where I'm going on the 18th of August? Where are you going? I'm going to go to Chicago and see Joey Bishop and his son Jerry do the man with the dirty mind or the mind with the dirty man or whatever it is. That They're is opening play? at the Drury Lane Theater. Oh, yes. On the 18th of August, and he's going to work with his kid. Isn't that terrific? Yeah. I don't know that play. Is that a new one? No, it's an old one. Uh, no, it's not old. It's, uh... Are you in here? No, I don't it? work anymore, honey. I do game shows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's ah. unkind, my dear. Trevor, are you ready? George got thrown off the bus because he was blanking women's clothing. Wearing. Wearing women's clothing is a logical answer. Okay. Ron, you're up. Wearing women's clothing ties the score at four to four. Okay. One more like that. Whatever that is called. <laughs> and he wins a game. What do you say? Wearing! Wins the game. I thought they looked well on him. I thought he could have been. Joelle, I'm sorry. It was such a short trip up here for you. We've got some gifts for you. Thank you. It was a real experience. Good. We've got <laughs> gifts and our thanks for being here on Match Game 76. Thank you. Well, William, goodbye. All right. There it is. Da -da -da. Trevor, you could go all the way here again. Go over $10,000 if you're lucky and you got good SP as you had last time. Shall we begin? You bet. We polled a recent studio audience. We got their best response to this. Arnold blank. Now the answer they gave most often, remember, is worth $500 if we match it. $250 for the middle and $100 for the bottom. All right, let's see. Oh, Ron, please. Ron? Oh, he hasn't finished writing. Uh, <laughs> no, he, these are just verbal responses. Oh, this is verbal. Uh, Arnold Horshack. Arnold Horshack. And Brett? Who's Arnold Horshack? Who's Arnold Horshack? Yeah. It's been grand seeing you all again. <laughs> I know who he is. How about Arnold Palmer? Arnold Palmer, okay. He was a and Richard, please. Arnold Stang. Oh. Arnold Stang. <laughs> so you got Stang, Horshack, and Palmer. Do you want one of those, or have you got another one in your mind? No, I'll stick with Palmer, thank you. Palmer. He wants Arnold Palmer. Okay. Let's see if Arnold Palmer is on the premises now. Let's begin down at the bottom and reveal the $100 number. Arnold the pig. <laughs> Green Say again. Green oh, that's a character sure. from Green Acres. He was trained. Oh, I see. Yes. Okay. I know We're all the literature. Arnold Palmer. Let's see if he's under the $250 number. Arnold Horshack. Hey. Okay. That's a good omen, I think, for you. That Arnold Palmer is going to be in the top spot. Slide it, Earl. Yeah. Yes, he is. Okay, so now you've enriched yourself a little bit. You're up to $6,200, and you got more to go here, but right now we got to stop and do a little business with America. This is it. How much time we got to say goodbye? 25 seconds to say goodbye. Oh, we can do that, that's not we? long enough. How would you say it? Oh, no, no. oh yeah. How about you? Au revoir. Au revoir. And you? Goodbye, Jean. Goodbye, my love. Oh, I love you so. Splendid having all and of everybody you. Everybody go and see Joey Bishop. All right. All we'll right. do that. Jean may be near. Join us next time for Match Game 76. Goodbye. <laughs>
Richard Dawson, and Joyce Mulefont as we play the star-studded Big Bunny Match Game 76. And now, here's the star of Match Game 76, Gene Rammer! Hey, John Ellison, how are you? Good. Thank you. That's a lively bunch, and we hope you're feeling lively too today. And if you're not feeling lively, these people will liven up your day. No, no. There you go. What was that? I could do that. I wouldn't mind it. I wish you'd say something funny. <laughs> Oh, there he is. Hello. Are you ready? Huh? Good. Yes, ready? Uh, yes, 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 of course. For, for what? Well, I think we ought to remove the dry, cleaning. Dry, cleaning. the dry cleaning tag. The dry cleaning tag should be tucked in. Cool That's right. That's what I thought. She yeah. has a screw loose. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I have it. That's right. right. Now, let's now say what will I do people. with it, Richard? Paula yes. Miller and Mildred Allred. There. These two ladies are very matched all six celebrities on one question, didn't you? Now, she's a current champ. She's got $5,600, and she's being challenged by a very able game player, Mildred Allred. Thank you. From, uh, I've forgotten where you're from. Ventura. Ventura, right. Uh, you own that big freeway, don't you? <laughs> yes. Wish I did. You did. All right, now, we'll uh, tell you what happens when we have a tiebreaker question in a moment or so, but right now, we've got this for you. Ready? Here we go. I'll uh, blow the fuse here and get rid of the lights and push this button. Reveal one tie-breaking question for each of you ladies, and the one who's matched the most celebrities will be the winner. Mildred, you may have A or B. A, please. A? She's been sticking with A because that's... A for all. Problem. You have a problem? That's what everybody keeps saying. It's raining all over my box here. What? <laughs> yeah, look at all that stuff. I don't know what it is, and every time I look down at my notes, it's got a wet on it. Really? <laughs> they oil the fan. They oil the fan? Could I have an umbrella, please? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what? It is. No, no, there's I a know. dog up there. It's terrible. It's not <laughs> yes. Want to sit over there? Why? Okay. <laughs> she wishes she you had sit right over there. there. <laughs> okay, right. I'll sit here. All right, here we go. <laughs> at Consumer Reports, Herman said, things really worked out well at the office today. All morning long, we tested beer. Then all afternoon, we tested blank. <laughs> I'm watching. All right. Okay. So oh, wait a week. All right. We'll figure out what that is, Joyce. We don't want you to be uncomfortable. It's very dramatic, though. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. I think it's exciting. All right. Here we go, Mildred. At Consumer Reports, Herman said, things really worked out well at the office today. All morning long, we tested beer. Then all afternoon, we tested blank. Our kidneys. <laughs> If you drink a lot of beer, you will. <laughs> she said our kidneys. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very good. Well, it's I don't know if these people are going to be that logical. It's clinical. Yes, it is uh, clinical. What do you say, Avery? Well, I got a little more specific. What do you mean, say? I uh, mean, a little, uh, little more general. Um, the John. <laughs> the John. It's no good, though, babe. No, that's not it. What do you say? She's looking well, for a kidney. You've got to have them before you can test them, don't right. you? Right. Well, I said the lady and gentleman's toy toy. Okay. But that's not a match. I no, think. it isn't. We're looking for kidneys <laughs> well, here, one or two. I think it's snowing over my seat. <laughs> <laughs> that's because you're higher up. Burps. 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 We tested burps. Well, Mildred, <laughs> you got a great laugh at the kidney answer there. I should have said. But so John, far, on the it hasn't assumption occurred. that it was the kidneys, yes. I assumed she would be taking Pepto Bismol. Pepto Bismol. Yes. Which um, is not correct. Things really worked out well at the office. All morning long, we tested beer. All afternoon, we tested our kidneys. Alka Seltzer. <laughs> Alka Seltzer. All afternoon, oh, we tested yeah. Alka Seltzer. And you? I said all afternoon, we tested potties. Potties. Uh oh. Not you know what that means? Oh, all she's got to do is match one and it's all over. Let's find out what happens here. This is Paula's. Tarzan say, me go jungle wife swapping party. Oh. 
<laughs> Me swap Jane for blank. <laughs> so you're Tarzan and Jane. Yeah, I understand. Okay. <laughs> right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. What is it again? Tarzan say me go jungle wife swapping party. Me swap Jane for blank. Cute. <laughs> me swap Jane for. <laughs> there are so many choices. <laughs> All right. Okay, okay, Hans. Okay. Just give me a minute now. Okay, okay, okay. Now think about this, Paula, and give a response you think will get one match. That's all you have to do to win another game. And here we go. As soon as Charles and Brett are ready. Brett's fooling around up there. What are you doing there, Brett? Oh, nothing, sweetheart. Just taking a whole nap. No. I'm trying to catch up. All right, here we go, Paula. Tarzan say, me go jungle wife swapping party. Me swap Jane for... Ape. Ape. Ape is her answer. All right. Audience doesn't seem to approve of that. They're cruel. Uh, hello. 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 Yes. You're going ape, are you? Yeah, well, you might say. <laughs> yes. Uh, no. Swap it for a swinging pygmy. A swinging pygmy. <laughs> Think about it. Yes. All right. <laughs> All is not lost. Do not give up the ship. I never do. Do not do any of that stuff because I believe this is a match. Cheetah. Oh. Now, wait a minute. you got to think about this. Hold on now. They're thinking about it. <laughs> cheetah was... What well, was Cheetah, a person? That, <laughs> that, that, not a that, was, that was specific, you see. Oh, she's a, not a member of the ape family? Well, though? could be a member of the ape family, but you are a specific ape you name. And you don't know if that's the watch that she got involved in. <laughs> she got to confuse it even further. Cheetah. Well, no, she there. said uh, ape, an ape, uh, but not. she was not specific with the ape she named. She did not specifically name Cheetah. What do you say? Well, we are splitting Cheetah three ways, then, because I also thought of the ape Cheetah. All right. What do you say? I was going to say you swap it for a toaster. Yes. <laughs> but I said Cheetah. You said Cheetah. <laughs> now, the I goal is not answer. lost, Paul. You got the weirdo to hear from yet. <laughs> who uh, could conceivably say something like ape. I didn't say cheetah, that would be cheating. Uh, uh, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, no. does it? No. This does. A kangaroo. A kangaroo. <laughs> terrific. There aren't any kangaroos in that. So place. there we are. <laughs> Game ended in a tie, second kangaroo. time in a row. <laughs> and we'll have to go to another tie break. I'm going to get ready for that while you take a look at this. Hello there, here we go. Now listen. <laughs> Uh, this game ended in a tie, so we have to turn out all the lights, <laughs> as you can see. Got to turn, right, turn them out. Shazam. See? They went out. And push the button here. Reveal another tie-breaking set of questions. Mildred Allred, you may have your choice of A or B. Stick with A. Stick with A. Here it is. Everything all right over here? Everything. Oh, yes. yes. I thought I heard a mouse in the pantry. No, no. no. <laughs> out at the home, two of the old folks got married. They were so old, they didn't leave the church in a limousine. Instead, they left in a blank. <laughs> That's how old they were. They were so old, they didn't leave the church. In, in a, a limousine. limousine. Instead, they, they left, left in, in a, a blank. blank. Yes, sir. Charles is, I don't know what got into him, but uh, it's the new Charles Nelson Riley. Well, we're back to the old Charles Nelson. No, we're up. Now, Mildred. Out at the home, two of the old folks got married, and they were so old, they didn't leave the church in a limousine. Instead, they left in a... Ambulance. Ambulance. I thought a wheelchair, but... That lady comes up with some very good original answers, and I hope it will be fruitful for her. Well, in this case, she pulled herself a rotten apple. Um, <laughs> they left in a hurry. They left in a hurry. <laughs> I mean, you get that old, you gotta race it, right? <laughs> You're not there yet. You gotta hurry up. <laughs> All right. Very good, old bean. But they weren't quick enough. The hearse pulled right up. The, the hearse. Popular favorite. Take a bow, Brett. Take a bow. Got the popular favorite. Spelling doesn't count. Spelling doesn't count. No. You're a brilliant director, so spelling doesn't count. It's another match. Mildred Allred is looking for an ambulance, Nancy. Isn't she well? No. <laughs> uh, this is a little distasteful, but I said the same thing Brett did. They left in a hearse. 
Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's the popular favorite with the audience. I know. You're Sorry. really on the beam it's there. It's very sad, though. Yes, it is sad. Well, some of the questions are sad. Well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> some of the answers tried... are even sadder. Go ahead. <laughs> there were two of them, actually. His and... Uh, hers. Her. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ah. You want gems? Go to Africa. <laughs> right. So they were sold, they didn't leave the church in a limousine, and said they left in an ambulance. At least they went together. In a hearse. In a hearse. I thought you said well, tandem. <laughs> you thought it, but you didn't want to say hearse. I didn't want to say well, don't you old know people just getting married going off in a hearse. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind <laughs> of I'm dumb. I'm getting there. No, you get oh, <laughs> Who is it? Not in my eyes, you're not. All right, Paul, are you ready? Here we go. When Frank found out his wife was coming to the office, he quickly hid his new secretary in the file cabinet, and he filed her under V for blank. V. That's V I for it. blank. The letter V near the end of the Perfect. alphabet there. What is it again? There it is. What's the thing about it? White. V for. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> well, now that you got to let us in on it, write it down in the card and let us all in on it. Don't just sit there oh, and laugh. Oh, I just, well, it just, <laughs> okay, this okay. isn't my first choice. <laughs> well, right on, so, so you ready? When Frank found out his wife was coming to his office, he quickly hid his new secretary in the file cabinet. He filed her under V for... Virgin. All right. We are looking for a virgin. Show me a virgin. Lightning should be hit. Put down that lightning bolt. We're only kidding. He filed her in V, uh, being a nice person, for verboten. V for verboten. Uh -huh. What do you say? Well, I was trying to match, because actually, what I started to say was, I, he filed her under V for vate until later, but I realized that's not <laughs> So I, he filed her under very often. Very often? <laughs> oh. How nice for all concerned. Charles? Virgin. Virgin wins the day. What the rest of you have? What do you have there? Oh, no. Three virgins? So you did it again. Well, Mildred, you're a nifty lady. Thank you. It was a it's pleasure to meet you. It's been a joy to be and here. I've enjoyed it. Well, I'm glad you had a good time. We're going to have a lot of gifts coming your way. Thank you very much. I Milton said I was going to kiss every man, but I didn't. Now, while we're spinning her off, we're going to spin some messages just for you. Pay attention now. Here we are. Paula Miller's up here for the second time. She went all the way the last time, won the entire ball game, $5,600. She's picked up another 100 now, has 5,700, and could go over 10,000 if she goes all the way again. You ready? I'm ready. We polled a recent studio audience, Paula, and we got their best response to this. Blank print. Now, remember, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it, $250 if you hook up with that middle one, and $100 for the bottom one. Now, whom do you call on? Richard, please. Fingerprint. Fingerprint. Out of. Out of print, okay. Brett? I don't think that's She's thinking. It, no. Oh, no, that's nice. Uh, blueprint. Blueprint is one. Fingerprint's another. And out of print is a third. Now, you might have a better idea and may want to reject all those. Have you thought about it? I thought about it. I'll take finger. You'll take finger. <laughs> okay. She says she'll take fingerprint. Let's find out <laughs> if fingerprint is up there. And if it is there, where is it? That is the question, my friends. Let's begin down at the bottom as we usually do and reveal the $100 response. Blueprint is the answer that uh, Brett gave you, right? Okay. Let's see if we got a finger under the $250 response. 
Yes, we do. Congratulations, Paula. Another $250 for you. All right, now you got $5,950. What do you think's under the big one? Newsprint. Newsprint. Oh. No, newsprint. The audience thinks it's out, out of print. print. No anarchy, please. Now, stop. <laughs> they say it's going to be newsprint. Slide it, Earl, please. <laughs> newsprint is right. Very good audience. You're okay. Now, listen, you're going to play for 10 times that amount or $2,500. And to collect, remember, you got to match one celebrity exactly. Uh, very snappy over there. That's right on the ball. Uh, what do you say? Who do you want over here? Richard, please. You want Richard? Okay. Now... Richard, here it is, worth $2,500 to this lady. The last blank. The last blank. He made up his mind very quickly. Now we ask you to make up your mind and give us an answer which will match his, and if your ESP is as good as it was last time, you'll pick up another bundle of money here. What do you say, the last? Time. The last time. The last time. All right. You don't like that? No. Wait a minute. Why? What, what would your second choice be? The last picture show. The last picture show. <laughs> what would your third choice be? <laughs> Can we I haven't got any more ideas. All right, Richard, she says the last time will match you for $2,500. Well, this is the last mile or the last supper. The last mile or the last supper. Okay. Well, Paula, you picked up a little more money here, another $350. You're up to $5,950, and you're going to meet another player. Let's welcome Susan McIntosh. Yeah. Hello, Susan. Hi. There you go. Now, we'll find out a little bit about Susan McIntosh. Okay. I'm married. I'm an accountant for a clothing manufacturer here in Los Angeles. Yeah. I have a cat, and I'm a grandmother. What? You, young lady like you, a grandmother? Yes. Well, it's my husband's daughter's child. I see. But well, she's my grandchild. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, good luck to you here. And Thank let's you. begin by asking you to make a selection. You can have A or B, Susan. B. C it is. Ready? Here we go. Bernie the Butcher said to his customer, Hey, he says, lady, I'll tell you why this ground meat is so unusual. You see, I couldn't get my regular meat, so I ran my blank through the grinder. <laughs> Thank you. No, it's all right. All right, ma'am. That's fine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are Good. you? Good. <laughs> Lady, I'll tell you why ground meat is so unusual. You see, I couldn't get my regular meat, so I ran my blank through the grinder. <laughs> all right. Whoops, there. Quickly now. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Same. <laughs> now, Susan, Bernie the Butcher said to his customer, he says, Lady, I'll tell you why this ground meat is so unusual. You see, I couldn't get my regular meat, so I ran my blank through the grinder. Dog. Dog it is for her. What do you say, Amy? She said, I ran my dog through the grinder. Why was I close? Cat. Cat. It's cats and dogs. What do you say? Well, I've learned to get it together. Uh, I said, Work. German shepherd or dog. <laughs> got it together. One for Susan. What do you say, Charles? Dog. Dog, it is. I got that his wife. I don't care. Susan now has two. Nancy? The Humane Society will hate me, but I said dog. Yeah, it's the answer. Three for her. I couldn't risk Betty White. I said wife. <laughs> wife. Betty White would be oh, yes. if I wrote dog. Wrath would have been terrible. What do you her, say? Her chair is vibrating. It, it is vibrating, <laughs> right. Yes. But I said cat. Anyway. Cat, anyway. That's three for her. That ain't bad for a first round question, it isn't. Uh, Paula, yours will come later. Right now, this is coming your way. <laughs> Gotta stop right here in the middle of round one. That's three for her. Yours will happen the next time we get together. Thank you, ladies. And I thank you all. Thank you were just grand. No, no, thank you. Yes, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time we get together here on Match Game 76. Gene Ray here. Goodbye. <laughs>
Get ready to match the star, Dick Smothers. Brett Summers. Charles Nelson Riley. From Hee Haw, Minnie Pearl. Richard Dawson. And Fanny Flag and friend Joyce Boulevard as we play the star studded Big Money Match Game 77. And now here's the star of Match Game 77, Gene Rayner. What's going on? Thank you, Johnny Olson and friends, for joining us. Well, well, we've got a new kid on the yeah. block, haven't we? Oh, watch it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we have a little tradition here. We have to give you a proper welcome. Uh, what are you going to do? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing too fancy. <laughs> you, you are going to kiss me, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> now, you can't be laughing when I do this, because... <laughs> <laughs> because we bumped teeth. That's right, we bumped teeth. <laughs> you gotta pucker you up. You pucker gotta up. pucker up now. Oh. What the heck was going on over here? I didn't see your face. I was standing back saying I saw them all. Who was that? That was Joyce Bullifant trying to get my job, but I've killed her. <laughs> <laughs> She's on next week. She got all mixed yeah. up here. All right. Well, uh, welcome back, Dickie boy. Thank you very nice much. Nice to see you again. Everything okay? Everything's just great. Grand. What? Don't say hello to Charles and me. We don't no, give for a four kid. years. <laughs> for four <laughs> years, no one has said hello to us. And it doesn't show <laughs> so much on me, but look at her. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late now. Four years, we don't even get a hello. <laughs> well, that's better. You didn't even get the mouse break. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a brother. We don't have a dollar ninety-eight hat. We don't have an accent. We don't have a cheese dog. Joyce, it's next week. Let me have my microphone table. Next week, Joyce. How many times do I have to tell you? Now let's walk. I don't have anything to do today. Well, <laughs> go to my dressing room and wait for me there. <laughs> let's say hello to Barbara Hawkins and Diana Wells. <laughs> Our current champion is Barbara Hawkins. Who's won eighteen hundred dollars. <laughs> Does that make you happy, Barbara? Uh, delirious. <laughs> Good. And she's going to be challenged by uh, Diana Wells, who's had her first round question, right? Yes. The first ones are difficult, aren't they? Well, I sure hope I do better next time. Well, we'll see how you do. Now, we'll begin with her question, and then we'll get back to you. But first, we've got to get this to you. We are ready now. Here we go. The other uh, round one question. Barbara, this is yours. Everyone will play. Here we go. At the Saudi Arabian restaurant, Harry said, they serve the world's largest bowl of soup here. When they bring it to your table, there isn't a hair in it. There's a blank in it. <laughs> when they bring it to your table, there isn't a hair in it. Arabia. There's a blank in it. At the Saudi Arabian restaurant. I saw... I used to You did? Really? Very good food. Oh. Good food. Sort of oily. Never had that. Olive oil. I use a lot of olive oil. Oil. Real oil. Oh, real oil. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. You just flew in. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> no, I, the jet lag's all gone already. Okay. Are you haven't got it together? No, I have a hole in my pocket, and I keep you losing, keep losing things. I keep losing my, my, my parking meter money. I have someone who can sew that up for you. Yes. Who is hey. that person who can sew that up? Well, for? someone uh, here like oh, Dave Anderson. Anytime you're, time you're ready, I Charles. We're just me. killing time here while you're thinking. I'm finished. I've been finished for an hour and a half. Look at him. You want to say something to Brett? Yes. Okay, what do you want to say? My husband and I were out to Encino this morning, but we couldn't find a motel. <laughs> <laughs> Brett will help you. <laughs> Don't tell her the name. No. At the Saudi Arabian <laughs> restaurant, Harry said they serve the world's largest bowl of soup here. When they bring it to your table, there isn't a hair in it. There's a blank in it. A camel. A camel. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I'll read it one more time. Oh. At the Saudi Arabian <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> what do you say to that? I, I say that there's a whole camel. In a camel. <laughs> there you go, Robert. 
Well, I thought they were famous for something. I said there was an oil well in it. An oil well? Uh, All right. Now, Charles before? probably will come up with the definitive answer. Sure. See. <laughs> when they bring it to your table, there isn't a hair in it. There's a blank in it. Get this. Oil well. <laughs> Oil well. <laughs> Charles failed me. <laughs> All right. They, when they bring it to your table, there isn't a hair in it. There's a blank in it, Minnie. What There's do you a say? wig. A wig. You got the idea. Right, Joe. You got the idea right off the bat. Very good. Very good. You got the idea. You're gonna be okay. Oh, you're cute. <laughs> <laughs> Me for you, kid, when yeah. the lights go out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, what do you say to this, Richard? Well, read it. One and more I, time. Hey, I Saudi, did a little play on words. At the Saudi Arabian restaurant, Harry said they serve the world's largest bowl of soup here. When they bring it to your table, there isn't a hair in it. There's a... Harem. Harem! Harem. goodies on this one, aren't Clever. there? Yeah, yes. so you coming up with another goodie? Well, I was thinking it was a rather large bowl of soup, and uh, I live in Santa Barbara, and I thought of oil slick. <laughs> oil slick. <laughs> You've endeared yourself to your neighbors. Absolutely. The, uh, I suspect I'll be moving back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there we are at the end of round one, and the score is one to nothing in favor of the current champion. Now we go to round two. This is the final round, Diana. This is where you said you're going to do better. And I'm going to try that A again. You're going to try A again? Yes. All right, here it is. Rodney is so rich. Ooh. He's so rich after he drinks a case of beer, he pays a man to blank. <laughs> Well, that didn't take you long, did it? Got one? Okay. Now, Diana, Rodney is so rich, after he drinks a case of beer, he pays a man to blank. How about tinkle for him? How about tinkle for him? Okay. <laughs> what do you say to this, Dicky boy? Well, I... I... I think before he does that, he would have the guy burp him. Burp him, right. That's the, uh, those are the two good answers, Tinkle and Burp, and what do you say? Uh, huh? Pardon me. Burp. Or belch. Burp I'm or sorry. belch, yep. Chuck? Always the image of young mother. <laughs> burp. Burp it is. So, Diana, you got three of those so far. You thought of that one too? <laughs> Was that your first idea? Well, my husband does the other one more. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I see. What do you say to this, Minnie Pearl? Burp. burp. You got four of those so far. And you. Burp. burp. Five burps. And Hi, Hello, darling. You know, I love Minnie Pearl. Yes, yeah, you I do. Oh. <laughs> I wore this. It says In he your honor? Yeah. In her honor. In her honor. Now, you know, you may yes. ask where I got this answer. There was an old dance team called yes. Tinkle and Burp. Tinkle and burp. <laughs> so at this moment, the score is tied. Barbara will have a chance to untie the score and win the game right after we do this for you. Here we go. You know what you have to do, Barbara? Yes, I do. What? Two. No, one. Two. Because <gasps> you got one. You see, score is okay. tied right okay. now. One to win is all she has to do. Uh, Dick, you lay out this time because you matched her in the first round. Hey, did you hear about the New York City traffic cop? No. no. Want to hear about him? Yeah. Sure. When he lost his whistle, he stood in the middle of Broadway blowing his blank. <laughs> New York City traffic cop. When he lost his whistle, he stood in the middle of Broadway blowing his blank. <laughs> All right. Here we go, Barbara. This New York City traffic cop, when he lost his whistle, he stood in the middle of Broadway blowing his... Nose. Nose? <laughs> one nose will win the game. One nose, one nose. There it is. That wins the game. What the rest of you have?
Diana Wells, we admire you for the kind of work you do with young people. Thank We've you. got many gifts for you that will be coming your way, and thank you for being with us in Match Game. Thank Show. you. I had fun. Good. Goodbye. Now, Barbara Hawkins is up here for the third time. Third time. How do you feel? I don't know yet. I have you to go to the bathroom. What? <laughs> Sure, no, no, you can't say you have to go to the bathroom. Okay. No, that's not allowed there. I'll tell you, just let's not think about it or talk about it because uh, it's eight minutes before the next commercial and we don't, so here we go, Barbara. We polled a studio audience not too long ago and we said, write down your best answer to this. Joan Blank. Now, if you match the answer they gave us most frequently, you get $500. If you match the second most popular answer, you get $250, and then you get $100 for matching the third. And let's see who will give you some help here. Richard. Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc is one. Charles. Charles. Joan Baez. Yeah. Joan Baez. You got two now. And Brett. What about Joan Rivers? Yeah. What's that? Oh. How about Joan Crawford? <laughs> How about Joan Crawford? <laughs> Mind like a steel... Steel. <laughs> so it's Joan Crawford, Joan Baez, and Joan of Arc. Barbara, you may choose one of those or reject all of them and give us one of your own. What is your pleasure here? Joan Crawford. Joan Crawford. All right, that's one that Brett gave you via Fanny. Here we go. What? My mic is breaking up. All right, I'll be very careful. So is there mine. it is. I'll just hold it here very carefully and we'll replace it during the next commercial. I will hardly move it at all. I was wondering where that noise was coming from. Thank you for pointing that out to me. Now let's begin at the bottom and we will reveal the $100 response. Joan Rivers is up there. Do not move because the mic will make a funny noise. All right, here we go. May we see the $250 response? Joan Crawford! So that means, well, before we get to that, what do you think is on the big one there? Joan of Arc. Arc, Arc, Arc. I thought there were a bunch of seals in the audience. Arc. Show us your Arc, Arc, Arc. Go ahead. Joan of Arc is right. Okay. Bobby, you picked up an additional $250. You now have $2,150. You're going to play for 10 times that amount, or $2,500. That'll just about double your money there. Oh, yeah. And we'll be glad to give you that amount if you will match one celebrity exactly. Whom do you call on? Do I have to turn like you? No. Richard. Okay, Richard. <laughs> All right, you face me if you would, please. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry. Here it is. It's worth... Whoops. I may get electrocuted before the show's over. You'll be a witness. We'll all sue CBS together. Here it is. Good luck to you. Blank turn. T-U-R-N. Blank turn. Blank turn. Now, Barbara, give us the answer that Richard has written on the card. We give you $2,500. What do you say to this? Blank turn. Right. Right turn. That was your first thought. No, it wasn't my first. It was not your first thought? My well, now, first was U-turn. Well, your first thought was U-turn, oh, and you rejected you that for it. right turn. Okay, let's turn to the left and find out what Richard has written on the card. That's what I was hoping she was going to do. What? Turn to the left. Turn to the left. You know, that was really uh, an arbitrary one. I mean, kind of a difficult left one. Left turn, right, right turn, turn right no turn. right turn, no left turn. Right, turn. right in the middle. Good yes. turn. Good turn is another Bad good turn. one. A lot of good ones there. All right, Barbara, you're up to 2150. You're going to meet another player. Here comes Nikki Isley. Barbara, would you stand by for a minute? I was supposed to do the show today, and I want to do it today, and there she is. <laughs> you get out of the set. Well, I don't know how we can resolve this. Uh, would you like to uh, uh, alternate with her, perhaps? On oh, other... no, I think I'll get more money on this side than on that side. No, you won't. I'm not giving you any money now. I got to go 
upstairs and do a show. What, what, what show are you doing? Three's Company. Oh. Oh, oh we'll come up and watch a little bit later. Okay. And we're going to see you next week. Joyce Philippot, ladies and gentlemen. All right. You have a seat, Barbara, and you want to do the commercial now? You don't want to recognize his presence at all. All right, you think about it for a second, Mickey. We'll do a little bit of business with America, and then you'll tell us the story of your life, okay? Here we go. Now, what do you say we all briskly applaud our new player here, Mickey Isley. Yay, Mickey. How are you? Mickey, we'd like to find out a little bit about you before we start the game. What would you like to tell us? Well, I'm uh, 70 years old, a retired supervisor from the world's largest steel mill at Gary, Indiana. No kidding. And I married the prettiest girl in high school way back 52 years ago. Still married to her. We have three sons, two of whom live in California. The other son and I came out for our granddaughter's wedding. How about that? How about that? <laughs> you're, you're a grandfather, eh? I'm a grandfather, eh? Nine grandchildren, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, are you living here now? No, no, we're out here for a visit. Oh, yeah. I still live in Gary, Indiana. Still live in Gary, Indiana. Yes. Gary, Indiana. Go ahead. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> it's as far as I go, Mickey. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you and have you here with us, sir. Here's our first round question. Mickey, you may have A or B. I shall have A. You shall have A. A. Did you meet your, you married your high school sweetheart? Yeah, I married the prettiest girl in high school. Well, now I have to dispute that, because I married a girl from Gary, Indiana. But then, Horace Mann High School. Well, that, but that was after my time. Mine was oh. Emerson High School. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, that's because I'm a lot older than you, Mickey. Before Horace Mann was built yet. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Paula said to her boyfriend, I have good news and bad news. Uh-oh. The good news is, everything I have is yours. The bad news is, I have blank. <laughs> I like this one. It's cute, isn't it? What famous football player comes from Gary, Indiana? Tom Harmon. Wrong. Oh, yeah, Alex Karras, of course. Are you having a little difficulty, my no, friend? Yes, I am. Why, this is a wonderful, easy question. All right. Here we go. Mickey Isley. Paula said to her boyfriend, I have good news and bad news. The good news is, everything I have is yours. The bad news is, I have blank. The bad news is, I have, um... Can I say? <laughs> Can you say what? Social disease. A social disease? <laughs> With, with Gene. <laughs> can I help it if I'm bashful? <laughs> Mickey, you can say that, but I tell you, just, you see, just whisper, whisper it that way, and we won't tell the others what you've <laughs> said. Just whisper. That's right. We'll just keep it with between Gene's the two permission. of us. <laughs> All right. Social what disease? Is that official, his official answer? That's his official answer. Well, then mine is similar because nothing of value. Nothing of value. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one there. I got plenty of nothing. And nothing's plenty for me. Yes, Charles. Get your glasses on, Brent. I said nothing but the love in my heart and a bad back. <laughs> <laughs> nothing but the love in my heart and a bad back. Guys, he's got good news, bad news. Good news is everything I have is yours. The bad news is I have... Mops. Mops. <laughs> well, I suppose... It's contagious, but it's really not a social disease, is it? What do you say? Bad news is I have the heartbreak of psoriasis. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm... What? Can you say what? Can you say that on television? Yes. A disease. Hard <laughs> chance. A disease, but what she meant was, they were really, oh. You see, she was afraid to say it. Well, Mickey, nice try, old bean. Don't cry, fam. They're all watching back in Gary, Indiana. I said so. Now, Mickey, you stand by, you stand by, we're going to do a little business with them.
Get ready to match the stars. Nick Martin, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley. From Legs, Laurie Mahaffey, Richard Dawson, and Joyce Bulafont as we play the star studded Big Money Match Game 78. And now, here's the star of Match Game 78, Gene! Hello, Johnny O. No whistling. Please. Thank you for your enthusiasm. No whistling. <laughs> Can't stand whistling. No death. They can whistle at me if they want. What's that? They can whistle at me if they want. All right. <laughs> I like That's it. <laughs> Cut. Let's say hello to Donna Blodgett and Frank oh. Matra. Don is a champ of $200. She's won two games and she keeps having trouble with the audience match. Now she's in a position to win this game because he's had both of his questions. He's matched three of our celebrities, and that means all you have to do is match three to tie and four to win. Are you both quite ready to carry on? Ready. All right, then let's carry on right after we do this. Message. Ready. Bing. One question left in this game. It belongs to Donna. Remember, three to tie, four to win. Here we go. John said. John! John! <laughs> Hi, John. Something crazy has happened to my television set. I can see two totally different shows at the same time. It's wild. I just saw Starsky and Hutch blanking Walter Cronkite. <laughs> That's what you just saw. Blanking Walter Cronkite. I love Walter. Isn't Walter Cronkite wonderful? And Betsy ain't bad either. I don't know no Betsy. I only know Walter. Yes. All right. Everybody ready? Ready. Everybody ready? John Blodgett. John said something crazy has happened to my television set. I can see two totally different pictures. Wait a minute. There's some fuzz on my microphone. Where and I can see it, it out of the corner of my head. Oh. <laughs> Put that back! <laughs> okay, all set now. Something crazy has happened to my television set. Where has this microphone been? I, didn't. I can see two totally different shows at the same time. It's wild. I just saw Starsky and Hutch blanking Walter Cronkite. Can't think of anything except hitting Walter Cronkite. Who would hit Walter Cronkite? Oh. Hitting Walter Cronkite! Oh, hitting Walter Cronkite! Oh, you would never hit him. Oh, dear me. Oh, no. That's like stomping on the American flag. It is, it's inconceivable. Yes. But, uh, however, the way the news departments have been going mm. at all three networks, yes. at all two networks, the two major networks and NBC, <laughs> It snuck that one in snuck there. That in. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm going to work for him. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, no, they, they Not caught anymore. him canceling. Canceling? That's what's Starsky been happening. and Hutch were canceling Walter Cronkite. That's right. Is that and what they're... Happened to is Harry Reasoner. Is that what they're... <laughs> it's zero to one. <laughs> no. Okay, Brett. No, no. Hitting no sweet, answer. wonderful. No, he was drunk as a skunk and they were arresting him. Well, now that's what they do. Oh, I no, I've never... Starsky and Hutch. I don't know what they did. If you didn't have, never saw them, you wouldn't know what they do. I thought they See, were vaudeville. He never team. saw Starsky and Hutch. He don't, don't know, know what they do. That's why. You don't know nothing. He, he, and, and are they, are they the officers show. of the law? That's right. I didn't yeah. know that. They're, they're plain clothes men. I see. Right. They certainly they are plain. They don't wear fancy suits like you. No. <laughs> yes. Is you? everybody finished? <laughs> no. <laughs> Arresting. Arresting. Now, Donna, you must match the bottom tier to stay in the game and achieve a tie. Laura Mahaffey, it's uh, I just saw Starsky and Hutch blanking Walter Cronkite. What do you say to that? Sorry, Donna. Arrest. Arresting. So that means Frank wins the game. Richard is busting. Arresting. 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 Donna, I'm glad you won something. You've got $200. Thank and you. had a few laughs, didn't you? Uh-huh. Good. Had a good time. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Donna Blodgett. There she goes. There she goes. Okay. Now, 
Frank, we've wheeled this whole big thing around just for you, and we dropped in the star wheel just for you. And what we're going to do is play the regular super match here and see how far you go. We polled a studio audience not too long ago and said, write down your best answer to this. Blank delight. $500 for matching the most popular answer. $250 for matching the second most popular answer. And $100 for matching the third. Three of our six stars will give you a hand here. Okay, Richard. Turkish. Turkish oh, delight. Oh yes. That's a sweet. Charles. Turkish delight is a sweet. It's a little candy bar, yeah. right? It tastes First like World angel War. saliva. Yeah. Very. <laughs> it does. Really? <laughs> Chicken <laughs> Yeah. Uh, he's thinking. I, I wait a minute. Uh, uh, Chicken delight. Chicken uh, delight. Uh, 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 Dick. Why do they always pick the dummies last? If they picked us first, I'd have said Chicken Delight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But now I that. Now that you oh, picked last, sweet. you'll have to think about okay. it. There's, there's, oh, there, wait a minute, there's a, something is coming to him. No. To uh, oh. her heart's delight. To her heart's, heart's delight. Oh, you mean heart's delight. Heart's delight. Heart's delight, okay. And brains you do out. It. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Your heart's delight. Heart's delight. <laughs> heart's delight, Turkish delight, one. and chicken delight are the three they gave you. You want one of those? I want one of those. Chicken Would, Delight. You want Chicken Delight. All right. Who gave you that one? Chuck gave you that one. All right, Chuck, we'll see if Chicken Delight is up there. May we see the $100 number? Turkish Delight is Rich's answer. Oh, well, there's a bit of a sweet. May we see the $250 number? F. I'd like an explanation. Hold it. An explanation of afternoon delight. So would I. That Ira, did you poll those people? Who was in here that day? <laughs> well, that certainly was not the geriatric society who oh. comes here. To... They come in in the afternoon. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Afternoon delight. I guess delight. an afternoon delight is a matinee, right? That's right. We must try those sometime. In a motel. Well, you're always working, huh? Oh, okay. Here's the last chance for Chicken Delight. Slide it, Ori, and away we go. You got it, Adam boy. So, Frank, you won the $500. That means the least you played for is 10 times that amount, or $5,000. Howsomever, if you step back here, here into my uh, back room, uh, we're going to give you a shot here at doubling your money, and you're going to make a decision here by spinning this wheel to find out which celebrity you'll be playing with. Remember, if it stops in any of the gold star areas, you play for double your money, 10000 instead of $5,000. Give it a good spin. It must make one complete revolution. Go, oh, baby. There Let's we go. We're going to find out if it double, is doubled double, or if it is double, not doubled. Double. The way you can tell double, there, double, it's perfectly double, coordinated. Double, uh, 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 double. It's Joyce Fulapon. Joyce. So $10,000. I'm so sorry. What do I do? You don't have to be sorry. What are you doing? Now, think positively. How come you put my name up there? <laughs> Everybody's name goes up there. Here we go. Good luck, Joyce. Listen carefully. Clear your brain. What brain? Here we go. Blank Hills. That's H I L L S. Okay, Frank, she's finished. Give us the answer that matches hers. And if you do that, we give you $10,000. Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills. Well, they're with you. Now, Joyce, I know it was a difficult one. <laughs> well, equivalent don't to... Don't embarrass me anymore. Equivalent <laughs> to the Einstein theory... But, but I was thinking about where the Hollywood sign is in the Hollywood Hills. In the Hollywood Hills? Is I'm that where sorry. the sign is? Yeah, but I wrote Beverly Hills. You did. Second row out there. Wow. 
I'm sure she's very thrilled about all the kissing that went on here. You even spelled it right. Even spelled it right. Yeah, she says she even spelled Beverly right. Your wife is very happy out there. We're very happy for you, my dear. What's your first name? Frank. <laughs> <laughs> no, her. I mean her first name. Janet. I, no, Janet. your first name. I say, I say, what's your wife's first name? He says, Frank. <laughs> Well, listen, it isn't every day you win $10,600 just like That's that. Great. Okay, Frank, you can meet another player in a moment. Right now, we got to do a little business with America, okay? Right. What do you say we all applaud Debbie Sorensen? Shall we do that? Hello, Debbie. Hi. How many people did you bring with you? Three. Three. Hey. My brother and two very good friends. Your brother and two very good friends are yes. out there rooting for you. Right. Well, they're quite a clack. Where are you from, Debbie? Monterey Park. And what do you do? I am a property control assistant for one of the larger aircraft department divisions in Los Angeles, working in the terminations department. Is that a mouthful? <laughs> I don't want to know what that is. Uh, basically, I... we just keep inventory of one of the planes that has been terminated, and we have to sell the parts that won't be used. Yes. Now this, is that like when an airplane dies? Yes. Oh. oh don't talk about that. You know, depressed. And you're yes, like man. the mortician. Right. You take it apart and fix it up and sell the parts. And we don't fix it up anymore. We send just the take eyes it apart to the eye bank. And right. The, oh, the kidney to a kidney bank. And oh, I'm so glad I asked about that. <laughs> Good luck anyway, Debbie. Thank you. You may have A or B, my dear. I'll take A. A it is. New game here. This says, did you hear? About the park in Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills, I know that. Yes, you do indeed. <laughs> this park is it's so ritzy, instead of paper bags, the winos keep their bottles in blanks. <laughs> That's how ritzy this park is in Beverly Hills. Yeah. You know the way a wino keeps his bottle in a paper bag and then he just uh, opens the top of it and he drinks and it looks like he's drinking out of a bag, you see, but there's really a bottle inside. That's what winos do. Well, in this park in Beverly Hills, it's so ritzy, instead of paper bags, the winos keep their bottles in blanks. I still don't understand the question. You still do not understand. It's a ritzy park. Ritzy is the operative word. Fancy, schmancy. You have the definitive I answer. I don't have to play anymore today. Oh I yes. Made all my <laughs> Ten thousand bucks. That's very nice. Okay, here we go with Debbie Sorensen. This park in Beverly Hills, Debbie, is so ritzy. Instead of paper bags, the winos keep their bottles in blanks. The only thing I could come up with is attaché cases. Is what? Attaché cases. Attaché cases. Right. <laughs> Wrong answer, huh? <laughs> well, I think you'll hear, you know, attaché case is all right, but uh, there may be something that might be better. Well, I'm assuming that it's a good white wine, like a, a nice... Uh, Johannesburg Mont Riesling? Rocher. Yes, so, of course. And uh, so it would be a silver ice bucket. A silver ice <laughs> yes, bucket. that's ritzy. That is oh. ritzy. Oh. A very, yeah. very ritzy. Gucci shopping sack. All right. Now, have you seen these little things that yes. say Gucci bag on them? Well, that's the whole idea there. Hello there. <laughs> uh, don't send us your letters. <laughs> well, they're all the way over in Italy. What do they know? They don't they're even always, understand English. I'm a personal friend of Mr. Gucci. Good. Good. I met him in San... Doctor. Not anymore. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's silly to plug people. And people like you do that. They plug things. And it's really forward and it's bushy. Why would he let you do Gucci shopping I... bag. <laughs> <laughs> we said that by accident. We got it oh, that was dear. in God's favor, the play I was in. Remember? They yes, I remember. Gucci shopping Who produced bag. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, Lori, these winos in this fancy uh, park in Beverly Hills keep their bottles <laughs> in... Mink covers. Mink covers. Now that'd be awesome. fancy. <laughs> Have a little uh, tea cozy like uh, to cover the bottle. Oh, well, they kept them in coolers, you know, ice buckets. Ice right. buckets or ice coolers. Yes, ma'am. Brett and Charles show very bad taste, I think, in mentioning a store. Yes. I say Gucci bags. Gucci. Hermes will demand equal apart. time. Okay. <laughs> So there we are with one question under the way, and we'll uh, do yours in a moment or so, but right now we want to do this. Today's
today's consolation prizes are first. From Kenny Shoes, the great American shoe store, and up to the minute selection of fashion footwear, Kenny Shoes not only fits your feet, they fit your life. And long-lasting Ace Interior Latex Paints, plus great equipment from the painting place, your helpful Ace Hardware store's complete paint department. And a month of reading entertainment from popular library, including Skin Deep, Susan Hufford's expose of the secret plastic world of America's beautiful people. And Hires Root Beer, after 100 years, America's original root beer is still number one. Hires the great American root beer. Let's give it a go again with our star, Gene Rayburn. Okay, Johnny O, here we go. The other round one question for Frank here. The nurse said, Aha. I think the doctor must have just come from the golf course. He walked into the operating room and drove Mrs. Johnson's blank 200 yards. <laughs> did, you say, did you say Mr. or Mrs.? Mrs. Johnson. <laughs> he walked into the operating room and drove Mrs. Johnson's blank 200 yards. What difference does it make whether Miss or Mrs.? You, you put something down on the card there. It makes a lot of difference. <laughs> All if you right. were Mr. Johnson, it would make a great deal. Oh, I thought you said Ms. or Mrs. She said Mr. Oh, or of no. course. Uh, right. Okay, Frank. About uh, ready over there. Here we go. The nurse said, I think the doctor must have just come in from the golf course. He walked into the operating room and drove Mrs. Johnson's blank 200 yards. <laughs> There's a lot of answers. I'll say boobies. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, that hurts. Four. No. <laughs> Frank. Oh, I tell you, that is, was smart. We didn't, uh, sometimes a question is uh, written with those in mind, but I don't think this was one of them. No. No, definitely not. Show them, Dick. Drove her kidneys. Kidneys, yeah. <laughs> Little surgery was going on there. What do you say? I say gallstone. There's an answer, yeah. That's a gallstone. Makes sense, yeah. That's what you're going to have when Gucci gets a hold of you. <laughs> gallstones. Yeah. There's two, two gallstones and one kidney so far. Laurie, what do you contribute? Heart. One heart. All right, we're getting all parts of the anatomy here. Gallstones. Gallstones. It'd be easy to hit one of those. Yeah, that doctor little, had a lot of gall, I'll little, tell you. Uh, he did indeed. What have you got there? Her bladder. Gall bladder. Gall bladder? No, just bladder. Oh, just, oh, a plain bladder. Oh, I was trying to save you from that, but you uh, just had to open your mouth, didn't you? <laughs> okay, round two coming up. What do we got? Oh, no score. <laughs> oh, Debbie. You may have A or B. I'll try B this time. B. Okay. Rick said, the Army wants to use my wife. Oh, no, that's that just... <laughs> no, they, Rick didn't say that. Here's what he said. Erase he says, that. <laughs> erase that. The army wants to hire my wife and use her as a weapon. She'll go behind enemy lines and blank them to death. <laughs> <laughs> you have a very quick mind, in addition to oh. all of your other attributes. <laughs> I, don't think that, I don't think we can use that one. God love his little heart. Yeah. <laughs> Is that how you spell that? Yes, right. No, that uh, he sent a note down to you. Your friend up there, we come here over to Debbie Sorensen. Rick said, the army wants to hire my wife and use her as a weapon. She'll go, <laughs> she'll go behind enemy lines and blank them to death. Talk them to death. Talk them to death is a good answer. <laughs> yes, talk them to death talk indeed. Them to death. Oh, yay. <laughs> Good old Debbie. This is an interesting Freudian slip coming up. Oh really? <laughs> Whoops. He's out of his cotton picking hand. <laughs> Uh, this, now this, I don't want an argument from the judges and all of that. I just want a simple tinkle of the bell. Bore. Bore. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they thought when about it. I tell it. you, when yeah. I speak, no. everybody goes right to sleep. Well, no, they, they were thinking about it because uh, uh, there are various ways you of mean boring people. They are bored. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got there? Talk is what we're looking Correct for. Correct answer, Talk, Gene. Naturally, that's another one for Debbie. She has two. The army will send my wife behind enemy lines and and uh, <laughs> talk them to death. 
This is what all ladies do the best. Really? Talk. Talk. Talk, talk, talk. All right, that's three for Debbie. Nag? Nag! What? What? Wait a minute. Yeah, right. They had to think about it. I guess there is no way to nag without, without verbal speech right. and being involved. Bore people without talking. Well, oh. there are other ways of boring people. How? Yeah. Name Not being good Sitting at Sitting there and being and... silent. Right. No, that, that would be boring. boring. <laughs> yes. All right, Joyce, you're up. I, yes. Uh, 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 talk is what we want. Talk. <laughs> and talk is what we get. Five for her. Ready, Frank. Go, Frank, ready. I no, think Frank is not ready. <laughs> We're going to do a little commercial here, Frank. <laughs> Sorry. You stay ready. Though, I'm ready. You? All right. Come back <laughs> right after this. I thank you all. You were just grand and gay and glorious and wonderful, and you'll be better tomorrow. I'm Gene Raber, and join us next time for Match Game 78. Good time. <laughs> Speaking for Match Game 78, a Mark Gibson, Bill Todman production. This program was edited for broadcast. Get ready to match the stars. Nipsey Russell, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley from WKRP in Cincinnati, Lonnie Anderson, Jack Jones. And George Bulevar as we play the star studded Big Money Match Game 79. And now here's the star of Match Game 79, Gene Raver. Thank you. <laughs> like it better than the oh, fine. Oh, Jack. Yeah. All right, here are Karen Hearn and Julia Wilson. <laughs> Karen's the current champ at $100. And uh, we met Julia Wilson just as the time expired when we were together last time and found out that. Uh, she's a flight director. She's a <laughs> former flight uh, attendant. attendant and has uh, three or four children, one of whom is 23 years old. <laughs> By, uh, uh, but not you, it's a stepchild, right? Yes. yes. You have one. I have one of my own. One of your own. Old, and, and I have four stepchildren. And four stepchildren, so yes. there are a lot of people milling around that right. house. <laughs> All right. Good luck to both of you ladies. Here we go with round one, Julia, A or B? A. A it is. This one says, today there was good news and bad news. Mm -hmm. Oh, golly. The good news is Cleveland got a financial advisor. <laughs> Bad news is, it's blank. Very good. Yeah. Julie Wilson, today there was good news and bad news. The good news is, Cleveland got a financial advisor. The bad news is, it's blank. Marvin Gaye. Oh. What? Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye? Tell me why you said Marvin Gaye. He's, He's had some financial up. troubles. He's lately. had some financial troubles. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. She said Marvin Gaye. Yeah, but Marvin Gaye's trouble is temporary <laughs> and not very celebrated. His financial advisor is Bert Lance. Bert Lance. <laughs> Ready? Well, I thought of uh, L-A-N-Z, but then I realized that was wrong, so I put L-A-N-C, Burt Lance. Okay, that's two of those so far. Oh, well, one of the other guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the two other guys and you're right, hey? Chuck, okay. <laughs> now we come to this guy. Here. Yes, and this guy went with all the other guys. And Burt Lance. Burt Lance. Okay, that's four of those so far, Julia. See, Jack? Marvin is not quite that big this year. Wasn't thinking of Marvin Gaye. <laughs> <laughs> Burt Lance. Did you put Marvin Gaye, Joyce? She almost said no, Marvin Gaye. I didn't even think about it. <clears throat> Jackie O. Well, she spends so much money, I figured she'd spend it all before well, she... She's a spendthrift. There yes. isn't any in Cleveland say. to spend, Joyce. Okay. That's the point. <laughs> so, now, round one question for you, but first, we have this for you. 
Here we go. The other round one question. Karen, this weather is really terrible. It's How so cold. It? Oh. oh. You want to do that? <laughs> yes. This weather is really terrible. How terrible is it? It's so cold. <laughs> I'm sorry, one line of show is all you're allowed in. How cold and terrible is it's it? It's so cold a bear just came out of hibernation to buy a blink. <laughs> That's how terrible and cold it is. <laughs> this weather is really terrible. It's so cold, a bear came out of hibernation to buy a blank. An electric blanket. An electric blanket. She said an electric blanket. I've seen some far-fetched things. What'd you say? An electric blanket. I, I was telling Brett, I heard some far-fetched answers, but a bear buying an electric blanket. is too much. <laughs> Too much. I didn't know they had any electricity in those caves, or I probably would have put electric blanket. What'd you do, put? But I didn't. No offense, Betty. Fur coat. Fur coat. I said a Betty White fur coat. A Betty White fur coat. What kind of coat would that be, Charles? Fake fur. Fake fur, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing oh. fake about this lady here. Oh, true. <laughs> Here we go, Lonnie. A <clears throat> uh, blanket. A blanket. Yeah. No. Yes. 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 Okay. JJ, all right. Weather's really terrible. So cold, Bear just came out of hibernation to buy a... A blank et. Blank et. Okay. Three for her. What do you got there? The old fur coat. The old fur coat. Okay. So it's three to nothing, the end of round one. We go to round two. Julia, again, you have a choice of A or B. B. Ooh. B says... Did you meet your husband on a flight? Faye Ray said... It's dangerous playing kissing games with King Kong. Instead of spinning a bottle, he spins a blank. <laughs> Instead of spinning a bottle, he spins a blank. All right, Julia. Faye Ray said it's dangerous playing kissing games with King Kong. <laughs> Instead of spinning a bottle, he spins a blank. A tree. Oh. Back off. You see, there aren't too many trees on 34th Street and 5th Avenue. All right, Nipsey, she said a tree. Julie is proving that you can <laughs> goof with everything going your way, can't you? He spins a building. A building. That was... What are you associated with, you know, climbing the Empire State and all that? Yes. Oh, no, this building was still there. What he spun was your little airplane. That's right. You could have done that, too. What have you got there? A strange answer, but I have my own ways. Naturally. An oil truck. <laughs> Big bottle. Oh, I see. Oh, he mean, he means yeah. a darling. He That's means it. an oil drum. It's a container of some kind. Nice we thinking, Steve. Yes, of course. I'm trying to save your... Neck on that <laughs> now, Julia, you got to match the three people in the lower tier to achieve a tie and stay in the game. Lonnie, what have you got? I'm sorry, I said skyscraper. Skyscraper, so that means Karen wins another game. What do you got, Jack? Enjoy skyscraper and a water tower. The pleasure to be with you. Some gifts will come your way for Match Game 79. Thank you, Julia Wilson. Goodbye. Here's a message or two just for you. Karen Hearn is up here for the second time. She's got $200 now. She's going to try for the big money again. You ready? That's right. Yes, we man. polled a studio audience not too long ago. Karen said, write down your best answer to this. Deck blank. Remember, $500 for matching the most popular. For matching the second most popular, $250. And for matching the third most popular answer, $100. Three of our six stars will assist. Okay. Brett. Deck of cards. Yeah. Charles? Deckhand, like on my ship. Right. Nipsey. Uh, deck, deck chair. Deck chair. Deck chair. Deck chair. Deck chair. Deck deck chair. chair. You have deck chair, deck hand, and deck of cards. You can choose one of those, or you have the option of giving us one of your own ideas. I think I'll go with a deck of cards. That seems a deck of cards, yeah. yeah. Let's see if we have a deck of cards up there in some position. May we see the $100 number? Deck, deck hand. Okay, that's one answer a celebrity gave you. May we see the next one, please? 
Yeah. Deck of cards. Congratulations. You got $250 more. You have $450 altogether. Deck, deck, right. deck, deck the halls. Deck the halls. You think that's what's gonna be? <laughs> deck the halls with plastic holly. Pa la 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 la. Let me see it, please. Hey. Deck the halls. That's it. Karen, you've won the 250. Means the least you'll play for is two thousand five hundred dollars. But if you got a lucky spin of the star wheel, you'll double that money and play for five thousand dollars. We'll all root for a double for you. Good luck to you. Here we go. <laughs> Swing around here and face me. And now, good luck to you. This is it. Get off my blank. No help from the audience, please, because uh, it might not be the best answer in the world. Okay. He's finished. You give us the same answer that he's written on the card. If you do, you get $5,000. What do you say? Well, the first answer that came to my mind was back. Yeah! Get off my back. All right. Let's find out what Nipsey says. She says, get off my back. We'll match you. What do you say to that, what Nipsey? That's old language. The what do they say now is, get off my case. Oh, they say that. Yeah, so get off my back. Oh. We welcome you, sir. Hi. I'd like to find out a little bit about you before we begin the competition here. Well, I retired about two years ago. I was one of the three personnel officers that closed down selective service. We sent all the people in the draft ah. boards home. <laughs> and then they wrote me a letter and I went home. Yes. <laughs> and uh, You may I, be called back soon. Right. Things aren't going too well for them, are they? Right. I, uh, I dance. and In fact, we won a jitterbug contest here in Corrales, New Mexico, but... Three months, five months You and ago. your wife? Right. No kid, you're a jitterbugger. Right. Well, that's the music of your era, isn't it? Yes, I'm, I'm a bionic senior citizen. Yes. Does anybody there jitterbug? Get out here. <laughs> Come over here. Uh, have you got any jitterbug music, Mark? <laughs> No. <laughs> How about a tango with me? <laughs> okay, good luck to you, Jack. We'll ask you to begin. Oops, we'll uh, do a little business with America here first, and then we'll ask you to begin. Hold everyone. Now, Jack, you have a choice of A or B. A. Jack wants A. Here it is. The desk clerk said, it was a mistake letting Jacques Cousteau stay at this hotel. <laughs> at this very moment, he's up in his room with a blank. <laughs> That's what he said. The desk clerk. Good. You're okay. All right. Charles, be ready in a moment. The desk clerk said it was a mistake letting Jacques Cousteau stay at this hotel. At this very moment, he's up in his room with a blank. A mermaid. Yeah. Mermaid is good. Okay, Jack. 
What do you say, Nipsey? I have heard that they are beautiful. I don't know the reason why. It's not enough woman to make love to, and it's too much fish to fry. <laughs> a merman. He's got a million of them. Yeah. And then I He's a good old jitterbugger, isn't he? Yes, he is. <laughs> Joyce Very was good. afraid she was going to throw her over, and she doesn't have any, you know, oh, what's Oh, really? <laughs> Would have been a first for that. No well, now, I said mermaid. Why okay, not? two for Jack. Make it three for Jack. A mermaid from Pismo Beach. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> what have you got for old Jack, Lonnie? Uh, Jacques Cousteau stay at this hotel. It's the very moment he's up in his room with a... Definitely a mermaid. A mermaid. Look out, a mermaid. Man, okay. <laughs> Jack, what have you got for Jack? He was up in his rim. Rim? With a wet fish. Hey, yes. <laughs> That's what I feel like right no, now. No romance in your soul anymore. No, no. <laughs> in his rim. Hey. His rim. His rim. His rim. His rim. His funny money in. Oh, yes. Shoot. I can jitterbug, but I didn't come up with the right answer. Really? He shook up your brains, this huh? Is, yeah. This is shocking, I've got to tell you this. An electric eel. An electric eel. That's dangerous. That Jacques Cousteau. You know how those Frenchmen are. What the heck? Uh, hello, Karen. Whoops. <laughs> oh, boy, it's a godfather. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Careful, honey. Oh, my gosh. I went to a tough school when I was a kid. How oh, tough? Shut up. <laughs> the first time you're bad, they send your parents a letter. The second time, they send your parents a blank. First time you're bad, you send your parents a letter. And the second time, the second time you're bad, they send a letter. Second time. You can understand it. Don't spit it out on me. I went to a tough school when I was a kid. The first time you're bad, they send your parents a letter. The second time, they send your parents a grump bum. Jane, don't swallow. <laughs> so I think you should wet that down before you put it in. <laughs> oh, girl. <laughs> That's not bad. I hope Patty Duke is watching this acting. It's so exciting. <laughs> you didn't understand me. You didn't. Nobody understands me. Wait a week. Oh, that's Oh, sweet, I told you to wet it before you put it in. I went to tough school when I was a kid. First time you're bad, they send your parents a letter. Second time, they send your parents a... Uh... Dead child. <laughs> yeah, we never went that far. Yeah. What did she say? You send her a dead child? Yes. Well, how can you attack that lady? The second time they send her a body. Yours. Ah. You could have fooled me. <laughs> Thank you. What do you what got? What is the thing they said, like, which I, I couldn't think of? Is it called the black hand? That's what I yes. got. That's, yeah, yeah. That's what Nick said. I couldn't remember. Just say Nipsey's hand. That's yeah. right. No, I said they sent a contract on the kid. Now that's sort of contract a match. Contract on the it? kid. Well, the contract, not you know, quite dead. Could it not have been fulfilled? Yes. Do you realize I'm sitting here <laughs> with the black hand and the white mouth? <laughs> Maybe we should put the black hand over the white mouth. <laughs> the child. Molesting award. Molesting answer award. They said a body the kid. Body the kid. It's another yeah. match. 
I thought it was a rotten answer. <laughs> but she's doing well with it. She what a is. rotten group on the panel. Until yeah. she gets to me, I was thinking of letter, so I thought they sent a ransom, ransom note. note. That's a good one. Yes. What have you got? See, invariably, uh, the parents pay for their children's <laughs> mistake. Yes. <laughs> mistake. So graceful. So I said they sent them a horse's head. Horse's head. <laughs> From the book of the most picture, right? A pony's hand. I don't like any of these answers. And I couldn't bring myself to say the dead body of the child. So I said what they would bring him in. What? A coffin. Like time they send your parents a coffin. You're a mean Okay, so it's four to two at the end of round one in favor of Jack Bejart. Round two coming up a little later right now this. Don't forget to watch Lonnie Anderson on WKRP Cincinnati. Jack Jones is at the Riviera. No, no, no. At the sand. The sa no. At the, uh, wait a minute, I want one more Sahara. day. Right down the line. Sahara. Sahara. Yes, at right. the I'm Sahara at the in Las Vegas. You're at the sand. I'm at the sand. Yeah. And we're at the Ramada Inn. And you're hanging by a thread. Hanging by a thread is her movie, yes. Her life is hanging by a thread. I, uh, uh, next week, uh, when we all gather on the stage. Now you're in my light. Oh, I'm sorry. Some of us will be here, and some of us won't be here. Which ones of us won't be here? <laughs> Burr Tilstrom's friends, Kukla and Ollie. Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Ava Gamore, Artie Johnson, and Fanny White. For your muscles. I'm Gene Raver, and join us next time for Match Game 79. <laughs>
When I walked into the courtroom, the judge was on blank. <laughs> Fred said, when my lawyer said that he'd take my case to a higher court, he really meant higher. When I walked into the courtroom, the judge was on blank. Uppers. Uppers. <laughs> These carpenters will fool you every time. When you expect a carpenter to say stilts, huh? This one says uppers. Okay, Chuck. Yeah, Chuck says uppers. Sophisticated. It got along well with you, Gene, and I expect a carpenter to say what you expect a carpenter to say. Stilts. <laughs> okay, we have a sophisticated carpenter in our midst. Has he got any uppers? No. <laughs> I'm sorry, stilts. All right. Yes, sir. Judicial stilts. Judicial stilts. <laughs> They're a little different. Okay, Lonnie Anderson. Yes. Fred said, my lawyer said he'd take case to a higher court. He really meant higher. Walked into the courtroom. The judge was on... He was on stilts. All right, we got four That's of them so far. Chuck. Okay, Jack. Well, I'm going to Big Bear, I'll tell you that. Big Bear. I said he was on grass. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. All Watch right. It. Watch it now. <laughs> okay, Miss Rosebud. <laughs> I love Big Bear. That's a nice place. You said he was really high, right? Really high. I said he was on cloud nine. Cloud nine. <laughs> Heavy high. Wait, may I be excused? <laughs> yeah, no, hang around now. Okay, Chuck, that's your first round question. And don't, now don't we've got one for Julia. So, yeah. <laughs> Harry said, I really feel out of place. I feel like blank at an Osmond family reunion. <laughs> I feel out of place. I feel like blank at an Osmond family reunion. Any, any time, Nips. <laughs> sure I will, Julie. Here it is. Harry said, I really feel out of place. I'm just reading it for her. Okay. Harry said, I really feel out of place. I feel like blank at an Osmond family reunion. You know who the Osmonds yes, are? Yes, I do. <laughs> well, they had this family reunion, uh -huh. you see. Um, I don't know. Just a priest. I don't ask a priest. <gasps> what excuse would be at like home? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true they are Mormons. Yes. And a priest. No, but you know. <laughs> look into Mormons their eyes. Do you think anybody here is going to say priest, Julie? Oh uh, well. Would you? Uh, <laughs> all right. Nipsey, what have you got? Really out of place would be the Jackson 5. At the dog. Jackson 5? Okay. <laughs> What'd you say? Well, they represent the good old things in this country, purity and all that stuff. Yes. So I figured somebody like Xavier Hollinger would really be out of place. Yes. That's the drift. See, I think yeah. these two are spies. Who? The contestants. Oh, Julia they Chuck They say cold words like uppers and priests. Oh, Tennis yeah. could be rolling. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This is it. Yes. The this is your definitive. Okay. Thanks. A dentist. A dentist. Uh -huh. Julie's looking for a priest, Lonnie. Uh, well, I don't think she'll find it here. I said Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor. <laughs> good Excellent. All right. Well, along the same lines, Red Fox. Another good one. <laughs> Red Fox. Okay. And no another good life. one. I said, Gucci, Gucci, Charo. Charo. <laughs> another good one. Well, uh, I had some wonderful answers there, but not from you. Right. <laughs> now we've got a little business to do with you. Okay, we got a zip to zip tie here. We'll go to round two here. And since Chuck went first last time, Julie, we ask you to go first this time. A. Okay, hey, 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 hey. Barry said, the food at that restaurant was so rotten when the waiter. Oh, I'm sorry. That's my fault. I... Give another chance. Barry said, the food at that restaurant was so rotten. Perfect. Hey. When the waiter brought the steak, he asked me if I'd like to eat it or blank it. <laughs> Okay, Julie, Barry said the food at that restaurant was so rotten. When the waiter brought the steak, he asked me if I'd like to eat it or blank it. Wear it. Yeah! Good. <laughs> That's 
okay. Word is okay. Yeah, I ate at the restaurant so bad, I told the waiter, I said, take this slop back to the chef. He said, I need to take it to him, he won't eat it either. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't wear it. He didn't wear it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I've been to that restaurant many times, unfortunately. He said, eat it or kill it. <laughs> A rare steak. Eat it or beat it. <laughs> Eat it or beat it. Has a certain, a certain lilt to it there, Charles. Yes, there Lonnie, is a lilt to it, isn't food there? Food in the restaurant is so rotten, the waiter brought the steak, asked me if I wanted to eat it or blank it. Revive it. <laughs> eat it or revive it. A little high, was it? <laughs> food is uh, great. Food is great this place. 50,000 flies can't be wrong. I said, <laughs> I said smoke it. Eat it or smoke it. thing now. Okay, Joyce. Well, I thought maybe the steak was so tough he put it on the bottom of his soles and wear it. Wear it. <laughs> Keep it, it. Ah. All right, Chuck. Here you go. Otto the Optimist said. Otto the Optimist Otto said. There is something good in everything that happens to me. Like last week, I was run over, but I had the good fortune to be run over by a blank. <laughs> had the good fortune to be run over by a blank. Okay, Chuck, and guess you're about ready for it. Here we go. Out of the Optimist said, there's something good in everything that happens to me. Like last week, I was run over, but I had the good fortune to be run over by a blank. Ambulance. Yeah! He came up with a good one. That is a good yeah, one. Yeah, no man is so bad, but what that a woman can make him worse? Oh. An ambulance. Okay, Chuck, you got one. No answer so good that I can't ruin it. <laughs> I said Volkswagen. <laughs> Why? Well, it's a little car. Uh, if you got run over by it, it would hurt you as bad as a big car. car. No, it Just wouldn't. Yes, would it you would. Would prefer a, a great big uh, no. AMP truck? No. A brakes truck. <laughs> a doctor, maybe? An AMP truck. <laughs> <laughs> Try to keep the references in the last 50 years. <laughs> I'm like, those that are 50 years old. <laughs> hint, hint, an ambulance. <laughs> an ambulance. <laughs> Score is now tied two to two. Had the good fortune to be run over by a... An ambulance was the perfect answer, but I thought maybe cheerfully a good humor truck. A good humor truck. <laughs> I want chocolate. <laughs> okay, Jack. How, how bad can it be to get run over by a blimp? Would <laughs> <laughs> cost a sh cast a shadow, that's all. What have you got there, Joyce? I thought he got run over in good taste by a Mercedes. <laughs> a Mercedes. <laughs> Don't All right, Nazi. <laughs> Here we go. Round three. Score is tied. Two to two. Score. Julie went first last time, so Chuck, you go first this time. B. B. Okay. Ethel said, That stupid surgeon made my new nose out of the skin from my foot. And that's why my nose has blank. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ethel said that stupid surgeon made my new nose out of the skin from my foot. And that's why my nose has... Athlete's foot. Yeah! Okay. You got friends out there? Relatives and friends? My wife. Oh, your wife. She's very vocal. How about it, Brett? You have awfully pretty blue eyes, and I'm really sorry. I said corns. Corn! That's that was a good choice. Corns would have been one of the good ones. Yeah. There it is. That's why my nose has... Of course. Athlete's foot. Okay, Chuck, you got three. What do you got for the young fellow there? Corns. Corns. Corns and athlete's foot were the two good answers there. And Joyce has... Athlete's foot. All right, you got four. Now, Julie, we're getting to the end here. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you need two to tie okay. and three to win. Okay. From his hospital bed, Tom said, Today I got two cards. My mother sent me a get well card. My mother-in-law sent me a get blank card. <laughs> oh, no, you hear all that? I was going to come out. Ready? Here we go. 
From his hospital bed, Tom said, today I got two cards. My mother sent me a get well card. My mother-in-law sent me a get blank card. Worse. Get worse card. She said, my mother-in-law sent me a get worse card. I think she blew oh, it. Oh, I'm sorry. I said get lost. Charles? I'm sorry, get lost. Oh. Now, let's see. You must match the two remaining players, Lonnie and Jack, to stay in the game and achieve a tie. Lonnie, what have you got? Oh, I'm sorry. I said to get sicker. Get sicker. It's all up to you, Jack. Lost. Get lost. That means Chuck Kindick wins the game. Some gifts will be coming your way. Great. Thank you very much Thank for being with us. Thanks Goodbye, so Julie Parker. Here's a little message for you. Hurry back. Chuck here in his blue outfit is standing on a little blue dot in the rug. And everything's okay. Chuck, time now for the Big Buddy Super Match. You can win over $20,000 here. To do that for you, we're going to have two audience matches. Let's begin with the first one. We polled the studio audience not too long ago. Said, write down your best answer to this. Code of blank. $500 for you for matching their most popular answer. $250 for the second most popular. And $100 for matching the third. Whom do you call on for a little assistance here? You're allowed three. Chuck Nelson Riley. Shut <laughs> oh, hey. No, when I was in the Bronx and we had no money, I was born, we had a coat of arms. Two roaches on a field of linoleum. <laughs> coat of arms. Okay. Coat of arms. Coat. It's all right. That's his answer. Well, don't all turn on me because I could go to a sitcom. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Who else? Anyway. Let's try Nipsey. Code of ethics. Code of ethics. Jack. Now, now that they've used them all up. Uh, yeah. Honor. Good, oh, good, yeah. good. I thought it. Boy, am I smart. Audience, you must learn to enunciate more clearly. <laughs> <laughs> honor. Yeah, more more honor. coaching, please. Yes. Code of honor, code of ethics, and code of arms are the three you have. <laughs> I like, uh, I like code of ethics until Jack said code of honor. Yeah, you and like that, that kind of code of honor. But I think I'll go with code of ethics. Okay. Okay, that was Nipsey's answer. Let's see if we have code of ethics under the $100 number. as a decoration in the meantime. <laughs> so, Charles' answer's up there, coat of arms. That Say audience. it again. Whose answer's up it's there? Chuck Wrong. Nelson Riley's. Right on. All together. Charles Nelson Riley. Thank you. Okay, let's see what we got on the $250 number. Coat, coat of, of honor. honor. Well... I guess your judgment is going to be right here. It looks to me as if ethics will be on tops. Let's slide the big one. Yeah! Balance. Yes, of course. <laughs> we have a carpenter here who does all the repair work, Charles. Now you won $500, means the least you'll play for is 10 times that amount, or $5,000. We're going to see now how much more you'll win with your second audience match. Blank oh. snapper. Okay. <laughs> well, Nipsey got it for me last time, so let's start with him this time. Oh, man, I don't know. Finger snapper? Finger snapper. Okay. Oh, oh, no. We all you don't like that? that? Oh, no. How about a little snapper? <laughs> what about this pretty girl I, here? I'm getting to her in a minute. I know you're saving the best for last. <laughs> oh, wait. No, no. Then I won't be able to think of anything. Brett. I resent that. What about red snapper? One more. And now Lonnie. 
Lonnie? Well, red was all I could think of. Oh. Quickly, quickly. Oh, what red snapper? Whipper. Oh, that's one. Whipper snapper. Whipper snapper. You got whipper snapper, red snapper, and finger snapper. Do you want one of those, or have you got a better one in your head? Again, I was, uh, I had my mind made up for red snapper until someone came along, and I think I'll stick with red snapper. Red snapper, all right. Let's see if we have a red snapper under the $100 number. Garter snapper. Can't hardly find them anymore. We're a dying breed. May we see the next one, please? Whipper snapper, okay, that's the audience's answer. And the last one, if you would. Yeah, yeah you got it. Okay. Another five hundred dollars, multiplied by ten, another five thousand. Got a pot of ten thousand dollars to shoot for. However, if you have a lucky spin of the star wheel, you'll be playing for twenty thousand dollars. Good luck, give it a spin. Here we go. All right. Any of the gold star areas? Okay, get over there. Now, audience, this is one place where you cannot help. Please do not say an answer here, because it may be a rotten answer, and then if he uses it, he blows the money. Okay, thank you for your cooperation. Good luck to you. Here it is. Mill blank. That's M-I-L-L -L blank. Mill blank. No, com no community decisions here. Just put it in the slot and away we go here. All right, she's finished her answer. And you give us the answer that she has on the card and you get $20,000. Mill Stream. Yeah! Mill Stream. You thought a long time, didn't you? What other thoughts were going through your head? Mill House. You're thinking Mill House? Mill House. Yeah, but well, you said Mill Stream. I was thinking the old okay. Mill Stream. The old Mill Stream. That's Mill Pond. Mill Pond is another good one. Mill I hate being in this position. Why? Because. I mean, I really feel awful. That's a terrible thing to do to me. Because I have to give you $20,000. Yeah. <laughs> Join us next week for another exciting, fun-filled match game. BM Gene Rayburn here. Goodbye. Thank you. Some contestants will receive a promptly Javon Franklin's... is even mouthwash. Brush your breath with dentine. And Turtle Extra Car Wax. Extra easy, extra durable, extra brilliant. Turtle Extra Car Wax. A liquid or new soft face. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game PM. A Mark Goodson, Bill Tottman
Get ready to match the stars from Lou Grant, Robert Walden, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Robert, Elaine Joyce, Bill Daly, and Joyce Bulevon as we play the star studded Big Money Match Game. And now, here's the star of Match Game, Gene Raver. What happened? Hey, Breslow, what happened to the microphone? It looks funny. I lost my knob. <laughs> there used to be a little... Uh... Well, we're here. Oh, hello there. <laughs> well, I've lost my knob, but I have you, don't have I? <laughs> no one's going to touch it. <laughs> I mean, that's how it don't blondes have more fun? No. No? Right, Elaine? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I did this because I didn't want to confuse you. You Every mean because your name is Joyce, Joyce Boulevard? And yeah. everyone confuses her with Bill Daly. That's right. <laughs> you're wearing this because you don't want us to get mixed, you mixed up with her? I don't want you to get mixed up. You're not real. <laughs> I'm doing this to help you out. No matter how peculiarly I look, I wish to help you out. And I'm doing this to help you out. Laugh. Bang! <laughs> I think it's rather becoming on her, don't you? I think it's, I think it's great. Okay. You, should we keep it? Or rip oh, it off had, her head? Oh, honey, she's got a lot of stuff lined up. Would you up. like to use my knob? And she's going to die with everyone. Take my, here, take my knob, please. No, 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 I can't do that. Let's say hello to Anita Young and Bob Flugel. Hey! Welcome to both of you. You're both going to play two games. You know that, right? Thank you. And we want to find out a little bit about each of you, get acquainted with you. Bob, let's begin with you. I just graduated from college, Gene. No kidding. Right. Which college? San Diego State University. Well, congratulations, Thank you. Bob. I think that's marvelous. Thank you. I mean, he's, he's a little slow, but what the hell? <laughs> he made it, didn't he? On a, on a football contract. No, you decided to, uh, I assume, in a very late in life, you decided to go to college. I was in the Navy for 32 years. Oh, well, sure. Yes, yeah, slowed things down. So that, and what did you major in in college? Business administration. Yeah. Right. Are you administrating someplace? Yeah, I work in an aerospace firm in Chula Vista in the training right. department. You live around there? I live in Spring Valley, yeah. which is a suburb of San Diego. Do you have any familial attachments? Uh, I have a daughter who's a married, but, uh, and a wife. Yep. Very oh, nice. Very nice okay. wife. <laughs> you don't have a wife anymore. No, not the way, <laughs> not the way you toss her off. What? What's her name? No, build, her, build her up a little Harriet. bit. Harriet. Say something Harriet. kind a, a about good your wife. wife a good Navy wife, Harriet. Good Navy wife. Yeah. Don't go home tonight, Bob. Stuck through thick and thin. <laughs> okay. Good luck to Bob. Now let's find out about Anita Young. Well, I'm 20 years old. Originally... You didn't have to tell us that. See, we could have guessed that, Anita. <laughs> Originally, I'm from Tokyo, Japan. Right now, I live in Chatsworth, and I attend Cal State Northridge, and I'm a business marketing major. Now, oh, yes, another biz ad. Uh, uh, you were born in Tokyo. Uh-huh. You speak with no trace of any accent whatsoever. Well, I'm half Japanese, and the other half's Italian and Irish. Something oh, else. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mixed up. Yeah. You're beautiful. Oh, thanks. How old were you when you came here? Um, I guess about... From the, to the States, I came when I was about six. Oh, well, that's why you speak uh, as plainly as any of us. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, good luck Arigato. to both of you. you. Bob, uh, we'll ask you to begin, A or B? Uh, a, please. All right. A says, the energy shortage has really gotten bad. In fact, you can kiss your blank goodbye. <laughs> kiss your blank. It's like having two Charles Nelson Riley. All right, okay. I don't know what Oh, sit down. <laughs> okay, Bob. Daring, the energy me. shortage has got really bad. In fact, you can kiss your blank goodbye. Kiss your car goodbye. Kiss your car goodbye. Yeah. 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 Did anybody get it? Walden, no. did you get it? Robert oh, got, it. got it. You did? What did they say? Kiss he your... got it. Kiss your kiss gas goodbye. Kiss your gas kiss goodbye. I know it. This yeah. is the definitive answer. No, it's not. You're gonna make him sound like he's he's looking bad and he's looking good. He's looking good and no, he's I'm looking, looking no, good. Gene wanna know if I got his <laughs> answer, not if I got Bob's answer. Oh, let's answer. get on. Answer. No, let's not get on. Who's right? All right. All right. Well, no, there's no match there. Oh, there's no Hello match. there. Give me a meal. Got a match, please. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Show us your card. I want to go back to the home. <laughs> this is the home. <laughs> 
back to the city home. That's why we're here. I said you could kiss your hot tub goodbye. Oh, sure. Oh, another you know nifty me, answer. Uh, okay, show us another rotten answer here. Uh, rotten? Rotten? You say rotten? Go ahead. Dad. Isn't she sweet? Yeah. <laughs> Said, what do you read? Read the thing. Uh, the energy shortage gotten really bad. In okay, fact, really bad. So you, really you bad. say definitive car gas. We've already had that. It's gotten so bad that people can have their cars. Isn't that correct? So it can't get so bad it can get worse, right? Now, right. what is the new source of energy that everyone and Jane Fonda <laughs> are turning to? Solar energy. Right. right. Now, when that energy is gone, yes. then you say goodbye to your tan. Kiss your tan. Goodbye. I admire your spirit, sir. Do you understand what I mean? No! Yeah. I understand, Charles. What do you Thank say, you. Elaine? Oh, you're wearing a Band-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> Two Band-Aids, yes. They're sore. Oh, all right. Um, I need ace, I need ace bandages. Okay. <laughs> Don't want to hear about it. <laughs> she's trying to make you jealous. Go ahead. No, she's just trying to get me to take my top off. In fact, you can kiss your blank goodbye. Dollar. Dollar. It wasn't good, but it's accurate. So far, Walden's the only one who was really with us on the same wavelength. What do you say there? For Bob, the very smart college graduate, car. Oh. Hey, Mr. Flugel, once in a while you score with those rotten answers. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Joyce, baby. It Formally. took him as long a time to write the answer as it did for him to get through school. Too. <laughs> True. I don't know if I understand my answer. I didn't. <laughs> this is really a weirdo. You can kiss your pet pills goodbye. <laughs> that means nothing. Has no relationship to the game we are playing whatsoever. Quick. The okay. foothill. And Nita Young. I wish I had some pet pills. Part Irish, part Italian, part Japanese. Pretty lady. It's strange having King Kong as president. On Easter, <laughs> instead of eggs, they roll blanks on the White House lawn. <laughs> King Kong is president. Strange having it as president. That's all right. All right. It's strange having King Kong as president. On Easter, instead of eggs, they roll blanks on the White House lawn. Coconuts? Coconuts. That's right. That's... So here we want anything connected with co uh, King Kong would be okay. Coconuts is one possibility. I was thinking of sushi, because, but I, I said bananas. Bananas? Another one? Maybe a little better than coconuts, bananas. What do you say? As we say abroad, bananas. Bananas, all right. <laughs> Two of those so far. Hello, it's I'm Charles Nelson Ryan. <laughs> you want to appear young and glamorous? <laughs> Gypsy for silent. <laughs> Worn by most of our television stars. <laughs> and now another wrong answer, bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, thank you. Charles. You are incorrigible. Zip. Strange having King Kong as president. Uh, instead of eggs, they roll blanks <coughs> on the White House lawn. What do you say to that, baby? I say coconuts. Coconuts. Okay. One to one to score. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. Hey, you better not. What do you say? I say I've gone bananas. Bananas. All right, you had a lot of bananas there, but very few coconuts. And a round one, two to one in her favor. Round two coming up. But oh, first, this for you. Who was that man? What's that Who's guy's that name? Man? What's his name? Joe. Let's hear it for Joe. Yeah. He brought back my little round ball tip here. To the money. Thank you, Joe. Okay, round two. Anita, your head. We're going to ask you to go first, A or B? A. A it is. No whispering, please. Sorry. <laughs> Let's see, you two do not play, the rest of you do. Oh. Pinocchio oh. said, I don't think Geppetto likes me anymore. Oh, why? He gave me a blank to play with. <laughs> Pinocchio said that. Good? Of course. Of course. <laughs> you know, I could get used to you this way. Right. Yes, it is. Blue eyes, do All right, here we go. Anita. <laughs> And Pinocchio said, I don't think Geppetto likes me anymore. He gave me a blank to play with. It's got to be saw. A saw. A saw to play with that. He could hurt himself with that, couldn't he? <laughs> saw, chisel, plane, ice with any carpenter's tool that cuts. Well, I'm hot today. You I are. said match. <laughs> a match. Oh, wow, that's a good one. No, match is all right, because wood burns. Yes. He wasn't even supposed to be playing. He Didn't he match her before? 
No, these two did. <laughs> I know, yeah, no. I sushi, I said sushi. Yes. I like her answer. I think she's cute, I think she's adorable, I think she's smart, I think she's intelligent, bright, all of that. So. All right. Uh, one more for her. I said match two. Then two matches Charlie has saw. wit. Yes, Charlie's with it. Two matches and a saw. And now we come to Joyce. They don't get to write. Can I give their answer? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> Gave him a woodpecker to play with. Oh, woodpecker, that's good. Woodpecker is very you. good. That would dig into the wood a little bit. <laughs> Look at her taking a bow that and answer. all that. Oh, I, that was for you. <laughs> yes. A knife. A knife. All right. So now she picked up bow. one more. She's up to three. Thank you. And Bob, here we go with yours. <laughs> <laughs> Connie said. Don't write. Don't I write? We write. You don't write. No, we're with Bob Flugel now. I'm sorry, Bob. And you matched him in the I'm previous sorry. round, so Hi, you lay out this you time. You are the only one who Yes, matched. remember you were the only one who said... <laughs> only one who said... to get the right answer. Right. <laughs> Connie said, my date was so cheap. <laughs> You'll never make it into show business that way. <laughs> never. Here's your last chance. <laughs> Connie said, my date last night was so cheap. <laughs> Terrific. Oh, that oh. Oh. Piercing. Piercing is right. Last night we went to an amusement park and he wanted us to blink through the tunnel of love. <laughs> we went to the amusement park and he wanted us to blink through the tunnel of love. He's so cheap. He's so cheap. Oh, wow. You know, I, you know what the tunnel of love is? Yes. You know what the tunnel of love is? All right, ready, Chuck. Yo, Gene. <laughs> okay. You're gonna make me crazy. Connie said my date was so cheap. Last night we went to an amusement park, and he wanted us to blink through the tunnel of love. Swim. Yeah. Swim. Oh, Bob Flugel's coming up with some pretty good answers there. Yeah, well, having entered college at 16 myself, <clears throat> graduating at 20, I came up with... Swim. Wisconsin? That was like, no, CCNY. The CCNY. Be the Beavers, that's oh, right. Oh, yes, right. Having oh, my glasses on and being able to see from here to there, I also said swim. Okay. <laughs> now, if, could they swim through or would they be stopped? <laughs> or, well, you know, wade through. It's all adorable, oh, is he but could do they one do of that? Those? I'm trying to go for the truth, but they could scuba dive through. Scuba dive? That's right. Somebody would stop them See, if I they were swimming. I do a lot of shoaling and scuba diving, James. Oh, you so do? I, yeah. Yeah, where do you do that, sailor? In the Navy. Uh, in the Navy. Catalina. Catalina. Channel Islands. <laughs> right. You do that. Scuba Beverly diving. Hills. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Elaine, we're up to you. Okay, I said swim. Okay, there's no one for Bobby's up the floor. Wait a minute, that wins the game for Bob. It's four to three. What do you have? Yeah. Okay. Now, you, you know, you have two games to play. Here's your first one. You'll come back a little bit later for the second one. Okay, we'll see you a little bit later. While we're spinning the needle off, we're going to spin a message or two just for you. Bunch of guys there want to see after the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's Bob Flugel for the first shot of here, the big super match. Let's find out how much money he's going to win. We'll begin by pointing out to one and all that we polled a studio audience in this very room not too long ago and said, write down your best answer to this. Blank believe. Now, Bob, if you give us the answer they wrote down most often, you get $500. Now, if you say the answer that they wrote second most frequently, $250, and for matching the third, $100. Three of our six stars can assist, but don't just call out capriciously. Look them to their faces, study their eyes. Okay. If you see a glimmer of intelligence, call on that star. But if they're avoiding your direct eyeball contact, do not call on that person. Do you understand? I understand. Okay. Uh. <laughs> yeah. You do that. He's trying to put you off. Bill, and you won't let it. Are you unsure about the names? No, no, not Bill. Oh, you want Bill? Yes, all right. He wants me. Don't take mine. What is that? Yes, a make believe. Make believe. And Robert, please. I believe. I believe. All right. Let's take Joyce. He likes my hair. He likes your hair, sure. Do you believe? Do you believe? 
Okay. I have, do you believe, I believe, and make believe are the three that they've given you. At this point, you have an option of choosing one of those or perhaps giving us one of your own. No, I'll take make believe. Yeah. Make believe. Okay, here we go for make believe. Let's see if we've got it under the $100 number. Do you believe? All right. Make believe. Do you, that was the one that Joyce gave you. And they all booed. Yes. <laughs> Let's take a look at the $250 number. Make believe it is. Congratulations, Bob. You got $250. I believe. John says it's going to be I believe. Okay, slide it. I believe it is. Now, Bob, you got $250 multiplied by 10 is 2,500. That's the least you can play for. However, if you get a lucky spin of the star wheel, you could double that and play for $5,000. Go up there and have a go at it, and good luck to you. We'll all root for a double. Oops, wait a minute, Bob. I found the knob that was missing. Whoa, the missing knob. I found the knob. It was is right under the knob stairs there. Two knobs. Now we've got two knobs here. Can I borrow them? And they're a perfectly the matched pair earring. of knobs. Yeah, I could make earrings out of them. Wouldn't that be something? I can think of something just you could make out. I hear my ear like that for the rest of the show. And then if anybody wants to talk to me, they can just talk into my ear that way, you see? Okay, here we're all going to root for a double. Very, bro. <laughs> Stand right there in the black dude down there. Good luck to you. Here it is, worth $5,000. It says, put on your blank. Let's put on your blank. <laughs> put on right. your She's girl. finally finished, Bob. If you give us the answer that she has on the card, we, we give you $5,000. What do you say to that? Put on your Easter bonnet. Put on your Easter bonnet. You know, if this show plays someplace and repeats during Easter week, you're going to be a hero. All right. He says, put on your Easter bonnet, Joyce. Do you know that's Elaine? I wore this wig so she called you Joyce. Oh, I beg your pardon. Did you? Oh. Say that? She's what not so now? dumb. Very good. She gives an answer. No, oh. Elaine. Uh, do you know, I really had that on the tip of my tongue, but I said, put on your clothes. Mm. Clothes. Do you really think of Easter bonnet? Look at that tip of her tongue. Here's the answer. Look at that. There it is. There it is. Right there. He had it there. Okay. Now, Bob, you got $250. Remember, you got one more game to play, so let's bring on uh, Anita one more time here and find out who's going to win this. All right, Anita, welcome back. Since you're in that seat, we're going to ask you to go first, A or B. A again. A it is. All right. Ready? Larry said, I think my doctor used to be a farmer. He Gosh. just took out my tonsils with a blank. <laughs> I think my doctor used to be a farmer. He just took out my tonsils with a blank. Do you know you can take tonsils out in about 30 seconds? I can. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you're ready, Rob. Larry said, I think my doctor used to be a farmer. He just took out my tonsils with a... Shovel. <laughs> with a shovel. You've never been on a farm, have you? Either in Italy, in Ireland, or Japan, or America. <coughs> what do you say to that, Robert? Boing. I was making it before. You were... Boing. I said, uh, pitchfork. Pitchfork is good. Thank you. All right, go. I have, if everyone will get this picture in their mind when I see it, you'll know that this is a perfect answer. A milking machine. Ah, ah, wonderful. Goes in there, it goes... Yep. Snaps them. That's how they get them out in 30 seconds. Oh, God. <laughs> you know what I Tell think? Me you're what? Thing, isn't it? Tell me your Tell me. What do you think? I think you look ridiculous. No. That's my okay. microphone. We're getting the speed-up signal. Oh. Folks, we're getting the oh, speed-up okay, signal. Uh, she wants to know where Elaine gets her training bras. <laughs> Okay. What is it now? Oh, the answer. Hello, sweetheart. That's our producer. Uh, See, that, that's all that dental work. Sickle. Sickle. Okay. All right. What do you say, Ms. Elaine, honey? I said pitchfork. Cool. Pitchfork. Yeah. Yeah. Smart girl, pitchfork over here. Pitchfork. Smart pops. Smarty Lane. What do you got to say? I have to show why her answer is right. Shovel. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, we're getting right. choreographed okay. on the show? What is so that's one for her. Holy natural. Very Steps. good, Anita. All right, you stand by for yours. Now you stand by for this. <laughs> Thank you, one and all. Goodbye. Speak into my ears. Today's consolation prizes are beautiful bath flosses and polished satin chrome with natural onyx inserts and dependable valvet system. Polar flosses, the tradition of quality and craftsmanship. And zero shirts, the old and classic design featuring the celebrated purest button-down, luxurious fabrics, distinctive pattern, zero. Nothing is obvious except the quality. And a grill and Eskimo pie. Very fresh vanilla ice cream covered with special chocolate flavor coating. Eskimo pie, refreshing and delicious any time for an old fresh treat. And blue luster shampoo and blue luster plus carpet shampoo and grease cutters and brightness to remove ground in dirt and grime. And an 11 piece manicure set and the only solution, new family health concept, one conditioner for both hair and skin is the only solution worth trying. And from Hawaiian Tropic comes an attractive beach mat and Hawaiian Tropic natural tanning lotions and oils. Hawaiian Tropic, the tan of the arms. And a frying pan and Hollywood Sassflower Oil. Higher in Hollywood Sassflower and other oils, Hollywood Sassflower Oil contains no cholesterol. From Hollywood Foods. Get ready to match the stars from Charlie's Angels, David Doyle, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Phyllis Diller, Brett Travelina, and George Bulebach as we play the star studded big money match game. And now, here's the star of match game, Gene Rayburn. For my first number, <laughs> you got a good bunch out there, John? And there's a grand bunch out there in television land, as they say. <laughs> and hey, we got a good group up here. What do you say, sailor? What's that say there? Blue Moon Saloon. Blue Moon Saloon. That's where we're, we're going. going. I, I, I see. All right. All right now, uh, Mike, uh, would you step down here, or if you would please, to this uh, blue dot? And as soon as you get off there, we'll turn the merry-go-round around. And uh, bring the star wheel in, if you please, and continue. Mike has won $250. That means the least he'll play for is 10 times that amount, or $2,500. And uh, we're going to give him a chance to spin the star wheel to double his money and play for 5000 instead of $2,500. Uh, $2, so good luck to you. We'll all root for a double. Here we go. Okay, Michael. Let's go. Nothing, Joyce. Michael, Just represents a great third deal of money to him. This week. That's right. And it's your last. <laughs> Say 5,000 fish, but don't worry about it. $5,000 at stake. All right. Please concentrate. Yes, Please. good luck. <laughs> Double decker blank. Double decker blank. Well, Joyce wrote down the first thing that came into her mind on that one, and that's usually the best way to go here. Let's see if it works this time, and if you've got any ESP going with Joyce Boulefant. What do you say to that, Mike? Double-decker bus. Bus. Well, you're not a New Yorker. That's really kind of a New York answer. I can't answer. believe it. I'm so embarrassed the third time. The third time? About what? A double... Uh, I, not being able to get anything right. I should... That's what I thought of right away. Oh, yes. Again. That's what I wrote. Ah, I got it! Right. All right, as soon as it stops, uh, Mike, you can get aboard. Welcome back, Shirley. Hi, thank we you. We missed you. Oh, I missed this place. <laughs> <laughs> now, he's very excited because he has $5,250. And we're very happy about that. Now, Shirley, let's begin the second and final game and ask you to choose A or B. B, please. B, please. She said, B, please. <laughs> uh, B, please. <laughs> Gary said, 
that pirate must be an athlete. Instead of a peg leg, he's got a blink. <laughs> Did you hear about the pirate who had two wooden legs? No, what about the pirate who had two wooden legs? He burned to the ground. <laughs> and and you, you know what he said when he got to the ground? No, Fred, what did he say when he got to the ground? Welcome to Fantasy Island. <laughs> <laughs> Well, remember, it's a, it's a round one question, and there's blue. All right. Gary said that pirate must be an uh, athlete. Instead of a peg leg, he's got a... A cast? Did that you hear me say sense. athlete was the operative word? Yes. Well, you know, that, they get hurt, you know, football players. Oh, you mean, yeah. I see, he broke the leg and he had a cast yeah. on it. All right, that was her reasoning on it. What did you say, uh, Dave? Well, I said instead of a peg leg, he had a pole vault. A pole vault. There it is. That's where the Polish people give their money. But I'm That's where the Polish people give their money in the vault. <laughs> oh, he's cute. I'm kind of enamored with Fred. Oh. I go in and out, but a lot of the time I'm really kind of crazy about him. Ah, uh, Polish vault. <laughs> That's two or is it pole vault? You stole it from him, right? Or vice versa? Of course, because I couldn't get anything. Back. Ben, like in a baseball game. Oh, and he didn't yes. want to show that answer to me. Back. Pole a vault bat. is better. A bat. A bat? bat? bat would, you know, a baseball player's bat would be the closest simulation of a peg leg. Are you trying <laughs> to convince me? Yeah. <laughs> See, it's a, I'll never believe it. The pirate must be an athlete. You get it. You got no, stamped. No, because he had a sneaker. Instead of a peg leg, he's got a sneaker. Uh-huh. Nobody understood this question. Well, I, I thought it was a perfectly understandable question, and being that I answered the last one on the last show, so, well, I'm just, I said baseball bat. Baseball bat, yes. It was a what, they, what, what they were answering here was any sporting influence, like a nine iron, a, a baseball bat, a tennis racket, anything. A pole vault. A pole vault, certainly. That would have been funny, a tennis racket. Substitute the peg leg a for A pogo what stick. A pogo stick would be good. What do you say? I Somebody. like tennis racket. I wish I'd thought of it. I was thinking about pirates and water in Boston and crew. So I said an oar. An oar would be, it would all be right. handier. That's right. I all right. hated that question. Now, let's see if we have one of equal difficulty <laughs> for Mike. Good, no, it wasn't good. Old Oscar the reporter is really old. Oh. <laughs> I don't want any of your half hearted attempts here to respond. I mean, if you want to do it, do you want to do it or don't you want to do it? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Last chance. Old Oscar the reporter is really old. Oh. That cleared out your sinuses, didn't yeah. it, sweetheart? Yeah. The first fire he ever covered was the burning of blank. <laughs> Old Oscar the reporter. Ready, David? <laughs> Old Oscar the reporter is really old. The first fire he ever covered was the burning of... Rome. Yeah. Rome, Rome. Rome, that was a long time ago. You bet it was, baby. All right, there's one for The burning of. You know what? I'm really embarrassed. You know who Shirley looks like? Who? Not anybody famous. She looks like a wonderful roommate I had whose name was Marsha Rowley <laughs> about 106 years ago. <laughs> that's what, she looks that's like. what brought it to That's what brought it to me. Oh, and I'm, I, oh, long this, before this that. Back oh, this, this goes lovely. back. I mean, I was there. It was the burning of the bush. The burning <laughs> of the bush. <laughs> That's really going back to the You and the roommate went way, way back. <laughs> yes, indeed. What was her name? Marsha Roby. Hi, Marsha. That's sweet. Yeah. You know what Marsha said? What? Come, Brett, come to the balcony and watch the burning of Rome. That's all <laughs> right. <laughs> Old Oscar the reporter was there and covered the burning of. Uh, but he didn't completely cover it up. He didn't? No, it was Rome. It was Rome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. That's for him. What do you got for old Mike, so, let me old just, Fred? Let me just tune this up here. Yeah. Rome. Don't do that. Rome. 
Two speed readers it. talking at dinner. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> he is. I have the definitive answer. Would Good. you please read the last part of that? Or the uh, first old part? Oscar, the old reporter, really old. First fire you ever covered was the burning of... Brett's bra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, four to nothing in favor of Mike. Round two coming up in a moment or so. Right now, this for you. Here we go to round two. Mike, your head will ask you to go first. A. A. Two people play. Joyce. Yes. And Brett. Are you ready, ladies? The Dolly Sisters. <laughs> weird Willie is so weird, he doesn't get out of bed feet first. He gets out of bed blank first. He's no fool. <laughs> right in answer there. It's weird when Willie is so weird, he doesn't get out of bed. <laughs> I can't answer this. Weird really so weird that they got out of bed feet first. <laughs> you don't play. I know, I know. You, know, you love it. <laughs> Anytime you're ready. Here we go, Mike. Weird Willie so weird he doesn't get out of bed feet first, he gets out of bed blank first. Head first. Head first? I would think that would be logical. Mike said head first. What do you say to that? Well, all the ladies in the audience know what breech birth is. Yep. I said butt first. Butt first. <laughs> What came to your mind? I had a child who was born breech birth. He said head first. Head first. first. All right. There's another one for Mike. He's got five. Now, Shirley, that means, means you need five to tie and six to win. So here we go. Ed has the world's most useless job. What is it? No, He's... I have the world's most useless job. <laughs> But not for long. <laughs> Are you quite finished? Yes, darling. Big mouth? Yes, darling. It is the world's most useless job. He's a lifeguard at a blank. <laughs> world's most useless job. A lifeguard at a blank. I can't think of an answer. What's new? A winning. <laughs> They really are friends. Your, I mean, I Wait want... That. That's very good. I want... That's very good. With them as friends, who needs enemies? Any, I want to think of a... I want to put, so do something that's a winning answer for everybody. Here we go. Shirley, Ed has the world's most useless job. He's a lifeguard at a blank. Bathtub? Lifeguard at a bathtub. Yeah. Bathtub. Well... Really I thought of that. It's been splendid having you on the show, Shirley. <laughs> what do you have? I said a mirage. A mirage. Yes. That's the thing you see when you're in the desert. Did you see the water there. on the okay. highway and there's no water at all? all right. Now, you've got to match all of the other stars, Shirley, to stay in the game and achieve a tie. What have you got for Shirley? Oh, Shirley, I'm sorry. I really wrecked my brain, which is not too a hard a thing to do. But I said sandbox. Sandbox. So that means Mike wins another game. What do the rest of you have? We're going to say goodbye to Shirley. Many gifts will be coming your way from the Thank you very much. Thank you for being Thank you. Goodbye, Shirley. I'll spin her off and spin a message for you. All right, here we go with Mike. Second time around. Now, Mike has a pretty good bundle already, $5,250, right? And he could add to those winnings right now with uh, his go at the super match here. Let's see how it goes. We polled the studio audience not too long ago and said, write down your best answer to this. Blank cuff. Remember, 500 for the most popular, 250 for the second most popular, and 100 for the third most popular. Whom do you want? Charles. Off the cuff. There's one. Brett. I thought it was. Oh, good. That's good. The last one. French cuff. 
Uh, French cuff? Oh. Oh, don't pick up. Oh, gosh, I mother. helped him before. What? Oh, she's just so good. <laughs> <joy. laughs> I'm sorry. Are you nervous of what I'm going to say? Handcuff. Right. Yay! 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 So you have handcuff and belly. Off the cuff. Yeah. And French cuffs. You want one of those or one of your own? I've got to go with Charles. Off the cuff. Oh. No, no, I Off think it's cuff. Cuff. I think the cuff. The audience yeah. thinks you're wrong. See they you applauded the most loudly for handcuffs. Man, handcuff. Yeah. Uh, all right. right. Stand right there. Little dot. Let's find out what we've got up there. Off the cuff is what he says he wants. Let's give it to him. Is it under the $100 response? All French right, cuff. Now I want that boo taken back. <laughs> <laughs> Take Ooh, back your boo. No, no, it's got to be oob. Oob. That's oob. right. That's the opposite of boo. Right. Let's see what we got oh, out of the $250 response. Off the cuff. Again, Mike. Another $250. Okay, I really think the audience is going to be right this time. I think, uh, Be prepared to stand up, Joyce. Is right. Let's see it, and get please. Kissed. Yes, it is. Okay. okay. Now, again, the least you'll play for is two thousand five hundred dollars. But again, you're going to spin the wheel and see if you can double it and play for five thousand dollars as you did last time. Good luck to you. Here we go. Just slid by. Well. All right. Phyllis who? Phyllis just. Oh, I... <laughs> Phyllis in. <laughs> Stand right there. Face this way. Now, Phyllis, this time you will write your response, and he'll give a verbal response after you sure. put your answer in that little slot there. Here it is. Wasn't it? No, I guess. It's a Drink blank. Drink blank. Drink blank. That music makes me very nervous. It does. Would you turn the music down for Miss Diller, please? Oh, I, tense moment. Just put it in the slot. Put it in the, the slot. Way you... All right, now she's finished. Oh, boy. Mike, if you give us the answer that she has written on the card, we give you $2,500 additional. What do you say? Water. Drink water, he says. Uh, you wouldn't say that? Uh, Probably a bunch of... What nobody they say? would say that, right? Drink milk? I would! You drink it all? Water. Water? Well, he's a fish person. Well, he's a fish person, naturally. You drink the water that the fish have no. been swimming uh, around in? No, <laughs> bottled water. Oh, you drink bottled water. That's ever W.C. I mean, Fields. Yes. Did, did you? There was, a, uh, there, yes. was a, there was a flood in Beverly Hills today. There was? Yeah, a Perrier truck sprung a leak. <laughs> <laughs> he says drink water will match you for the $2,500. Oh, now, boy. Now you have to show and tell and... Uh, I know. Well, if he'll split it with me, I'll say water. Aha! so but right now this message for you well fortunately we have a little time left over and uh, those people in the studio audience can have a chance to win some money so uh, uh joyce yes. would you write down an answer to this please yard blank y-a-r-d blank and i'll go down here and call on someone in the studio audience oh <laughs> all right Let's find out who we got down here. <laughs> What's your name? Bertha Israelian. Where are you from, Bertha? Canada. What are you doing in uh, Los Angeles? On a bus tour. Is a bus outside? <laughs> no. Are you enjoying it here? Sure are. What's the most interesting thing you've done? Oh, I don't know everything. <laughs> <laughs> 
I almost called on her. <laughs> That'll teach you to reach. No, Bertha, you give us an answer to this, and if you if you match uh, Joyce, you get fifty dollars. I, I have the cash in my hand. Yard blank. What do you say to that? Yard blank. Yard stick. Yard stick. Yes or no? Yard stick. <laughs> Fred. Fred, this one is yours. Blank thrower. T H R O W E R. Blank thrower. Let's see who else we've got down the line here. Yeah. Where is this lady from? I'm from Los Angeles right now, but originally from Vienna, Austria. You don't sound like you're from Los Angeles or Austria. <laughs> okay. What's your name? My name is Peppy Vine. Peppy Vine? When did you change your name? About 25 years ago when I got married. Okay. How would you fill that blank in blank thrower? Stone thrower. Stone thrower, Fred? Well, I said ball thrower. <laughs> ball thrower. All right, so that's all the money we're going to give away. Uh, we thank you for uh, your kind participation. <laughs> Join us next time. Some of our contestants will receive Panamax's model 240D slide projector. Comes with cord style handset control, super bright quartz halogen lamp system, and computer designed optics with pinpoint images from Panamax. And from Arrow, this fireplace insert. Turn your fireplace into a furnace. Efficient air tight, circulates heat by means of a large built in drawer. Features decorative glass door and energy efficient home accessory from Arrow. And the ASCO disc camera with class F2.8 all glass lens focusing down to 18 inches, motorized film advance, automatic sensor, electronic flash and fully crystal grip from ASCO. And Heath Bits of Brickle adds a great almond toffee flavor to just about every dessert, especially Bits of Brickle ice cream pie. And Maximum Strength Cherokee Plus, a new formula for head colds and cough. Dr. John's Cherokee Plus clears nasal passages, dries runny nose, and controls cough used as directed. to match the stars, Bill Anderson, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Barbara Rose, from Vegas, Bart Cleverman, and Joyce Dudemont, as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game PM. And now, here's the star of Match Game PM, Gene Raven. Hi, John. Thank you for joining us here on Match Game PM. You're going to have a good time because they've opened up the lunatic asylum and Marcello. released some of the buongiorno. Hey, would you say hello to Nancy McCullough and Doug Smith, please? Yeah. Welcome. Good luck to both of you. Let's get acquainted. Doug, please tell us about yourself. Uh, I'm a single male student. <laughs> Good. Unmarried. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm from Provo, Utah. I just graduated from Brigham Young University. All right. And uh, currently I'm a law student at Whittier College School of Law, studying uh, corporate entertainment law. Corporate right. entertainment law. You that's very difficult. Right what is this if I may ask? Uh, that's uh, fraternity pin intercollegiate nights. All right. Okay. Good luck, Doug. Nancy, tell us about yourself, please. I'm <laughs> now, wait a minute. I'm so nervous. You had a funny line? No. 
No, take a deep breath. <gasps> Give her a no, baby breath. I exhale. You have to exhale occasionally, you know. I'm married. I you know that. <laughs> you are. <laughs> I can tell, and she's married to me. <laughs> okay. And? You live in? Huntington Beach. That's right. Yeah. See, she's got it right so far. She's all right. <laughs> you live in Huntington Beach and you're married. What's his name? <laughs> oh, now listen. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Sam? George. Dave. Dave. He's right. Dave, Dave. Dave. I knew I, it was in my head. All right. I'm sorry, sweetheart. Uh, how long you've been married? Five years. Five years. <laughs> Dave, oh, have I got a girl for you? <laughs> you have any children? I have two girls. Now, don't. Oh. I don't want to hear about their names. Oh, I. Do you know yes, their names? Carrie's four and Megan's two. Oh, well, good that's right. good. See, she had a marvelous recovery. Where is what's his name? Better. He's the third one. Oh, well, there he is. Hey, now, I want you to remember, oh. Nancy. Yes. He's the one with the mustache. Just remember that. <laughs> Dave is the one with the mustache. Right. Okay, now here in Match Game TM, you'll each have three opportunities to match as many of our stars as you possibly can. Now, the one who's done that most often at the end of the third round will be the winner, and that person will go on to play the big money super match, which can pay off over $20,000. <laughs> Let's go, Doug. Could I have A, please? Doug says he wants A. And A says, the chef said to his wife, I've got good news and bad news. The bad news is, your mother was just flattened by a steamroller. Oh, golly. The good news is, I've made her into a blank. <laughs> the chef said to his wife, this is Doug's question. The chef said to his wife, I've got good news and close, bad news. So the bad news is, your mother was flattened by a steamroller. She died. The good news is, I've made her into a blank. A crepe? Okay. Whoa. Doug came up with the answer. Have you got it? Crep? Yes. I want to ask Doug a question. Go ahead. When you were in school in Provo, Utah, what radio station did you listen to? Oh, um, KFTM. <laughs> Country Western. You own it. I own that radio station. <laughs> I also am going to make Doug mad. I said pancake. That's uh, is that a crepe? No, no, is that it's not. no uh, crep That's is rolled up. But a pancake is not. It's just flattened out. What have you got there? He owns a radio station. I don't own the coat I'm wearing. That's right. I don't Where have I gone wrong? She reminds me of me because we're both shy and tired. Isn't the similarity? Right. I said I made her into a gingerbread person. Gingerbread person? So that's two. She's looking for a crepe Suzette or anything like that. For this show, now, honey. first of all, look at Jug. Does he look like a guy that could come up with an answer crepe? No. Do I look like a guy that can no, come up with the answer to crap? I said crap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> crap. So that's a match. We're done. <laughs> All right. All right. Good news is I've made her into a crap. Now you're going to see why I was fighting for Bill's pancake. 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 Yeah. Yep. Try. Waffle. A waffle. <laughs> A crap is not rolled You can out. do no wrong here. Joyce, what do you got? one of those women from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> well, after he slid her under the door, up, he then rolled her up, made a It'll roast out of, out of her. A roll roast. <laughs> so Doug picks up one. Nancy, listen to this. Al said, I am never going back to that rotten hospital. They're so money hungry, they even have coin-operated blanks. <laughs> Here we go. Al said, I'm never going back to that rotten hospital. They're so money-hungry, they even have coin-operated blanks. Bedpans? Bedpans. Yeah. 
She is hoping you are going to say bedpans. Oh, I wish I had thought of bedpans. You hadn't thought of that. No. What did you think Can of, Can I change Bill? my answer? No, too late for that. Nice <laughs> try. I said operating rooms. Operating rooms? Put a nickel in? Or a quarter or whatever? Yes. Well, I just can't get rooms. over the similarity between us. It just... Uh, actually, sure. Actually, it's surprising. Yes, of course. Surprising to me, say, too. Uh, I said coin-operated nurses. All right. I said transfusion. Transfusion. So well, far, yours is the best, Nancy. It sure is. <laughs> and these are the experts, Barbara. They even have coin-operated what? Bedpan. Oh, yeah. Now, Bart, I know you have your clack out here. Now, you know, I, I made fun of uh, Barbara's answer because I thought I looked at that lovely lady and I said, she's not, she's not going to say that. Is that, that sweet pants? little girl going to say that? Uh -huh. And she I did. said, she you said never bed pants. know. <laughs> well, I said beds. I figured yes. it would be beds. You know, bed <laughs> we'll get together after the show. Right. You're Joyce, not supposed to mention Show us your bed pants. <laughs> Depends. You need just one more to win? No, no okay. just one more to go ahead. It's the first round. Sorry. Yeah. Bed pan. So it's two to one in the first round. Now it's for you. Three, two, one. Here we go. All right, let's go to round two. Nancy, you're ahead two to one. Let's go to you first. Okay, A, please. A for her. A. 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 They just published the world's thinnest book. It's called My Accomplishments in Office, and it's written by blank. Oh, he's such a bad person. They just published the world's thinnest book. It's called My Accomplishments in Office. It's written by... Nixon. There may be others to whom this might apply in this day and age. Check the spelling of the country schools, how they taught the country board to spell. Oh, you've been peeking again, <laughs> haven't you? Uh-huh. All right, I will. Let's see your card, Bill. Well, <laughs> I don't know. You're going to insult anybody with this. I mean, a lot of people could be insulted. I said R.M. Nixon. R.M. Nixon. <laughs> Nixon. Well, it was a small school in the country. Well, that's I, all right. I, I'm sorry. I'm that's a match. That's all she carries small about. Presidency, you know? Right. Spelling doesn't count here. With whom we have had an off... Well, I can't go into that. There were so many good choices. I didn't... Nixon was one, but Mr. Carter, with the help of his mother, is another one. Right. <laughs> they don't sew that old lady's mouth up. I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> Yes. Oh, oh. Chuck. <laughs> Charles, why are you so weeping? Because everyone has forgotten. <laughs> Everyone's forgotten they what? They have forgotten the wonderful work of a great, and may I say a truly great man, Chester A. R. <laughs> yes, of course. Brilliant uh, first lady, the very beautiful Miss Maybell Arthur. <laughs> Maybell. I thought it was B. Arthur all along. <laughs> no, that was the daughter. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, all right. What My inclination would be to put to Nixon, but the truth is he actually did quite a bit in office. I mean, he really, despite his foolishness, he did. But the person who really did zilch but fall down in the snow was Gerald Ford. <laughs> Gerald Ford. <laughs> So it's three to one at this point, and he now pardoned Doug. Nixon. <laughs> Here's a little riddle for you. Oh, good. Ready? Yeah. For a little riddle. Why did the cannibal eat Dean Martin? Oh. I shall tell you why. Because he likes his meat blanked. <laughs> Here we go, Doug. A little rule for you. Why did the cannibal eat Dean Martin? The answer, because he likes his meat blanked. Um, mari mar mar marinated? Mar marinated. There you go. That's it. Thank you. Isn't that the same thing? He likes his meat a la marinade. What do you say? I spelled marinated. M-A-R-E. Marinated. N-A-T-E-D. That's perfectly okay. All right. I said pickled or marinated. Pickled or marinated. Okay, Doug, you picked up another one. 
Just a minute, I have, a, I have a several card answer here. I said marinated in bourbon, or is it vodka? Or maybe gin? <laughs> One of them. There it is, marinated in bourbon. That's all we need from you, and that's perfect. I think the spelling is correct. What have you got for Is it my turn? Yes. Charles doesn't play this time, though. No. I said he yeah. liked his, uh, his meat stewed. Stewed is a good response, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. No, I you meant marinated? I meant, I thought that's what this was, but that's, I mean, I don't cook, you know. What did you say? I said sauteed. Well, I that thought, could be good, that's that fried. Isn't that marinated? No. no. no sauteed is lightly fried, no. which he always is. You're right. <laughs> lightly, what have you got? I'm sorry, I thought well, that's what Well, he's also that always stewed. I said stewed. Stewed is good. <laughs> All right. So the score is tied three to three, and we go to the final round, round three. Nancy went first last time, so Doug, you go first this time. Could I have A, please? Yes, you may, sir. Thank you. A, a says this. Jessica said it's terrible being married to a baseball umpire. <laughs> You're an eager bunch. <laughs> In the middle of the night, he wakes me up and yells, blank. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. It's terrible being married to a baseball umpire. In the middle of the night, he wakes me up and he yells, You're out. You're out. All right. He said, You're out. What do you say to that, Barbara? I said, You're out. You're out. All right. Four for him. Five is you're out. That's five for him. Joyce? Take three bases. Take three bases. <laughs> You sure know a lot about baseball, don't you? With all those kids in the house, you got to learn something about baseball by now. Now, Nancy, here's the way it is. You need two to tie. However, you match all three, you win it. Brett, Charles, and Bart play. The rest of you lay out, please. We do? The nightclub owner said to the new comic, Hey, I just ordered ten dozen roses for you, kid. If you do good, I send the flowers to your dressing room. If you do bad, I send them to your blank. Ryan, you got the idea, buddy. Hello, Nancy. The nightclub owner said a new comic. I just ordered ten dozen roses for you, kid. If you do good, I send the flowers to your dressing room. If you do bad, I send them to your blank. To your grave? Grave. Okay. She said grave. This may be a little difficult here. If someone... Now, is there going to be a big argument about grave and other words that we all know and love so well, like funeral? Funeral is a man. Back to the store. I want Italian. Funerale. Funerale. The score is now tied five to five, Nancy. If you match Bart, you win the game. What have you got? What's it worth to you? This little lady has a chance to win a really big bundle of money. Good. No We're going to have two audience <laughs> matches for you here. Everything you win will be multiplied by 10, and good luck to you. Thank Let's you. go with the first one. We polled the studio audience and said, write down your best answer to this. Blank fault. $500 for the most popular answer, $250 for the second most popular, and $100 for the third most popular. Now, as you call on the celebrities, call on the ones who are looking at you in bright, eager anticipation. The others don't know nothing. Well, Bart saved my life just now, so, Bart? No fault, as in no fault insurance. All right. Okay. You like that? Barbara? How about the old earthquake fault? The earthquake no, fault. No, she doesn't mean the earthquake fault. She means that place. What's the name of that San place? San Andreas, Andreas Fault. She means Thank the San Andreas you. Fault. Yes. All right. San Andreas Fault is her is response. Not for the, oh, okay. Yeah. I'll that. And it's, it's your fault. fault. Whom did you call on? Brett. Brett. Brett, have you got one? Yes. Yeah, it's your, your fault. fault. Oh, it's your fault. All right. So not you have right. it's your fault, the San Andreas Fault, and no uh, fault. No fault. 
Those are the three. You want one asphalt of those or one of your own? Asphalt is good. <laughs> no, no, didn't take asphalt. Don't pay any attention to him, dear. He's trying the to San make Andreas it. San Andreas fault. You want that? Okay. That was Barbara's answer. Let's see if it's up there. Sorry, May dear. we see Isn't the $100 you meant, number? Barbara. San Andreas. Got it right off the bat. What's that in the next one, please? No, no fault. fault. All right, there's Bart's answer. It's not mine. What do you think's on top? It's all your fault. Okay, slide it. Your fault. Now, you've got $100. That means the least you can play for is 10 times that amount, or $1,000. But you got one more audience match, and you could win more with this one. May we see it, please? Blank Fitzgerald. All right. Okay, Bill? Ella Fitzgerald. Yeah. Ella Fitzgerald is here. Hey, Brett? Oh, a wonderful actress. Geraldine Fitzgerald. Geraldine Fitzgerald. Perhaps not the most popular now, but a wonderful actress. You also. want Joyce? Joyce. Barry Fitzgerald. Barry Fitzgerald. <laughs> Ella Fitzgerald. Geraldine Fitzgerald. One of those or one of your own? Ella. Yeah. Ella. All right, let's see if Ella Fitzgerald is up there. Let's take a look at the $100 number. F. Scott. Zelda. That was the oh, one I threw out. Zelda, that's right. right. Oh, yeah. His daughter, Zelda. All right, let's take a look at the next one, please. John. John Fitzgerald. Who's that? He was a progenitor of our late president, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Ah. All right, maybe we see the top one, please. Ella! Ella! All right, now, Nancy. Another $500 means another $5,000. Added to the previous amount gives you a pot of $6,000 to shoot for. But you're going to spin the star wheel. And if you get a lucky spin, that means you double it to $12,000. Kind of an oddball number, but we wish you well, and we'll all root for a double, right? Here we go. Are you ready, Miss Joyce? Third time's a charm. Yes. Here it is. Okay, good Third luck. Third time's a charm, We have one Joyce. card left. This is your last card. It's yes. the last question. Blank in. That's I-N-N. I-double N. Blank in. You got it? I-N-N. -N. Now, Joyce has written her answer. If you give us the same one she has on the card, we give you $12,000. What do you say? I can only think of one thing, and it's Holiday Inn. <laughs> That's a good answer, right? The audience thinks it's a super answer. Is that a good answer? Now, wait a minute. Joyce is writing the answer. Let's I not forget. I hate to point this out, dear, but the last couple times <laughs> Joyce has done this. Right in the dumper, boy. Yes, she I'm ain't done you. too well. Oh. But maybe her, Look, maybe your luck is. I don't even have any more cards. That's your last card. Well, what did you put on the card? She says holiday Gee, you inn. You know, woman. I went to school back east. Yes. And they have so many different kinds of inns. They have the George Washington Crossing Inn. Yes. Ramada Inn. Ramada, Ramada, Ramada Inn. Right. They've got a lot of inns. Ida Wee Motel. Wayside Inn. But since it's near the holidays, I wrote holidays. We're all very happy for Nancy McCullough, who has $12,600. You do remember the name of your husband. Oh, it's Dave. Dave, yes, of course. Dave is very happy, too.
Join us next time for Match Game PM. Gene Rayburn here. Goodbye. Charboil, America's finest gas grill. More fun for you and your family. It's outdoor cooking at its best with the convenience of gas. Charboil. And Polyglycoat Sound Shield for the noisy underside of your car, not an undercoating. Polyglycoat is a sound shield and new car dealers only. And American Tourist is strong, lightweight luggage. Good looking protection to keep your clothes looking good. American Tourist is the only way to travel. And the new Proctor Silex Lady Light Self Cleaning Super Steam Iron. It irons out the problems you had with ironing. The Proctor Silex Lady Lights. And a seven piece performer gourmet cutlery set with extra sharp strong stainless steel blades and ebony wheat wood handles. Just wash to save from Washington Ford. And Turtle Extra Car Wax, extra easy, extra durable, extra brilliant. Turtle Extra Car Wax and liquid or new soft paste. And a bakeware set a new fresh break, the 100% fresh air refresher. You get fresh break and pop a pack of freshness in your car, camper, van, or home. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game PM, a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. Get ready to match the stars from our magazine, Gary Cullen. Brett Summers, Charles Dustin Riley, from the It Is Enough, Susan Richardson, Richard Paul, and from Flo, George Fulevon, as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game. And now, here's the star of Match Game, Gene Rayburn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I thought we had one cowboy per show is all they allow here. That's a yeah, hopper. Off on you, you know. Does? Just being around macho dudes. Yeah. Macho. Right. Yeah. And what's your specialty? Uh, <laughs> roping, uh, bronc busting, or what do you do? Dancing. Sitting on a veranda drinking <laughs> Oh. Is this too white? <laughs> it is sedentary. Yes. Yeah. Is this too white? Is this too white? Is this too white? If it's too white, I'll take it off. Take it off. Now, wait a minute. Where's the bottom? I think, you're, I think your shirt oh, yeah, is too blue. White. I think and your shirt is All I want to tell you is I'd like to buy an ice cream sandwich. <laughs> Look at this. Oh. Oh, is mine too brown? No. Uh, <laughs> yes, too yeah. brown. Too brown. Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, Isn't this scandalous? <laughs> How do you do? Well, let's inject a little dignity into it now. Now, Russell Clark, please refresh our memories about your whereabouts and what you do for a living and all that. I'm a student at Cal State Northridge, working on a master's degree in special education in the area of deafness, and I'm an interpreter there for deaf students. Can you sign? Yeah. And can you do it fast? Yeah. I was amazed at how fast it was done in the Broadway show, Children of a Lesser God. She could, she could sign faster than one could speak. She was just wonderful. Well, Phyllis Freelich was excellent yeah. in the part. She's a Phyllis Freelich, yeah. Okay, good luck to you, sir. And Jesse, tell us about you again. Well, I'm from God's Country, which is in Oregon. Right now, they're having a little bit of fallout. But, yes. Uh, <clears throat> the I'm whole pretty... <laughs> world is here about I'm... Oregon's fallout. But we're down here on vacation, and seeing all of our children, we're here to meet us, so we're very happy. How about many children do you have? Four. That's nice. All right, here we go. We're in the middle of round two, and uh, mm -hmm. this is the first game, and this is your question, and it reads mm -hmm. as follows. Nancy said, my dog has bad eyes. <laughs> One lonely voice in the wilderness cried out. <laughs> How bad is it? No, How... the other 802 people signed it. It was oh. signed. <laughs> oh. Excellent. I saw it. My dog has bad eyes. Today he mistook my leg for a blank. <laughs> Hit me. Okay, here we go, Russell. Nancy said my dog has bad eyes. Today he mistook my leg for a blank. A fire hydrant. Fire hydrant. Oh. 
<laughs> the bones, Russ. Bones. Fire hydrant or bone, bone are the yeah. two things that immediately leapt into my mind. There may be others. Let's see what we have here. No, no, there are no others. There's only your bone and your fire hydrant. All right, we have those two. studio audience not too long ago and said write down your best answer to this blank letters if you uh, give us the answer they gave us most frequently you will get five hundred dollars now for matching their second most popular answer two hundred fifty dollars for you and if you match a third you get one hundred dollars now some assistance can be provided by the stars and you may choose three of the six one at a time and try and choose the ones who seem to be playing the game who are trying to establish eyeball contact with you. Brett. Love letters. <laughs> All right. I see Susan turned her back on you. That means that was, that was her answer. And now she doesn't have one, you see. So don't call on Susan. Gene, you read it wrong every time. Oh, all right. She has an answer. Call on but no, Susan. No, 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 no. <laughs> that was nice. Joyce. Alphabet letters. Another winner. Yeah. Lovely Miss Beautiful. What's wrong with alphabet letters? That's two. <laughs> and Charles. Before the telephone, obscene letters. <laughs> we have obscene no, letters, true. alphabet letters, and love letters. You want one of those? Right, or maybe you have a better idea in your head. I'll go with right. love letters. I'll go with love letters. All right. All right. Let's see if we have love letters up there somewhere. May we see the $100 number? Yeah. Mail letters. That was, I don't know. That was not too smart a bunch here that day, I'll tell you that. The next one reads... Capital letters. What? Oh, capital so far, letters. we're batting zero here, folks. Oh, but what is going to be small letters? Oh, no, I don't know. I think he's got it. Love letters sounds like a reasonable response to me, don't you think? Yeah! All right, let's hear it for love. Russell, the $500 means the least you'll play for is 10 times that amount, or $5,000. However, you will spin the wheel, and if you get a lucky spin, you'll double it to $10,000. Step up there, and we'll all keep our fingers crossed and hope it does land on a double. Here we go. Yes, oh, double, double. We're looking for a double. <laughs> $10,000 with Gary Collins. Good luck to you, and here we go. Mid blank. That's M-I-D blank. Mid hyphen blank is what we have here. All set there? All right, he's finished. Now, if you give us the answer that he has on the card, you get $10,000. What do you say to that? Midnight? Yeah. Midnight. All right, let's find out what Gary has on the card. Midnight, he says. Just went through a, a psychology course talking about midlife crises. Oh. Midnight! And a four. You have a total of $10,500. Congratulations to you. And now we've got this message for you. <laughs> Jesse and Russell were just embracing here. She's very happy for him, and we're very happy for him. He has $10,500, and now we'll go on to the second and final game, and Jesse, you have a choice of A or B. A. It is for you. Dan said something crazy has happened to my television set. Hmm. I can see Quincy and the wonderful world of Disney at the same time. It's strange. Quincy is performing an autopsy on blank. <laughs> Already, 
Jesse. Dan said something crazy has happened on my television set. I can see Quincy. You've seen that program, haven't you? And the wonderful world of Disney at the same time. It's strange. Quincy is performing an autopsy on blank. Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Mickey Mouse is her answer. All right, Gary, she said Mickey Mouse. What do you say? Why Mickey Mouse, Jesse? Why? Why? That's a good question. The old philosopher said, why Mickey Mouse? That's what I say. Why not Brett Summers? Why Mickey Mouse? <laughs> That's two for her. I was going to say Snow White, but her autopsy is old history. She died of... Of, uh... Overdose of bleach. Yes. <laughs> but I chose Mickey Mouse. Mick, you did, yeah. I tell you, it must have been a caution living with seven men. Even though they were short guys, it was... One for each day. It was lovely. That's true, yes. <laughs> That's what she died of, you know. <laughs> if it kills her, it kills her. <laughs> I love that. Now you can't tell that story. No, you can't tell dirty. that story. All right. All right, Susan. Something strange. It's strange. Quincy is performing an autopsy on... M-I-C. K-E-Y. All right. Oh, Jesse, now it's four. Gene. Yes? I think this is a match, but I didn't know his last name. That's it. Time for her. Very good. Thank you, Richard. All right, Joyce. A match, a match. Again? <laughs> Jesse, your bubble is about to burst. Well, since my last name is Bullifant, I felt akin to this character, and I said Dumbo, who's an elephant. Oh. Uh, Dumbo was a famous Joker. character in a Mickey Mouse, but, uh, in a Walt Disney to film. To do an autopsy Another an elephant, winning Quincy answer. is only an hour show. Oh. Yeah, but he's very speedy. <laughs> he did it with a machete. All right. Ready, Russell. Ready. Ted said, I just saw the strangest car in the world. How strange Your heart is not in it. Sorry. You'll have to go to the end of the line. Ted said, I just saw the strangest car in the world. Excellent. It didn't have hub caps on the wheels. It had blank caps. Didn't have hub caps. All righty. Brett is writing. Ted said, I just saw the strangest car in the world. It didn't have hub caps on the wheels. It had blank caps. Bottle caps. Bottle caps. Bottle caps. That'll be strange. He said bottle caps. What do you say? Well, in, in keeping with the first round, say anything you will. Uh, right. I'm sorry, dental caps is all I Dental caps. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, any kind of cap is all right here. What everybody on this panel has. Tooth caps. <laughs> <laughs> it just so happens that I don't have to. Oh. Yeah. Yes. I'm it's sorry, shoe sir. Fits. Madam, what would you remove oh, your hat? Your yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. At least I don't wear a retainer in my twilight years. <laughs> Imagine a woman like that going in and getting a retainer and, I have a little and a training bra all the same day. And a bottle of Aha! Uh -huh. The woman said, I'll sell you this acne gel, lady, but it's not going to help. <laughs> Nightcaps, which is an audience favorite. Right, nightcaps. Good. Well, Interesting, well, isn't it? <laughs> All right, now we come to Susan Richardson. Oh, what do you say? It didn't have hubcaps on the wheels, it had blank caps. What everybody in the upper row of this panel has. Dunce, Dunce caps. caps. Oh. Dunce caps. I don't think that's so funny. <laughs> All right. You should never say that about them because your back is to them. You never know what they're going to do to you in the rest of the show. I thought the car was a real blast. I had that in my cap. That in my cap. Thank you, Sheriff. That's funny. All right, Joyce. I think it was a sports fan's car. It was a sport car, right? Yeah. Uh -oh. It had baseball caps. Baseball caps. 
All right, we go to round two. This is the final round. Jesse, you're still ahead. You go first, if you please. A. A it is. One person plays. Joyce. Oh, what? Max said, I'll never go back to the Godfather's myself. massage parlor again. It's too painful. <coughs> they massage you with a blank. <laughs> Hello. You're on your own. There it is. You're so rude to me. <laughs> Really? No. I'm not. What do I know? Do you? I just work here. Let's... The mere fact that America will never forgive you shouldn't bother you. Max said, I'll never go back to the Godfather's massage parlor again. It's too painful. They massage you with a blank. Wire brush? A wire brush. That would hurt, wouldn't it? What did you say, Joyce? Huh? <laughs> I said with a horse head. With a horse head. Well, she has an automatic uh, association with the Godfather, <laughs> the motion picture, and the horse head. Now, Russell, you need five to tie and six to win. Ready? Yo. Yeah. Yay. Yes. Yay, baby. Bill said. Right. A strange thing happened when I put too much gas haul in my car. Instead of backfiring, it blanked. <laughs> Russell Clark. Bill said a strange thing happened when I put too much gas haul in my car. Instead of backfiring, it blanked. It hiccuped? Good. He came up with a good one. It hiccuped. He may be on his way to another big board. <laughs> That's right. Hiccup, there's one for him. This is so close to a match, they should really give it to him. Because when you go like this, you go... Uh, in your belt, you sound perfect. It's very close. Now you got to match everybody else. You need four hiccups no, I'm here. I'm really going to be mad. And I'm sorry, I said it took off. Took off like a rocket. Okay, so that means Jesse wins. What do the rest of you have down here? First hiccup. That show is with Russell Clark. Has ten thousand five hundred dollars. Say goodbye to Russell Clark. He's a very happy fellow. So long, Russell. Now this message for you. Oh, Jesse Lee, you ready? Now we pulled a studio audience not too long ago and said, write down your best answer to this. Bring blank. If you give us the answer they gave us most often, you get five hundred dollars. For naming the second most popular answer they stated, you get $250. Then if you name the third, you get $100. All right, let's see who will give you some assistance here. Whom do you want? Brett. Oh! She hasn't got one. Wait, no, wait a minute. No, I may have something. Wait a minute. This is a, a wait, snappy she's gonna steal one from oh, Gary. No, I'm not going to steal one. Probably need my help. <laughs> oh, no, thanks. <laughs> so, I, 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 in my youth, we used to say, have our party, um, we used to say, bring your own bottle. All right, there's one. Gary? In my day, if you really uh, got after somebody, you, 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 you brung him down. Bring down. Bring down. Yeah. Two losers, Jesse. Hey, what can I do? <laughs> Boy, that stinks, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> bringing up father. Bringing up father. It wasn't bringing up father. It was bringing up baby. Person. Bringing up father is an old comic strip, isn't it? Yeah, it's an ancient comic strip. Well, those are the ones they've given you. Don't look at me. She may need one of her own. Bring down, bring your own bottle, and bringing up father. Now, you have an option here, and I point this out very strongly to you, that you can reject all those answers if you'd like to, or think of one of your own. But don't feel pressured. Go ahead. Well, I never had to, but I'm going to say bring your own bottle. <gasps> bring your own bottle. All right, let's take a look at the $100 response. Bring money. Bring a friend. Well, you can't drink the money, can you? Anyway, let's take a look at the next one, please. $250. Bring your own bottle. You got it. Bring a friend. You think that's on top? All right, Richard, we'll find out if your answer's up there. Go. Bring all the bacon. <laughs> That's a quick switch. I noticed bringing up father was uh, sandwiched in there somewhere. <laughs> yes. All right. So you've got two hundred fifty dollars. Means the least you'll play for is two thousand five hundred dollars. But you're going to spin the wheel, and if you get lucky, you'll double it up and play for five thousand. Step up there, and we'll all root for a double. Here we go. What? Bing. All right. Double, 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 double. Joyce. Oh, yeah, Almost. 
close. Don't close. Joyce Boulefant. Don't close. Ready. Yeah, right. That's your fifth time. Fifth yeah. time this week. And I haven't gotten it right once. <laughs> All right. Stand on that blue dot. Yeah. Face me if you please. Thank you. Here it is. Blank beds. Blank beds. B-E-D-S. All right, uh, give us the answer that she has. If you do that, you get $2,500. What do you say? Water. Water beds. All right, Joyce, water beds. This is the pits. <laughs> I got twin, I got bunk beds. I, I didn't have water beds, and I thought about what I have to do. Make beds, I'm sorry. Make beds. All right, very that's all right. Oh, she's that's very happy way. that she's got something. She doesn't deserve it. Don't do that. She doesn't deserve it. <laughs> You have a total of $250, Jesse Lee. Many thanks for being here with us on Match Game. And now this message for you. Hey, you going? You were grand, all they of you. Were a nice Just audience. grand. Thank you all for being here with us on Match Game. And I hope to see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Perhaps you too will return. And then again. <laughs> What's wrong, oh, right. What's, What's wrong with Arlene Francis? What's that? What's wrong with Arlene Francis? Team Rabbit here, join us next time for the match game. Arlene. Goodbye. Some contestants will receive West Bend Stir Crazy Automatic Corn Popper. Stirs itself to give you a big, fluffy, great tasting popcorn, six quarts in six minutes. And relaxing at home, drink sparkling pink champagne. Any day when you feel special, tastes like bubbly wine. Pink champagne, malt liquor from Iroquois Brands. A cosmetic bag and Nestle Streaks and Tips. Temporary spray on hair color. Streak your hair, tip it, frost it, go blonde, go silver in minutes without bleaching or dyeing. A picnic jug and now for a tasty change of pace, Lemon Tree, the lemonade flavor drink mix from Lipton in low calorie and regular. A calculator and Raid House and Garden Bug Killer. Kills bugs dead indoors and outdoors, yet won't harm most plants or shrubs. And a baby bath and changing pad and diaperine baby wash cloths with a special moisture-packed formula to clean and condition baby skin. Keep your baby better than clean with diaperine. Pet of Vaporette Pet Collars protects your dog or cat against ticks and fleas. All three Pet of Vaporette Collars wear the good housekeeping seal. and Bill Trotman production. Program is edited and provided. Get ready to match the stars. David Doyle, Brett Summers, Bill Daly, Sidney Goldsmith, McLean Stevenson, and Joyce Bullifant as we play the star-studded big money match game. And now... Here's the star of Match Game, Gene Rabbit. Thank you, Johnny O. Thank you, friend. You're going to have a good time today. <laughs> the birds are out of the cage. <laughs> Those are real feathers. Yeah. This is the only time I feel like I'm flying. Like you're flying? Yeah, when I wear this hat. Really? That's the why I wore the hat. Because you feel like you're flying. You feel huh? like a bird. You look like Chicken Little. Oh, thank you. <laughs> she loaned her hat with roommates. How nice. Do you like it? Yes. It goes with my plaid shirt. Yes, right. <laughs> you know what I feel like? What? I feel like I'm sitting between Chicken Little and Raggedy Ann. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Well, we'll have a go at it anyway. Let's say hello to David Brown and Janet Smith over here. You remember David Brown? From Baltimore, Maryland. I You're certainly. a student, are you? No, I'm in real estate in Baltimore there. I work, uh, my partner is my 80-year-old grandfather. Really? Right. I haven't been there in years. They say that Baltimore has had quite a rejuvenation. Yes, it has. Yeah. Beautiful now. Yeah. We Real can say anything we want about it because the show doesn't go to Baltimore. <laughs> All right, and Janet Smith here uh, from uh, Garden Grove,
California, That's third right. generation garden girl vite. That's right. And uh, her mother and her sister are here, group of four. Oh, your mother and your brother, don't right? Don't tell her I have a sister, she'll start to worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we don't want to worry your mother there. Let's go on and see where we are. Oh, we finished one game and we're about to start game number two. And uh, David, uh, you have a choice of A or B. I will pick B. Yes, sir. Here it is. <laughs> Did you, I love Did you it. see Can this? I, I read this to the Did you put this up here? Yes, yeah, someone hung it backstage. I, I brought it out. It says, one possible reason why things aren't going according to plan is that there never was a plan. <laughs> That's a thought for the day, friends. Put it right up there. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> see if and you get this one. Reason. Rick said, that supermarket was really strange. Not only did the chickens have wings, the blanks had wings. <laughs> Ready, Miss Sydney? Yes, I am. I said. Oh, but no, no, you, uh, no. no. I didn't ask you for your answer. Oh. Yeah. Don't, don't do it until I ask for it. All right. All right. That's what the bishop said to the actor. All right. Uh, David, Rick said that supermarket was really strange. Not only did the chickens have wings, the blanks had wings. I will say clerks. The clerks. Yeah. The clerks had wings. What do you say to that? Well, I think that uh, this could be uh, termed synonymous, the bag boys. The bag boys had wings. Oh. All right, there's one. Well, I was going to say customers, but you didn't say it was in West Hollywood, so I changed my answer. <laughs> I said the rump roast. The rump roast, that's a good one. I said the steaks. The steaks had wings, another good one. <laughs> one match so far for David. Let's see what we get from Miss Sydney here. My Not only do the chickens have wings, the blanks had wings. What do you say? Well, I think that, I thought that, well, what I said was, the eggs have wings. The yeah. eggs had wings. Oh, adorable. Good answer. <laughs> it's good, but no match. <laughs> All right, McLean. Well, boys and girls, I bet you're all wondering what Uncle Max said, aren't you? <laughs> we already heard Chicken Little say eggs. <laughs> In a minute, we'll hear what Raggedy Ann has to say. <laughs> but for right now, Uncle Max said checkers. All right. The checkers. A two for David. Uncle Mac. <laughs> okay, Raggedy Ann. Oh, what I could say to you, but we're on television. <laughs> What? It would have been funny. Angel food cake. Angel food cake has wings. I didn't wings. say that, however. I didn't say Wouldn't that have been good? I said, Mr. Baltimore, I said, box boys. All right. Wait for him. Uh, well, that's a pretty good start for him. Larry the Lover said. Uh-oh. Oh. They said. Let's see you act that one. <laughs> Is that a challenge? Don't challenge him. Why, Chicken Little, why? <laughs> Larry the Lover said, when I die, I want to give my body to science. Yes. Oh! <laughs> but while I'm alive, I want to give my body to blank. <laughs> Were you proposing to her? Was that a question? What was that? That was a question. Oh, was really? Yeah, really a question. When I die, I want to give my body to science. But while I'm alive, I want to give my body to blank. <laughs> All right, here we go. Larry the Lover said, when I die, I want to give my body to science. But while I'm alive, I want to give my body to blank. Raquel Welch. Raquel Welch. That's one possibility. All right. In the case of that, does she give her body to you? I mean, is it a trade? <laughs> I had give it to the Masters and Johnson's surrogate lover department. Masters Johnson's surrogate lover department. Play the field, you know what I mean? Right. You he is a great intellect, isn't he, to come up with an answer like that? Fabulous. Not funny, but intellectual. <laughs> well, uh, th I was going to say Larry wanted to give his body to a Tupperware party, but I figured she'd never get that. So I said he wanted to give it to the line at the Roxy. Uh-huh. Gosh. And the Roxy's been closed for low these many years. <laughs> I don't like to keep Actually, a you've been closed for many years. I, I've been closed for many years. I said Bo Derek. I wasn't younger. Bo oh, Derek. All right. We're looking for a Raquel Welch here. When I die, I want to give my body to science, but while I'm alive, I want to give my body to... 
Well, first, since everybody's been talking about chickens, I said that, and I forgot to draw my line to it, so I had to draw my line to it. Because no, nobody want to be with no chicken. So really? then, do you like chickens? Well, yeah, I, I'll start I'm not crazy about them, but I like chickens, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, now, see, that turns me on. <laughs> See, now you're getting to me. <laughs> All right, let's get serious now. Oh. So then I said that he would want to give his body to women, and Rocky Welch is a woman. Yeah, but we can't I'll match generals in the specifics. We just can't do that here. Oh. But that was a nice try. Thank you. You were covering everybody there. What do you say, Uncle now, McLean? Now, boys and girls, did you notice what Uncle Gene did to the two ladies? That's where eggs come from. <laughs> we, we'll be talking more about this as the week progresses. But right now, Uncle Max is going to give his answer, which was Bo Derrick. Yeah. I wondered how I had all those children. <laughs> Matt, you should have told me before. <laughs> I don't understand my answer. Do you think you will? <laughs> no. That means you didn't I understand the question. I do sort of understand. Yeah, I do. See if you can figure it out. Go. To Play-Doh. Play-Doh? What do you do with Play-Doh? You play with it. What? Give his butt. <laughs> Want to give my body to Play-Doh? You are you a weirdo. It, Ira, do you get it? <laughs> Nobody gets it. <laughs> Just Nobody I wants it. Is... Three to nothing to score the end of round one. We'll catch you up to do. Let's see if she does it after this. <laughs> Here we go to round two. David, you're ahead, so that means you have to go first. B. All right. Three people play. Brett, Bill, and Sydney. Okay. Ready? Here it is. Sure. Little Herbie said... My parents took me to a child psychologist who was so dumb, he tried to measure my IQ with a blank. <laughs> All right, David, little Herbie said, my parents took me to a child psychologist who was so dumb, he tried to measure my IQ with a blank. With a ruler. Good response. He said a ruler. Good answer. ruler. All right. <laughs> All right, it's up to you, Sydney. You're going to be proud of me, Raggedy Ann. <laughs> a ruler. Very good. We've got all six. Now, that means the best you could do is achieve a tie by matching all six stars. Let's see if it happens. Bruno said, boy, do I live in a tough neighborhood. Oh. At the movie house, the refreshment stand doesn't sell popcorn. They sell blank. <laughs> tough neighborhood. Bruno said, boy, do I live in a tough neighborhood. At the movie house, the refreshment stand doesn't sell popcorn. They sell blank. Uh, <clears throat> oh, gosh. Um, tough neighborhood is the uh, operative uh, phrase. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, all I can think of is... Uh, Rocks. Rocks. I the other I the only other one I can think of was acorn, but that didn't make any sense. So. What was the other one? Acorn. No. <laughs> so I that would make that anything. makes less sense than rocks, which doesn't make any sense at all. Why? What'd you say? I thought of the most depressing thing I possibly could, and they sell Saturday night specials. Saturday night specials. All right, I mean, David wins the game. Hold up your cards, will you? Pop, pop, guns, 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 guns. Everybody get guns. <laughs> Janet won game number one and has a total of $500 coming her way, and we thank you for being with us here on Match Game. Thank Janet you. Smith, ladies and gentlemen. There you go.
go. On the blue spot there. And uh, here we go. David, we pulled an audience said, write down your best answer to this. Watch the blank. Watch the blank. Now, whom do you want to call on for a little assistance here? This is scary. McLean. Um, watch the birdie. There's one. I have to pick Brett. Watch the clock. Watch the clock. But I think Birdie would get. Oh. <laughs> I'll try Sydney. Watch. Sydney? Yes. Watch the game. Watch the game. All watch right. The, watch the idea. <laughs> oh. Oh. That's, that's, we are. that's the idea. We are. Oh, All right. darling. So you have. Watch oh, the clock, angel, watch the game, <laughs> and watch the, the birdie. Idea. You want one of those or one of your own? Watch the birdie. Yeah. All right. Let's see if it's up there. Watch the birdie is what we want. May we see the $100 response? Watch the show. A good idea. The next one says, watch the clock. All right. Here we go. And here we go for the big one. Yeah. We've got $500, and uh, you could win a lot more, but we'll see what happens right after we see about this. And here again, the star of our show, Gene Rayburn. Thank you very much, John. Here we go. David hasn't been up here, and he's going to have to go with the really big money now. He's got the $500, and that means the least he'll play for is 10 times that amount, or $5,000. But, of course, he's going to spin the wheel. And we'll wish him the very best of luck in rooting for a double here and see if we can get for $10,000. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, no! Yeah. All right. $10,000 is what you are playing for. With David Doyle. Face He's heavy into Whitley. flop sweat. <laughs> All right, here we go. Blank Donuts. D O N U T S. No help from the audience, please. Now, your job is to match David Doyle. If you do that, you get $10,000. What do you say? Mm. <laughs> Sugared donuts. Sugared donuts. I'll tell you, I try to avoid donuts because I love them so, uh, but they are a little fattening. And one thought flashed into my mind immediately when I saw this, but it was not sugared donuts, although occasionally I'll have those. Yes. David, what thought flashed into your mind? Well, I was going to say glazed, which, of course, is melted sugar. And then I thought, well, no, what do you hear, donuts? I mean, if you're going to really make a differentiation, and I said jelly donuts. Jelly donuts. <laughs> jelly donuts, sugar donuts. I would have said Dunkin' Donuts, because I... Boy, they make them great. And they make great coffee and all that. Well, listen, you got $500, David Brown. That's not bad. Congratulations. Thank you for being here on Match Game. David Brown. Here comes Jimmy Bradley and Leroy Upperman. How do you do? How do you do? Let's get acquainted. Leroy, tell us about you, please. Well, I'm from North Carolina. I've been in L.A. about three years. I'm a licensed attorney, a real estate broker, and part owner of a restaurant. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And a natty dresser. Well, thank you. So are you. Thank you, sir. And Ginny. Um, I'm a housewife, um, part-time, I guess. I have four children, and I work for a management consultant firm. I teach tennis, and I do a little modeling. Good for so you. So I'm busy. Yes, you are a busy lady. <laughs> All right, Leroy, we'll start with you, if you please. B. You got it? Ralph said, some things just don't make sense. Like Blank wearing sequin pantyhose. <laughs> Hey, something worrying
don't make sense, like Blank wearing sequined pantyhose? It's a tough question. I'll say Joe Namath, just yeah. because he did. Yeah. Well, he's a macho person, yes. but he does indeed wear pantyhose, yes, doesn't he? he? Does. We were looking for any, you know, symbol of uh, masculinity and toughness and uh, macho. Yeah, but I think Namath is better. He did wear pantyhose, didn't he? Yes, he did. I put Steve Garvey in those pantyhose. Steve Garvey would be good. Yeah. Let's see yours, Brett. I had Joe Namath. I threw it down. She threw it down. She threw it away. away. Shoot me, kill me, destroy me. Uh, I said King Kong. Well, King Kong is all right. He was tough, wasn't he? Tough I wouldn't want to tangle with him. What'd you say? Name some tough guy. I happen to be wearing uh, pantyhose, but they're not sequined. Oh. Well. They're just, you can't see from Orson Welles. Orson Welles. <laughs> Orson I Welles. I love that picture. All right, Sydney. some things don't make sense, like somebody wearing sequined pantyhose. Like, oh, he said Joe Namath. What do you say? Well, I should have said that, Mr. Upperman. That's okay, Sydney. I really should have. But instead, I said men. Men. All right. What'd you say? I say that there could be a little something going here between Leroy and Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> it might happen right here for the very first time. That's Ooh, right, a first. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Alfred. You're welcome, Miss <laughs> Goldsmith. Boys and girls, you stay tuned. All right. <laughs> I said we'll be talking more about the laying of eggs as the week. <laughs> <laughs> I said Mean Joe Green. Mean Joe Green. Now, there's a wonderful answer. That's a good answer. There are a lot of wonderful answers like that. Do you have one? Huh? <laughs> she doesn't. Can I ask Uncle Mac? <laughs> They're all dressed to get married and everything. She's got a hat and he's got a flower. Could we play, could we play married? <laughs> I think You Raggedy... play the game? All right, all right. <laughs> Raggedy Ann's starting to lose some of her stuffing. I'll see what I can do <laughs> <in the> shows. <laughs> All right, let's see what you've got. You wanted mean, tough, Well, any macho. Yeah, macho. That, that would be the idea. I got it. Grandma Moses. Sure. <laughs> they just don't understand me here. They don't. All right, we'll have a question for you in a moment or so. Now this for you, if you please. <laughs> well, listen, you've done it again. I certainly am. I hope you'll be here tomorrow so we can repeat it. I wish I were here today. I yes. No, you were here today. And uh, we'll all be here tomorrow for the match game. We thank you for joining us. Hope you'll join us then. Gene Rayburn here. Goodbye. Get ready to match the stars. David Doyle. Brett Summers. Bill Daly. Sidney Goldsmith. McLean Stevenson. And George Bullivant. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game. And now, here's the star of Match Game, Gene Rayburn. Lucius BB as I live and breathe. Uh, do I know how to make an entrance, oh, David? Fantastic. Yeah. Not really. Oh. Oh. Right back to the old <laughs> rubber of you. Right. Got your pillow? Yes, thank you very Everything much. Everything okay? Yes, thank you. All ready to begin, shall oh, we? Oh, indeed, indeed. All right, she, shall we greet our two she, players, Leroy Upperman and Ginny oh, Bradley? Oh, no. no, you're not serious. How do you do? How do you do? worrying about Joyce Bullifant's pillow. I want to know if she's a Preparation H candidate. <laughs> what? Well, what do you need a pillow for, Dean? McLean keeps no, reminding Dean. us That's during the dinner short. break we must not serve alcoholic beverages, <laughs> especially to certain ladies who are wearing red. Not you, Sydney. Oh. Not you. Jean, would you show Brett why I have to have a pillow? It's, that's right. It's, it, it, the chair is too know. short. The chair is too short. That's all. That's all the reason. Short, you... All right. Twins. Now, uh, let's just reintroduce ourselves to these two lovely people here. Leo Roy Upperman and Ginny Bradley. Remember, Ginny is a mother of four from Garden Grove. No, I'm from Santa Monica. Santa Monica. <laughs> well, you are the mother of four. I am the mother of four. <laughs> are there any of them here? No, no they're not. Your husband no, here? No. <laughs> Nobody here? Nobody's here. 
I thought Opperman, I'd go on my own. <laughs> distinguished attorney and consultant of various kinds, and nifty dresser, too. Thank you, Jing, very and much. And always wears a yeah. boutonnet. Yeah. Well, you brought a cheering section, didn't you? Yes, I did. Are they down there? Yes, they are. All the four beautiful, row? very beautiful Would ladies. You raise your hands. Right here. Now, uh, well, now, wait a minute. There, those four ladies there? Yes. They're very handsome ladies. Where are they from? Uh, New York, D.C. I mean, they came all the way over to Los Angeles. What can I say, Gene? You mean, now, wait a minute. I got to understand it. These ladies came here of their own accord to see you on the match game from New York and Washington, D.C.? Ask them, Gene. I'm asking you. Now, just a minute here. Now, let's just find out. I got to look into this uh, here further. What's your name? Laverne. Where do you live, Laverne? New York. And you came to see Leroy? Leroy Opperman, yes. You, uh... And also Eugene. Sure. Sure. And you're? Michelle, from Washington, D.C. Thank you. You're here in Los Angeles, especially to see Leroy as a contestant. Yes. And you? Leroy, Sandra. goodness. From where? Washington. I tried. And you're also a, quote, friend of Leroy's, unquote. Yes. Yes. And you? Beverly. You're together. Oh. And you're part of the harem of uh, Leroy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, big bad Leroy's doing okay, ain't he? <laughs> Thank you. Well, he doesn't care if he doesn't win, <laughs> does he? <laughs> but let's play the game anyway, shall we? Okay. <laughs> this is uh, Leroy, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Judy said, my husband and I sleep in separate bedrooms. And Mrs. Weird Willie said, that's nothing. My husband and I sleep in separate blanks. <laughs> Now you. <laughs> All right. My husband and I sleep in separate bedrooms, and Mrs. Weird Willie said that's nothing. My husband and I sleep in separate blanks. Houses. Houses. <laughs> I had I had originally put uh, separate states. Uh, <laughs> sure. And I thought it should be a little weirder, so I had them uh, sort of necrophiliacly wise sleeping in separate coffins. Uh, very interesting. Very interesting. Drawing once again on my on my personal fabulous marital experience. <laughs> I had them sleeping in separate cities. Uh huh. And what came to your befuddled <laughs> mind? Uh, I had them sleeping in a, in her answer, which is towns. And I don't know what that means. Separate town. I like when the producer gives you one of these. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, a definite no. Answer, really. Leroy's looking for separate houses. Sydney, that's nothing. My husband and I sleep in separate houses, according to him. What do you say? I found you, Leroy. Houses. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> one more house and you win the game. I'll tell you, if it's one thing old Leroy don't need, it's help. Right. <laughs> so you ain't gonna help him? Uh, looks like he's doing okido. But uh, in any event, I said houses. Oh, yeah. What do you got there, Joyce? Separate country. Okay, come on down, uh, Leroy. And uh, stand on the little blue dot here. And uh, we'll say goodbye to uh, Ginny Bradley. We're going to send some prizes to her. We're going to send you a case of gout and a bag of bones. And thank you for being on thank Match you. Game. You're going to get some wonderful prizes. Terrific. Well, sir. Here we go for the big money. We polled an audience and said, write down your best answer to this. Film blank. Film blank. Three of the six stars can assist you. Whom do you want? Well, the red people are real hot right now. So, Sydney. All right, Sydney. How do you fill in that blank? Film blank. Oh. Film parade. Film what? Parade. Film parade. Well, Sydney. McLean. Film parade. <laughs> That's two of those you got now. He no, excited parade. me so much because he's standing so close to me and I no, couldn't honey. think. I'm not criticizing your answer. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm going to say film stars. 
Film star, all right? One more. Britt? I'm going to say film star, but now I guess since McLean took my answer because he couldn't have Sydney's yeah. answer, I'll have to say filmmaker. So you have filmmaker, film star, and film parade. You want one of those or one of your own? Film star. Aww. What would you say? Good one. Good one. Good one. Film what? You don't know. You are not of one mind. Yeah. All right. Let's go down there and take a look at the $100 response. Filmmaker is down at the bottom. The next one says, Film star. What's on top? Who on earth is that? Film strip. Film strip. Film strip. Well, listen, when you take your negatives to be developed, as if it's 35 millimeter, and the you know the thing that you've got left, your roll of neg negatives is called film a film strip. strip. Has Mr. Fall That's well heard of all him? I know about. Film anyway, you got $250, yes. and you're gonna be playing for $2,500 or $5,000 after this. Yeah. Here we go. Now uh, we're gonna ask you to step up here, Certainly. have a spin at the wheel. And see if you're going to play for $2,500 or for $5,000. Let's see what happens. I drove, he did it. Oh, $5,000, what you're playing for, and the blue dot facing me, if you would, please. Good luck to you. This is it. Good luck, Leroy. <laughs> it's all blank. There it is. You want to take a look at it? And I'll show it to Joyce to make sure you both all are on the same idea. Your job is to match Joyce. If you do that, you get the $5,000. And then they can go out and spend it all and have a wonderful time. It's all over. It's all over. You like that? It's all over. They love that one. I can't. I'm sorry. I was trying. No, but I'm not. A... <laughs> I'm not joking either. I was thinking more positive. I was thinking it's all right. It's all right. That's a good one. Yeah. I'm all alone yeah. by the telephone. Sure, absolutely. Sydney, uh, Leroy has a little gift he wants to give you. He's going to pin that carnation. Oh, oh, boy. Good move. <laughs> Where's he going to pin that? Pin it on her skin, don't be chicken. Good move. Good move. Yeah. Sydney, you may be busy tonight. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. All right. There he goes. Now, here comes Marilyn Rivera and Joe Crawford. Let's welcome these ladies. Hello, hello. Nice to have you with us. Let's get acquainted with you. Joe, you first. Hi, I'm Nathan Callis. Oh, dear. I'm a Southern California native, and I work for an agency as a DMV clerk, and I'm single. A DMV? DMV contracts clerk. What does that mean? Um, we work with um, the agencies and we sell the cars and I send out the paperwork to the banks and to the DMV people. Gotcha. All right. Merlin, that's a pretty name. Tell us about Thank you. Thank you. My name is Marilyn Rivera. I'm from Roland Heights. I'm uh, married and have four children. Team mother of 13 girls with a junior softball team. My interests are photography and tennis. All right. I pitched seven innings of softball. <laughs> last week. Had a wonderful time. Got two hits out of three. Haven't done it since I was 14 years old. Not too long ago. <sighs> All right, Joe, you got A or B here? B, please. B it is. Strong Steve is so strong. How strong is he? Not only can he tear a telephone book in half, he's the only man in the world who can tear a blank in half. <laughs> Strong Steve is so strong, not only can, te can he tear a telephone book in half, he's the only man in the world who can tear a blank in half. Telephone booth. 
very good. I hope they thought of it. Well, that's good. Now, she did a good one. And I hope someone else here. Oh, well, it is a very good one. No, mine isn't. I got to thinking about, you know, these, uh, like a sideshow, tearing things in half. And I thought, who's in the sideshow? Then there's always the fat lady. And I said, he gets to tear the fat lady in half. <laughs> Forget it. Boy, I'll say. I'll, I'm trying to, David. Oh. Oh. He's encouraged thing. Yeah. Now, just a minute. Don't you boo him. He's the dearest, sweetest, most glorious human being who ever came out. But that was a rotten right? answer. Of course it I was. But well, what has that got to do with it? <laughs> I'm not have the man booed. <laughs> Woman. <laughs> no wonder. No wonder she was with me. Goodness. <coughs> All right. This had nothing to do with it. I'd like to also boo both of your answers. <laughs> to both of you, I'd like to say to that bright, beautiful girl, Telephone Booth. Telephone Booth. One for Joe. Now we can tear the telephone book in half. He's the only man in the world who can tear the blank in half. What do you say? Well, like say? I got a match with Britt because I said a man. Uh, uh, she said one man, but uh, that's part of... Right. I... Gotcha. Well, I want a translation of what she said. Well, I understood it, and that's all that matters. <laughs> oh, okay. Because a uh, man came from... Woman's rib. Right, right. And that's, like that. that's right. It's part of woman. That's why it's pronounced that way. Oh, well, it's atheist. No, that. man did not now come listen, from woman's rib. Now, here's rib. Professor Irvin. Woman Irvin came Corey from man's rib. Woman came from man's rib. Yes, you said man came from woman's rib, didn't you? Oh, I did. Boy. Back to your Straighten Bible. Out, you? <laughs> Golly, Ned's Mr. Science. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know we don't have time to do this, but normally I wouldn't do it. The producer looks at his watch and goes, oh, God. I want you to meet my agent, and he's going to come up here. I've never done this on television. Lawson, would you come up here, please? Lawson. Lawson. Come on. Is that your agent? I think this possibly explains my career <laughs> better than anything I could say. This is my right. agent and lifelong companion, yeah. Lawson Lau. Lawson, say hello to Grant Tinker. Grant Tinker? Yes. <laughs> Grant, T you don't know who Grant Tinker is? Nope. You're well, an you agent. You can't be an agent if you don't know who Grant Tinker is. Oh, my friend? No, that's... <laughs> That's McLean Stevenson. Of course, Lawson does have a lot of clients and is confused. <laughs> but he will remain with me throughout this show, and I hope that the producer will see fit to give him the 6250, which is scale for a short person. <laughs> I said telephone pole. Telephone pole, another good answer, but not a winner. Thank you. All right, Joyce? Well, I, I think that mine is a match. It is? Yeah. Because if you just put small in front of it, it's okay, I think. See if this is a match. I think it's a match. Building. Wrong. Ira, stop! Wrong, that. wrong, wrong. A, a telephone booth is a what? A no, building. Not a chance. Once you no. got one, you'll have yours in a moment or so. Right now, this for you. Here again, the star of our show, Mr. Gene Rayburn. Here we go. Marilyn, this is yours. Phil said, <laughs> last night I went to a combination Chinese restaurant and garden shop. It was weird. All the egg rolls were stuffed with blank. That's why I brought them. We'll tell you about egg rolls stuffed with uh, <laughs> garden shop and uh, Chinese restaurant. All the egg rolls were stuffed with blank. Weird situation. About ready? Marilyn? Phil said last night, I went to a combination Chinese restaurant and garden shop. It was weird. All the egg rolls were stuffed with blank. Fertilizer? All right. I would have said petunias myself. Of course you would. I didn't, I, fertilizer didn't even enter my mind, and that's no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I have little lengths of half-inch garden hose. Well, you know how you boo him. You know how they make those. Wait a minute. 
He's got an explanation. You know how they make those little hush puppies in those breakfast shops? You know how they put them in dough and run? You've never been there. <laughs> All right. That's a boo with an explanation. Go. I have very important friends in the mafia. If you boo, keep booing this man, terrible things are going to happen to you in the parking lot. No, I said beans, sprouts, and horse doo doo. Sure. <laughs> Lovely. Well, that's a match. What does horse doo doo if not fertilizer? No. The bean sprouts. Bean sprouts. No. Okay, let's cross off the bean sprouts. Okay, I said horse doo doo. <laughs> I'm not only in a roll, I'm in an egg roll. Fertilizer, how about that? How about that? <laughs> one to one the score. A uh, Chinese restaurant and garden shop, all the egg rolls were stuffed with. I think I'm on a roll here. Fertilizer. That's two. <laughs> all right. Who's answering? Lawson. Lawson? All right, hold the card up and say the word, Lawson. Say the word, Lawson? Chasso Bao. What? Chasso Bao. Chasso Bao? Yeah, that's Chinese for uh, fertilizer. <laughs> I think I got the rubber bands on the kid too tight. Just excuse me, just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Better. All right, Joyce. This is for you, Lawson. I said that they were stuffed with wee little Chinese agents. Well, that's a rather hostile thought if I've ever heard of one. So it's uh, three to one in her favor at the end of round one. Now we have this for you. Well, you've all been splendid once again, and I thank you. We'll look forward to seeing Joe and uh, Merlin around here tomorrow. Certainly will. Yes. He, <laughs> David just pointed out that uh, he was surprised that the show was over so quickly. He says, time flies when you're in China. <laughs> and uh, uh, what do you have to say, Lawson? Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> yes. How do you say that in your tongue? Goodbye. <laughs> How about your tongue? Thank you. Anybody have anything to plug? Oh, listen, oh. you have something to plug, don't you? Oh, yes. What? I'm going to do a play that Larry Roman wrote called Crystal Crystal Chandelier at the famous Burt Reynolds Theater. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Well, good luck to you. That's going to be fine. Thank you. Gene Mary join us next time for the match game. Tongue Pao, Lao Tzu, Lao Fong Lao.